हेलो नमस्ते एंड वेलकम टू आर ब्रॉडकास्ट ऑफ राउंड थ्री ऑफ द वीमेन ग्रांड प्री टेकिंग प्लेस हियर इन न्यू डेली फ्रॉम द ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑफ मार्च टू द सिक्स ऑफ अप्रिल आई एम योर होस्ट इंटरनेशनल मास्टर सौम्या स्वामीनाथन एंड विद मी माय को होस्ट इंडियन लेजेंड ग्रैंड मास्टर प्रवीण ठिपसे हेलो सर नमस्ते वेलकम ऑल वी आर गोइंग टू सी एक्साइटिंग राउंड टूडे एंड वेल लेट सी वॉट द पेयरिंग ऑफ द डे इज Uh, Konaro Hampi is uh, playing against uh, Lahano, and Katrina Lahano and the Hampi are almost uh, of the same age. They have played 39 times, and uh, several draws and 18 games have uh, ended in uh, wins for either side. Uh, in the, on the second board, we see uh, Zhu Jinner is playing against Polina. Also, a uh, very uh, interesting match. These two have been uh, playing very fighting chess. Nine games they have played with each other. and uh, zoo winning 5 and uh, shoala winning 4 with no draws it's a fantastic uh, uh, result i must say very fighting chess and zanish ji is playing against harika they have played uh, so many uh, matches over uh, two decades and various openings as we'll see the games will as the game start we'll expect and we'll see what openings there could be and fourth board we have bibisara uh, asaboyeva versus ambachas vilinino they have only played only five games so far so because they belong to a sort of different uh, uh, age groups and let's see how the youngsters are doing uh, let's now discuss what is this grand prix is about and so may let us know how what is the grand prix and what is the way of uh, what's the importance of this tournament rather so the grand prix women grand prix series is a part of the world championship cycle for women and it's a series of four events the first event was held in astana from uh, 17 to 30th of september 2022 the second was held in munich from february 1st to the 14th this year and the third one is being held right here in new delhi from the 25th of march to the 6th of april and the last leg of the grand prix will be held in may or june 2023 in poland The Grand Prix series fe features a total of 16 players and each player can participate in only 3 out of 4 Grand Prix um, in order to have a chance at qualifying for the women's candidate tournaments. The top 2 of the uh, the top 2 players having the maximum cumulative score in this series will go on to play the women candidates tournament and from the candidates tournament the champion is selected to challenge the uh, world champion so full proof yes. uh, method and uh, in order to make it uh, uh, clearer i say there are four semi finalists of the previous world cup of the world cup are uh, automatically seeded to this grand prix and one world champion is eligible to play and top four girls from the grand swiss uh, tournament conducted by fide and the three highest rated players for this 2022-23 fide has chosen to take uh, 2022 march uh, three highest rated players and then are and uh, not to leave any chance of a good player not qualifying so they have got four organizers nominees that's a fide nominees and from that bb sara is one of them and uh, 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 vaishali is one of them i think konaru hempe also has been appointed uh, by uh, organ as a organizers nominee yes because hempe did not play a single rated game uh, in one year and even though so even though she was actually uh, qualifying by rating because she had not played a single rated game uh, from march 21 to Ma march 22 she did not get into the uh, criteria of rating and that's why she got a spot through the organizers yes uh, so as these four organizers nominees are there to be uh, appointed in order to make sure that the best players are not left out of this like hampi not playing for one year although she was world number 2 in rating she was not eligible because that was one of the condition that was taken care of and the youngsters fide is very particular about giving chances to youngsters so vaishali and bibi sara and wagner and kaslina skaya have also got chances so what is the position of uh, this particular 2022 and 2023 uh, grand prix so right now uh, can we please have the prizes on the screen as well yes oh, before we yeah. go on to the positions uh, what pravin sir uh, shared with us just now are the various ways one player can qualify for the grand prix and right here on the screen we have the prize fund the prize fund for each of the events in the grand prix has Uh, is a total of 
eighty thousand euros, and the first prize of each event is fifteen thousand euros. A massive prize. Fund indeed, and in addition to that, they also have a cumulative prize fund of eighty thousand euros for the uh, top eight finishers of the Grand Prix. By the way, we do have kickoff in the game, so let's come back to this data uh, once we the games are into the middle game, and we can now have a look at the board directly. Oh uh, yeah, I think a surprising uh, choice by Lano. Don't you think so? Uh, yes. Humpy and Lano, they have played 39 games and uh, so many games Humpy has been white and all those games have been uh, Grunfeld or Benoni. I was expecting Grunfeld but it seems that this will be a, a Benoni or entirely different. Queens can be de uh, declined. Wow. Uh, well, uh, Humpy and Lano, be between their games this was never played. So wow. okay, we are going to see a battle of preparation here rather than uh, anything else because it's something new and a lot uh, depends on how uh, Humpy takes this as a surprise, okay, these are the normal moves, but yes, Lano choice of uh, uh, Grunfeld and Benoni, usual choice, has not been played. Uh, do you think that this is a uh, more solid opening and perhaps Black is trying to equalize quicker rather than the sharp variations like Benoni? Do you think somewhere that could be a reason, I mean a strategy? How do you look at Black's uh, intentions here? Of course, we can't know, but we can guess. Yes, definitely, and also I feel like the two-year gap that players got because of the lockdown and COVID restrictions enabled them to study new structures and openings. So it is possible that Lano utilized that time to study this opening from Black and is simply using a new weapon in her reporter. Yes, wonderful. Like uh, the Soviet school says that if you're not played E4, E5 and D4, D5, then you can never be a complete player. <laughs> so I think uh, probably she took, she took an opportunity to uh, and trying to be a complete player. Yes, uh, we must also let into our viewers to a very nice fact about Lano that her husband is none other than Alexander Grischuk and they both are in fact the strongest chess couple. Yes, a very strong player uh, Grischuk and has been uh, in contention for the world championship for men's for quite some, quite almost a decade. Wow, so we have a very central uh, occupation here but before we get into the nuances of the opening sir i would like to know how does it feel uh, do you think it is a bit of a uh, shock for us when we are very uh, we are going very well prepared into a game and suddenly our opponent surprises us on the first move itself yes it's quite surprising as uh, you also must have faced somya uh, because you played the world junior you won the world junior championship so uh, I think uh, that's a very uh, difficult uh, uh, event, I must say. And similarly, whenever I played, if there's a new opening, then you have to guess your opponent from the very first uh, move. What is, uh, for example, if somebody plays a specific opening and the first or second move is different, then what is under sleeve of this player? Then we have to guess first. So you, you need to start from move, uh, think, start thinking from move four or five. So, okay, this is a semi-tarash uh, opening. And... Uh, uh, I think this was uh, used by uh, no, uh, yeah, uh, here. Uh, knight into d5 is a common move. Uh, it wasn't very popular uh, uh, for a few years till Bobby Fischer used it very successfully against Tiger and Petroshan. Oh, but Lano has taken e into d5 as we see in the player cam. So she might be going into the Dubo Tarash, which is yes, uh, the new name of this yes, line. Yes, yes. But here I think. Uh, for for almost a century, this was uh, considered to be a dubious capture because of Bishop G5, but it has been uh, regenerated with Bishop G5. I think uh, a quick C4 by Black eventually, not immediately, because there is a threat of Bishop into F6. But yeah, but uh, somehow uh, this is not very popular, and for almost uh, seven or eight decades, it was considered to be an unplayable variation of uh, Tarash. And uh, if you wanted to play this. You have to play knight c6 first instead of knight f6. So the different system altogether. So we would yeah. have reached this yes. position instead. Yes, yes. In knight, knight c3, c5. And if you play e3, then you are supposed to play knight c6. Or uh, Yeah, and then knight f3, you have a different position. So now the cd5 is not effective. Instead of knight f3, if I play knight f6. This is normal. Th and now cd5 is not effective because now uh. black is 
a fine. Bishop G5 is not available. But what she has played, obviously, she has prepared very well. And there are modern uh, lines where, uh, uh, because of the mathematical, uh, extreme mathematical and calculation ability of computers and chess playing computers, a lot of theoretical lines have changed. Uh, entirely different uh, uh, variations are being played. The variations which were in vogue for almost a, a century, some of them have been refuted and they're no longer playable. So one never knows. But yes, it's going to be a very sharp game because I think bishop g5 is the most principled move. If white plays uh, something like e3, it's going to be a very simple equality. Of course, the option of uh, going into regular tarash with g3, knight c6, bishop g2 exists. That's no longer semi tarash then. It will become the Rubinstein variation of uh, tarash defense, which is slightly better for white. And I've seen Humpy play that variation. So probably Humpy will for go for g3 rather than bishop g5. Bishop g5 is a direct attempt to refute uh, black's blade because black played knight f6 a bit early. But g3 transposes into a normal line. Yeah, and again g3 there are two variations, the old variation, knight c6, bishop g2, bishop e7, and the, yeah, and uh, yeah, so g3, knight c6, bishop g2, bishop g7 is a, uh, bishop e7 is the old variation, and cd4 is a modern variation as you said, instead of bishop e7, c into d4, and uh, bishop g2, c into d4, knight into d4, bishop c5. Oh, so that's a modern right. variation, yeah. So some of these possibilities which were never considered have been played. Uh, how about the other games? Uh, yes, somehow? absolutely. Let's go to the other games while Humpy decides. Uh, the second game we can see is Zujainer versus Shuvalova Polina, both very young, almost of the same age group. Yes, one a difference of one year, and they uh, played, I think, uh, nine fighting games with no draws, as I said. So uh, They have reached this position in the Italian. So let's have a look how they came here. Uh, e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, opening of world champions. <laughs> yes, and bishop c4 and bishop b5. Bishop c4 is the Italian and bishop b5 was the Spanish. So bishop c4, I think, I, yeah, this is Spanish. Bishop c4, I think uh, knight f6 was, yeah. Yes. It's a safer way of playing and uh, d3. Bishop e7. Yeah, bishop e7. So, okay. So, more or less a Hungarian uh, defense, uh, but uh, white has lost the opportunity of playing d4. Like, if you go, if you play bishop e7 one move before, instead of knight f6, if you can go back, um, this is a Hungarian defense, which is a bit, uh, yeah, not likable because of d4. Yeah. So All right. Yeah, so because of that knight f6, and after you play uh, d3, then bishop e7. A solid setup. Oh, so you are waiting for white to play d3 and indeed, then you yes, play bishop e7, yeah. so there is no d4 now. Yeah. Okay, that's a very uh, nice idea. I had no idea about uh, short castle, short castle and c3 was played. Okay. So she probably wants to go for this setup. Yeah, instead of rook e1, c3. Rook e1 and a4 are the main moves here because this move permits black to play d5. And uh, the e5 pawn is not attacked. But even... Uh, this is not all that great. White tries to get some advantage. And in this d5 pawn structure, even there's a game between uh, uh, Kramnik and Kasparov, which ended in a draw, and Kramnik grabbing a sacrifice pawn by Kasparov, and the game ending in a draw. If we get that position after d5, uh, then we'll probably uh, discuss about that game as well. Yes, she has played d5, actually. Okay. It is the most the principled board. move. So I think they're very aggressive for... Uh, players, both of them. So, yes, yeah, and ED5 is mandatory. ED5, knight D5 on the board. And for rook E1, black plays bishop G4 in general. All right, not yes, bishop and F6. Yeah, yeah, and that is where H3, bishop H5. And uh, for G4, afterwards, they give up the pawn. The compensation is weakened king side of white. And even uh, Kasparov tried to beat Kramnik this way, but Kramnik was able to make a draw. Sorry, rook e1, bishop g4, h3, and bishop we are going h5. back, bishop, bishop h5. h5. Yeah. So if white has to win the pawn, white must play g4. And now white wins the pawn, but at some cost. Yes. Uh, probably some great cost, weakening on the king side. And this is the most important defender of the king side. Knight on f3 is the best defender of the king side. It covers uh, g5 square, uh, h4 square, h2 square. So in absence of the knight, black could get c6, and bishop d6, and queen h4. So it could be 
intimidating, <laughs> followed by F5. And only a great uh, player like Kramnik uh, could play this position with white. I'm really scared to play this with white. I don't mind playing with black. And that's what Kasparov did in uh, playing this position. But he has great defending masters, defense, defense masters like, uh, well, I would say Karpov or Lasker or Kramnik. They have gone to such positions which a common player uh, wouldn't uh, uh, dare to play. So <laughs> I think a lot exists in uh, your abilities rather than the uh, dynamics of the position. Wow, this is amazing. I have a question about your memory, if I may ask. How is it that you are able to recollect all of these olden time games? You must have seen them 20, 30 years ago. How is it that you are able to recollect them so afresh? Uh, actually, the uh, reason which I uh, found out is that we often discussed. Anytime we saw a good game, we uh, I discussed with all my chess friends different times and they discussed. And as a result, it was repeated uh, quite a few times. And we still talk about uh, those in our uh, groups of uh, players above 60. And uh, it's very nice to uh, remember those games and somebody had not known and somebody knew something at this age. So I think that's a re repetitive exercise that we talk to each other, we chat with each other, we discuss with each other. And that's the reason why probably I'm able to remember. Wow, yeah. that's uh, wonderful. In fact, you even shared that you used to analyze your game immediately after it was over in the tournament hall itself. So, uh, with your opponent and with your friends. Yes, and sometimes with uh, great people like Boris Pasky. Yes. Uh, yes, I was uh, really touched by his gesture because uh, I made a draw with Boris Pasky once with black pieces and it was one and a half hours game. And he uh, offered to analyze the game. He called me to analyze it. And he analyzed for two and a half hours. Wow. And I gained... I learned at least 100 things on that particular day just because he was uh, playing moves from both sides and questioning me and perhaps uh, he felt that my idea was good. So sometimes, you know, it's, uh, analysis is the best way. And why I was uh, so much impressed by the uh, methods of analysis, the top players. Uh, I watched the famous game between uh, Korchna and Kasparov in the Lucerne Olympiad 1982 where I was the captain of Indian team. And on that particular day, I didn't play. So as soon as the game was uh, game ended and Kasparov had beaten Korsunoy, the game took about three, three and a half hours. Korsunoy was in time trouble. And they analyzed for another, uh, till the, I think the organizers asked everybody to leave. So you know, it was, and with so many grandmasters uh, analyzing and watching and John Nan and Spielman, everybody was there. And uh, we could stand behind and see the analysis. And what I learned then, I think for uh, viewers, it's very important. The moves which are not played are as important as the moves played. Wow. For example, Kasparov sacrificed a piece for almost three, four moves and Korchnoi didn't take. Now, why didn't he take a piece? That was very important for me because I couldn't find out. And the moves rejected have been rejected for some specific reasons. So moves played and moves not played all are important because they're the pro sort of part of the thinking process. Wow, that's great. That's a great m memory to cherish and also great piece of advice, I would say, like analyze your games with your opponent. And isn't it so special to chess that only chess players actually analyze the game with their opponents immediately after the game is over or even after a few days, they come back and tell them, oh, you know, in this game, I missed this move and I was winning. And uh, we learn from each other. Yes, in fact, it uh, happened once or twice with uh, Kritika also, one of my students. So we played a game and after the game, it was too late, we couldn't analyze. So we said that we'll on one of the days when we have finished the game, we'll analyze. That was in Delhi Open in 2007 uh, or 2008. And uh, it really happened that we finished our games quickly and we'll analyze the game after two, three days. It does happen because there's enthusiasm about finding out the truth of the position. Wow. That's very important. The, uh, gist for this uh, gist of the game is very important and that our uh, so you, we should have a hunger to s uh, get at the gist of the position so that next time you face it uh, you will be able to do it do play it in a better way yeah so i i mean it is similar to the advice you gave vaishali as well yesterday on the stream that don't leave the opening but try to learn what you can do better and that is something that uh, is very valuable because many times something doesn't work out, we just leave it and move on to something else. Yes. Uh, very often it happens at a young age because at a young age one is not able to uh, accept younger age, not in the 20s but perhaps in the earlier than that. Uh, players think that the game was lost because of the openings. But uh, as Dr. Lasker has said, 
Uh, Dr. Laskar was a world champion for 27 long years. And uh, why he was? Because he said, m games are not lost by one or two mistakes in the opening. That's one of the first lessons he gives. So mistakes in the opening do happen and you get a better position or a worse position. But the result is normally a uh, uh, is decided the game is normally decided by how you played your position and now not how your position objectively was once a uh, very important thing fisher was uh, playing opening which is not very uh, considered to be great and he was asked about the accuracy of that opening because that opening was not considered to be good i'll not uh, say which opening it was <laughs> So, <laughs> because there's some players here are playing this opening. It's so, okay. yeah. so <laughs> what Fisher said, Fisher got a very, very uh, great reply, was very impressed by that. He says, if God, God plays with God, then God with white will win. <laughs> so he believes that it's a bad opening and yet he played with black because he knew that he was not God and he was not playing against God. Oh, wow. There are no chess gods. Yeah, so we have to, we have to know that chess is not about uh, remembering the variations. It is about our skills and abilities uh, to defeat our opponent. That is very important. And the only thing that matters. Wow, wonderful, wonderful, sir. So let's go to Nana and Harika's game and have a look at what they have been doing over the board. Uh, they've reached this position. It's the life position. But we can... I have yeah, a look at the yeah. statistics maybe first and then uh, yeah I think the I think they have played uh, probably uh, 70 80 games I, I couldn't count There's so many games and because they are contemporaries and uh, too many games and with uh, Harika black and uh, Nana white is there's been old Indian and uh, sometimes Queen's Gambit declined and Kings Indian Grunfield old Benoni modern Benoni all openings so but Slav I have not seen any game this looks like a Slav Yes, and actually yeah, Nana and Harika are also good friends. Mm. Uh, they play for the same team in one of the leagues. Oh. So um, they are on very good terms. In fact, Harika is on very good terms with the all the women players in the Georgian team. So And also Harika uh, loves to try new openings. Oh. That is a, a quality of hers that has served her really well. She loves preparing small ideas, surprising her opponent. And she uh, she's very good at finding like small small ideas, unusual ideas in different openings, and is ready to play anything. But don't you think it's, uh, she has to work harder because she is playing different openings? But I think she is uh, studying very well. And yes, I think uh, she has a set of uh, coaches or seconds who help her with that, and also she herself puts in a lot of effort yes. before the game as well. Yeah. I think she is one of the players who prepares a lot before the game. Okay. Yes, she. Uh, I have seen her prepare until the last minute also sometimes in the Olympiad when we have been teammates. But uh, I don't know if it has changed now because, you know, once you become a mother, it's a big change in your yes. life yes. and things change in your system. Like you, you change as a person. Yes. So I don't know if that has changed, but I believe even if it has changed, it, it wouldn't have changed too much. Yes, and also I think it suggests uh, great mental and physical energy because, you know, like you, you prepare, say, three, four hours and then you play a six hour, five hours game that requires a lot of energy. So I think she has a lot of energy, both physical and mental stamina. So that's very good. And it's uh, one can say that uh, uh, she's going to uh, go really a uh, long way. Do, uh, do you uh, do you also prepare a lot before the game? or I No, mean on the contrary. On I, the contrary. I just uh, rest and sleep. And uh, I never prepare before the games. And oh, uh, wow. Yeah, so I just uh, play from uh, some of the memories. And if I have to prepare, I prefer on I prepare on the previous uh, night. All and right. then I sleep well and then forget about the game. And I want to be fresh. It's, again, a matter of uh, choice. Yes. Um, no, but I think that's a very, uh, that also shows that you're so confident always. Because I think, uh, I mean, there are two approaches. Two reasons why prepa p players prepare a lot. One is because they are playing something special, mm -hmm. and the other is because they are not feeling very confident in their own lines. It's not necessary that they will uh, play something new, but they spend a lot of time checking and rechecking their own lines, which they have played many times. So mm -hmm. that uh, sort of affects uh, the uh, time that they spend on preparing before the game. But I do agree that saving your energy before the game really helps. Uh, also, if you studied positions by concepts and not by exact moves, 
then you don't really have to see the exact moves. Once I, once I see this is the idea of uh, black or white, and black is going to play this way, black is going to put the pieces here, and what's the priority, what's a general long-term plan, then it's not required to uh, see the exact moves if you're not looking for a big advantage in the opening. If you're looking for a roughly equal game, uh, then you can just play according to idea, and then you have a chance of outplaying your opponent uh, even after getting an equal position, as, as long as you follow the traditional path of the strategy. Wow. So it's important to l understand the position than just memorize the moves. Yes, yes, exactly. Wow, wonderful. So uh, let's have a look at how the game progressed so far. D4 opted by Nana and uh, Harika went for the Slav defense and uh, she went yeah, for the exchange just variation. Just a, just a curious, uh, uh, how much time did White uh, take for the third move? Yeah, she has taken three minutes, so yeah. she was surprised. So for the third move, yes, so she was surprised by this because they have never played uh, this opening with each other. I don't know if Harika has played with uh, uh, Slav with anybody else, but surely not against uh, Ranizde. So, uh, yes, so she took three minutes for third move, which is very uh, uncommon. So I think uh, D C D five is the safest line. I must say the lines are very complex, and by preventing the option of D into C four, White simplifies the position, and uh, White is. Um, uh, assured to get a very small advantage, but not a big advantage, but a small advantage due to the extra move. All right, so CD5, CD5, Bishop F4 was played, okay. Knight C6. So now, as the viewers can see, the C files uh, is done away with. We have done away with all the pawns, but it's super symmetrical, and that is the reason these uh, exchange uh, variation lines tend to go for a uh, equality quite yes, soon. Yeah. But still, white has some minor edge, and black also has his own ideas. Yeah, true. Uh, surely, the extra move doesn't uh, uh, give you a permanent advantage. It gives you advantage up to move ten or twelve, where somewhere black tries to vary. Nobody plays symmetrical for more than say uh, 7, 8 or 10 moves. Beyond that, somebody varies and then it becomes a new position. All right, so knight c6. Yes, here itself there is no symmetrical uh, play. Bishop f5 is actually unplayable. Earlier, okay, earlier let's earlier just plan. show. So yeah. let's say black continues playing bishop symmetrical, yeah. then what happens? Uh, no, I think that there are some, uh, there's a famous game by Zuckert or Stinich way back 140, uh, uh, 50 years back where after e3 and uh, white eventually got knight f3 and bishop b5 and knight e5 and uh, before black could yeah eventually and uh, bishop b5 check and knight e5 and uh, because white was hitting first now rook c8 loses an exchange yeah knight into knight and pawn into knight bishop a6 oh already i was yeah. thinking no, of no here sorry here so queen, queen a5, a5. Queen a5 check. so you have to wait for a move I queen think. a4 maybe yeah. yes yeah, queen a4 or even castle yeah queen a4 almost White has big advantage probably here. So these are the lines, uh, these lines are unplayable. If you are playing a symmetrical position, you should vary as soon as possible. You shouldn't be copying it. Otherwise, we can explain e4, e5, queen h5. And somebody plays queen h4 and you win the queen. So symmetrical play has, it's, uh, yeah, nobody plays like this. <laughs> so one who is playing symmetrical has to play carefully. And black correctly uh, makes the choice. Harika, of course, such a strong player and she um, varies at move. Uh, four itself, yeah. So knight c6, yeah. e3, knight f6, knight c3, and bishop f5. Almost. Okay, now she got. But now she or uh, white may not be in a position to, because knight c3 has been wasted. Yes. So we'll see if knight f3, e6, bishop b5. Uh, that's I think, yeah, e6, bishop b5 is going to uh, give some edge. Bishop d6 looks like a possibility. Here it's not particularly uh, dangerous because black is ready to castle and the pin is not going to, yeah, this move probably, uh, yeah, I think you have to. Even castle, yes. Uh, or now, rook c8. Now, now rook c8 is possible as well, I think, but queen a4, yeah, there must be a uh, complicated theory in this. And yeah, maybe we can even take. Yeah, bishop into is always possible if you could have done on the previous move also. One has to know the exact theory in this, but uh, yeah. So here the a7 pawn is in trouble, but somehow uh, this uh, at this or at delayed uh, junction, bishop f5 is probably possible. So queen b3 was played. Okay. Queen b3 was played in the game, knight a5, queen a4, bishop d7, queen c2, and e6. Okay. And here I remember actually this variation uh, 
was uh, uh, like uh, something that one of my opponents was playing in an Asian championship. Mm -hmm. I was uh, black in the last round and if I win the round, then win that game, then I have a chance of winning the tournament. Mm -hmm. This was in 2016. Now I was playing uh, Dinara Sadhuaka Sova of oh, Kazakhstan yes, yes, yes. and uh, I just uh, remember that morning I was having breakfast with my Indian teammates mm -hmm. and uh, I met Vidit and uh, he just casually asked me do you have a chance of a medal I said yes I might even be able to win the tournament or at least a medal if I win today or make a draw at least you know and he said oh what does your opponent play you know and I just mentioned she plays such and such variations for other lines and I mentioned she plays exchange for Slav okay. so he actually helped me explain this whole line the what is happening on the board to me in 15 minutes it was so uh, the exactly the way you said uh, Praveenji that he explained to me the concepts yes and not the moves yes yeah, so that's and he was able yeah. to like uh, and you actually the won the game yes i drew oh, you know but it was a very fighting and dynamic game okay. so i think my opponent also played well okay. and uh, so there are some ideas like black can go back and there is mm. a tempo yeah. then even here knight h5 on time okay. and we win the bishop and for this a night. Yeah, for a night. Uh, so when let's say for example over here uh, white plays uh, more like rook c1 mm -hmm. we already can go back knight c6 mm -hmm. a3 and now knight h5 yes. and uh, now we are th already threatening knight d4 yes so these are uh, some subtle ideas which white needs to be careful about and the move order is very important yeah. uh, in fact white has uh, black has wasted some time bishop f5 and uh, bishop d7 and white goes black also goes knight c6 to a5 and back but every time black has uh, something to justify for example queen on c2 is not well placed because in front of the c8 rook knight c6 goes back and threatens uh, knight b4 so a3 is wasted so all the tempos you gave all the moves you wasted you are also making your opponent waste moves that's important and as we see bishop f5 was a great move but black is not able to maintain the bishop outside so that slight advantage white does have because white has a bishop on f4 which is active and black's bishop is hemmed inside the pawns right so that's the reason so that's black tried to play bishop f5 and it's a line which is i mean i don't know the opening specific but the idea remains the same that black is not able to play as comfortably as white because of the symmetrical nature of the game. But surely it doesn't mean that black is uh, worse. And black uh, black could probably uh, try for eventually to get b5, b4 as well because of the queen c2 position. So it's going to be a very uh, interesting position. And uh, what you mentioned, I also want to point out one thing. The bishop is uncomfortable and mm. that's why many uh, white waits with e3 here and mm. white waits with developing his knight. Otherwise, for knight f3, already bishop g4 yes. is possible yeah, yes. because we can uh, exchange our bad bishop for the knight. Yes, in this particular pawn structure, I, d I think that uh, bishops are not better in this uh, structure than knight. I think knights are as good uh, as bishops or perhaps I prefer knight in this particular pawn structure. So how do we understand which pawn structures, which pieces to keep? Like, for example, it was so easy for you to come to this conclusion right now. Uh, how do you come to that I conclusion? I think, uh, well, uh, knights uh, need uh, some squares supported by pawns. And I can see that white knight is a potential outpost at e5. Uh, it's not an outpost as such, but driving away that is very difficult. In chess, one important thing is you allow your uh, opponent's uh, piece in your territory with the hope of driving it away it never works because the piece, piece normally occupying that square keeps on giving threats and you need to defend against threats it's not easy to drive back the knight from e5 and it's not easy to capture also because the pawn would capture so it's better to avoid that and with regard to this bishop i can see that the c8 bishop has no target all white pawns are on uh, the uh, black squares and the bishop what what the bishop would be doing bishop would be hitting air as Coach Nye says. So it's better to get rid of that bishop as uh, here uh, the possibility, as you correctly said, knight f3 is delayed. So we have a lot of uh, simple ideas being implemented. And yeah, once the bishop is developed to f5, white immediately tries to take advantage. But black has played knight f6 before. So knight a5 is a possibility. If the two pawns were attacked, then it would have been really bad. Then black would probably lose a pawn. So knight f6 is a move. And uh, as we see, Knight a5 and queen a4 check. 
uh, important motto uh, force the uh, bishop to go back bishop uh, and knight c6 will not be met with queen b3 yes. but bishop b5 bishop or b3. even knight f3 knight f3 and wait for your opponent to play e6 yes. so that the bishop doesn't come back to d7 <laughs> to guard <laughs> yes so that's why black goes back bishop d7 yeah. and queen c2. Now the bishop is not on f5, yeah. so we come back here. And you so know, it's ultimately when when uh, players are playing at a uh, lower level and a younger age, they would try to do their ID play that. For example, if you play g6 followed by bishop f5, that would be too much. G like uh, there are some players who keep on. Uh, trying to play the same idea with before e6. Right. You know, if you play like for this queen c2, if you play g6, queen c2, then g6, knight f3, and bishop f5, it's not worthwhile. It's not yeah. worth it to waste so much of time. So, you know, some sometimes that's a common mistake by club level players that they want a bishop on f5, they get the bishop on f5. And why it happens is uh, they, have, they have that impression of good bishop and bad bishop. And they know that a bishop uh, aimed within the... Uh, inside the pawns is not good but development is something which is much beyond that so for a slight disadvantage in exchange you are giving your opponent a bigger advantage and the most important factors in chess are safety of king safety of your material activity of pieces and center control as long as these four angles are equal then the bad bishop good bishop isolated pawn double pawn weak squares it matters only if these conditions are equal if your king is weak, then none of these matters. If both kings are safe and one person has lost material, it doesn't matter. So one has to be realistic, not at that level, but for the viewers to know that sometimes I see some players at younger age be too impressed by the strategic books that they forget about the importance of king safety. Absolutely. And I think, uh, yes, absolutely well put, sir. And it Not uh, by me. It was Carlson who said a few months back, <laughs> I think October or November, that uh, chess world has forgotten that the game is played to checkmate the king. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they have been busy strategizing. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember there was a game in the candidates uh, by Grishchuk versus So Wesley in the first round. And uh, Grishchuk won... Um, I think they made a draw or they won, I, uh, or Grishchuk won, I don't remember the result, but there was a rook lift with uh, rook uh, c5 and rook h5 by Grishchuk. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, uh, after the game, uh, you know, he uh, came under severe time pressure in that game to find this rook lift and all the mm -hmm. checkmate patterns. Mm -hmm. So after the game... Um, he was asked in the press conference that uh, what about the time weren't you worried and he said uh, well uh, yeah if, uh, if if you have two seconds and you checkmate the king then it's enough <laughs> well, he's a fantastic blitz and rapid uh, player i played him uh, in rapid uh, in way back in 1999 wow um, his rating was only 2555 then okay but uh, yes he's a fantastic uh, rapid and blitz player even almost uh, 23 24 years back Wow, it's amazing. Uh, so we have uh, this position and then they continued with knight f3, bishop b4 and short castle. So this okay, is so a, now a great strategic decision. Black probably uh, wants to give up that bishop and uh, get knight to c4. But this would have been a very good idea if white bishop was somewhere on c1. But uh, now with bishop on f4, probably bishop into c3 may be a committal a move so surely bishop has come here only to provoke a3 you mm. know so that black will have some important squares uh, eventually so a very uh, deep strategic uh, plan is probably being uh, made and what's the time position because i'm sure that this was a surprise yes. for uh, i mean uh, harika had prepared this and for uh, yeah uh, for our opponent it was certainly a Surprise. So, what's the time position? So, White has down to l 1 hour 11 minutes. Let's see how much time she took to play knight f3 for rook c8. She was already 15 minutes she had taken up till now. And after rook c8, which is not the... I mean, rook c8 is also a um, uh, good move, move here. You, unusual move. But you, when you don't develop the king side and you don't castle quickly, it's always unusual, isn't it? Yes. So... B uh, I have seen more games with knight c6 and bishop e7, mm. but then I checked the base and rook c8 is also equally popular. And rook c8 and knight f3, bishop b4, short castle, knight h5. Harika has played all of this very quickly. Okay. 1 hour 27 minutes for her. Okay. While uh, Nana is down to 1 hour 10 minutes. So 
definitely nana has been caught in harika's preparation we don't know till where will be harika's preparation yes sometimes i think it's uh, uh, the preparation goes on till the last uh, minute and i must say in one of the world championships uh, anand and khalifman the game ended in a draw anand was white and the world champion and khalifman was a great player future world champion then but uh, the game ended in a draw and khalifman had taken only 20 or 15 minutes for this uh, so i just ask him in the press conference till what stage was the uh, your preparation so his reply <laughs> i can remember the final position is not unknown to the leningrad school of chess <laughs> So, which wow. he means, which he means that in his school, <laughs> then their school of chess, everybody knew that final position. Wow. So that's the level of preparation, you know. Wow, and I also like the way he put it. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, indeed, yeah. I mean, if if he said that it was still the last move, it wouldn't be. He says it's known to everybody. <laughs> there, so that's great. I think sometimes preparation can be wonderful. It can make, uh, it can do wonders, like the. Uh, Kasparov Anand match. I think Anand lost a few games because of uh, Kasparov's great preparation. Not that uh, he is not one of the greatest players of all times, but in spite of that, he believes in preparing a lot. And many of Kasparov's games are won in the opening because he is so scientific in his opening preparation, just like Alekhin. In fact, I think uh, Karpo more or less like Kapablanka style. No preparation in play over the board, and uh, uh, Kasparov exactly like Alekhin. who believed in opening preparation and the history repeats itself in a different way because kapablanka went down to alekhin in the same way uh, karpo went down to uh, kasparov oh and kasparov often says that alekhin is his favorite world yes, champion yes. So in fact the style wise uh, i think uh, he tries to imitate alekhin's style without taking alekhin's risk wow interesting so knight h5 has been played by the way over here there are around uh, 19 games only uh, sorry 20 games so far and uh, so it's a fairly new position and uh, there have been some games at the gran grandmaster level and bishop e5 is the most common is the only motion in fact uh, i look at knight h5 and let me just explain let us just explain to the viewers now once white if white goes bishop g3 then eventually after exchange of both the minor pieces uh, eventually bishop into c3 the uh, black will be white will be saddled with a weak pawn and black will have outpost and see a pawn a backward pawn in the open file semi open file c3 is weak whereas its counterpart b pawn is no longer a weak pawn because it it can move to b6 and it can be supported so whatever the rook a b1 does the pawn is supported so you know it would if both the pieces are exchanged Uh, forget about the bad bishop, but there will be some very important uh, things that could happen. Of course, knight h5 weakens the king side, but bishop e5 is a good move. I prefer that to bishop g3. Although bishop g3 is possible, but the idea becomes clear that she wants to probably uh, exchange both the pieces. Once f6 is played, then black will have problems in castling, and that's the reason. And direct castling is not possible. So what has she prepared here is quite important. One possibility is to play. Uh, If you played something like h6, it was not impossible. Yes, f6 is yeah, possible. Yeah, f6 or even h6 and castles, I think. Uh, um, also, because there is no th no direct threat. But h6, can I play bishop? Surprising, why don't I? If I come back knight f6, <laughs> I'm so <laughs> no, just back, for the fun of it. Yeah, so you come back bishop d3. Knight h4. Ah, okay. You want to now? You really follow uh, Carlson's advice? I just castle. Uh, uh, or maybe I just take the piece. I don't know. You can't even take the. Yes, no, I think. No, you so. can't. Oh, you can take the piece. Perhaps, yes. but okay. I mean, it's it's too much in the. I'm sure that black doesn't know this. Uh, uh, white doesn't know this opening. So even if it's sound, white is not going to play this. <laughs> <laughs> so we come back, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's. Uh, but now we have uh, achieved something as white after bishop d3. Uh, yeah, you saved your Because bishop actually. Yes. You saved your bishop, and mm. that's a point where I don't know. Uh, I'm sure for black it's preparation for white it is not so. But uh, is uh, Harika thinking for the first time in the game here? Yes, she is thinking okay, after. Okay. No, she has played oh. f6. Okay, I f6, see f6 okay. on the so board. So that's a different line. F6. So I think she is going to take some steps about uh, castling. I don't know what she is going to do after bishop g3. Eventually, she will have to play f5 in my opinion in uh, long run, which becomes the e5 square. So it means that she is not going to play bishop into c3 in this game, because if she played f6 and eventually f5, then she will need. Some guard of the e5 square. 
oh wow i just noticed that there are two games by nana exactly in this position oh. they probably reached it by another move order okay. but after bishop g3 she has played one game against kostinuik in 2017 okay. where black took knight g3 hg G and f5 as you mentioned mm. guarding the h7 pawn so that you can castle and uh, the game ended in a draw in the european team championship uh, in 2017 georgia versus russia and uh, the other game is between nana and the one maria muzichuk from the Tata Steel India Rapid Tournament of 2022, so only last year, and that game was also ended in a draw. But I think uh, it ended in a draw exactly in this position because I don't have any more moves. Mm -hmm. So probably they just agreed to a draw after Bishop mm -hmm. G3. Yeah, but Black does have some uh, plan of in the final position. Although Black has some weaknesses, so this looks like a, a planned opening. And uh, but now that. Uh, uh, this is known position to both of them. Now I think uh, probably it is uh, their planning here after that will matter. So far it, it was an important role was played by the opening preparation. Now that element is gone because mostly black uh, will play knight in g3 and f5. There is no other course. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a forced uh, variation. Uh, for our viewers, I would also like to share that Nakamura and Caruana Fabiano have also had a game in this position where it continued with knight g3, hg and knight c4. That game also ended in a draw in the one of the online rapid tournaments in 2020. And who was black Nakamura? Uh, Nakamura was white yes. and oh, yes, Fabiano okay. was black. Okay, so, so he offers bishop into h7 which cannot be done without preparation but bishop into h7, f5 and I think um, black gets yeah. a stronger attack than white probably. I think this bishop will be lost yeah, after Although f5. black loses the right to castle, but yeah. So even queen f6, queen h6. The hg3 uh, has made some... Knight uh, h4. Yeah, and then possibly. eventually g5 will come. So yes. queen f6, queen h6. And this is, uh, sometimes it's, it's I think it's impossible to capture on h7. But uh, yes, uh, for a uh, uh, generally for a player, okay, I'm able to take a pawn and I'm able to uh, stop him from castling. And needless to say, even knight into b2 wins an exchange on the queen side. So, uh, yeah, so... Yes, uh, lots of options yes, for black. So yes, but for uh, to give up a pawn on the king side and lose a right to castle is very important. And that can be done only by a master who knows when to break a rule. And it's not a common rule that you allow, you move your king and uh, allow your opponent to checkmate you. So here, the two greatest players in the world are playing this. So bishop into h7 wouldn't have been played because it's a bad move. But yes, such moves, uh, if one is playing that, then one has to, like for example, Kapablanka once said that the rules are not for the champions or something of that sort. <laughs> and I remember one of the very famous uh, incidents by Anand. Uh, once there was a theoretical line and uh, Anand, uh, Anand didn't know it or probably. So Anand saw the position for the first time and he actually busted the entire variation because he found a move. And there's some players who said that this is not a theoretical move and uh, they suggested some other moves. So finally Anand had to tell them that from tomorrow, this is going to be the move. <laughs> it's what happened. It became the popular move and Anand found it over the board. Wow, <laughs> fantastic. <laughs> from now onwards, this is the theory. <laughs> That's fantastic. So this game, we can conclude that both the players are in their preparation, but Harika a little more. And uh, we can go on to yeah. Bibi Sara versus Nino, the last remaining game of the tournament, which we haven't had a look at, and they have yes. already reached this uh, middle game slash end game position, middle game position. And uh, let's have a look how they reached here, and uh, also have a look at what are their uh, personal scores. Yes, I think uh, the scores have been quite good for Bibi Sara. In fact, she has won thrice and lost only once. And they played different openings. Once she won against Ragozin, once in against Queens Indian, and once against Grunfield. So um, that's I think that could have been that could have de decided the choice uh, in this particular game. So uh, very strange. But yes, Bibisara has shown great consistency. I think she plays very well when she is playing against higher-rated players, and that's the reason why she won the World Rapid uh, in 2021 and uh, World Blitz this year, 2022 December. So it requires some uh, great self-confidence rather than preparation to. Uh, try to beat players who are uh, higher rated than you and who are more experienced than you. And uh, that's, I think, we're going to see something very interesting. 
and looks like uh, I am sure that uh, black's preparation will be better here because black has some uh, black has advantage of uh, greater experience and probably higher rated. At the same time, Bibi Sana's optimism is also uh, quite uh, significant. But three wins again and only one loss is going to matter. So okay, wow. C4. Yes, so she didn't play D4. Uh, C4 and D4 are the same openings. So <laughs> it's, uh, now it's, it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Night but after uh, night, they're all same openings. <laughs> <laughs> but no, they lead to such different positions. Sometimes, sometimes. But commonly, if you see, 80-90% uh -huh. uh, uh, games of C4 co get converted into Queen's Gambit. If you're playing a Queen's Gambit player, Black is going to play E6 and D5 next. So Black can always play. And you give an additional option of E5 on the first move. So C4 is not much different. If you're a Sicilian player and you want to play reverse Sicilian or tempo up, you do that. C4 is a nice opening played by Kasparov against Karpo in the World Championship match uh, 86 or 87, one of these matches, regularly instead of D4. And they eventually transpose into uh, D4 positions, but some tricky games. All right. So C4, Knight F6, Knight C3, C5. So now it won't okay. be transposed yes, into D4. Yes, now it's D4. going to be uh, symmetrical, uh, which is slightly better for white always. Symmetrical English. In symmetrical English, and it's generally good for white, as uh, Fisher Spassky uh, match in 1972 showed. And Fisher had earlier played this system with black and beaten Sumislav in a fantastic game, one of the best games I have seen, strategic games. But uh, in the World Championship, he played with white, and he had a nice victory over Boris Spassky after knight f3, knight, uh, knight c6, g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7. And white gets d4 before black gets d5. So white gets slight advantage. There's a Marukzi bind structure without e4, but some bind against the d5 central square. And black is not uh, able to equalize completely in this setup. Slight bet, slightly better. And uh, yes, uh, some great masters have played this uh, with white this setup. Botovinik, of course, has played all the openings. So he was one of the greatest uh, masters of this structure with white also. He often played with black a tempo down. So Botvinnik in such position wouldn't hesitate to play d5 if given chance. Ha, really? Yes, yeah. And he would play a tempo down because he believed in the uh, structure uh, okay. with d5. So, yeah, of course, it is subject to a lot of tactical. Like g3, d5 needs courage because you are playing a system uh, tempo down. Yes. Yeah. Then yes. this way, yeah. yeah. But once upon a time, they showed more courage because there are no engines and... Uh, I mean, they were not, I mean, compared to today's players, they were less experienced. All Even right. the world champions. Yeah, they, I think they had less tournaments at that time yeah, yes. compared to now. And uh, travel problems. Uh, yes. Not easy to get visas. and. Also, flights itself were lesser. Yes. And, uh, for example, Capablanca, world champion for seven, eight, I don't know, uh, years, he uh, didn't have a chess, he didn't own a chess board, chess set. So, he just came to the hall and played as he wanted. What? Yes. Kapavlanka didn't have a chess set. He didn't own a chess set. So he never <laughs> prepared. I, I, I'm shocked. <laughs> yes, he never prepared. He just came <laughs> to the board and played. Wow, what confidence. And what joy. I mean, he must yes. be so joyful to play chess that he doesn't feel the need to prepare and all. Yeah, board that's page and that's why you see, he lost uh, against preparation. Uh, what happened is, uh, after uh, being uh, unbeaten for seven years, he even said that, uh, well, I'm invincible. And soon after that, Reti defeated him in a Reti system, Reti opening with knight f3 and g3, which was not known. And Capablanca was not able to uh, match the strategic sense of the position because Reti had studied at home and Capablanca hadn't. And that's what happened in the World Championship match against Alekin. After uh, losing the match and after starting with the f loss in the very first game, then after the match he said, today I realize the importance of opening preparation. But it was quite late. He could never become world champion again. But he acknowledged the importance of opening preparation, just like Karpo did probably uh, after losing to uh, Kasparov. Wow. Knight f3, knight c6. But you know, our strengths are also uh, our weaknesses. Yes. I mean, if we don't, they, I mean, if something affects them or let's say someone is stronger than us, even in our strengths, then what happens is uh, because we are busy improving our strengths there some part of our game remains uh, unimproved or the same and as a result uh, that becomes our weakness uh, i think geniuses are defeated only by 
uh, extraordinarily intelligent people who study the geniuses and their styles and find out a method. Like what Alekin did, he studied Karpablanka's games and played accordingly. Uh, that was very important. Even in case of Kasparov, for example, Karpu was very strong in uh, uh, Sicilian uh, setups where black played with d6 and e5. So Kasparov never played d6 and e5 structure in Sicilian. He played all his games from the childhood with d6 and e6 structure, against which so Karpu was not so strong. Mm -hmm. So you know, a decision made probably at the age of, uh, say for in such a position, we go by neither of order. So, uh, is this a bishop e2? So, bishop e2, we can go. So, e5 is a uh, move. Karpo was a fantastic master of this. And uh, if you look at the uh, Karpo Kasparov games, then always black played e6 instead of e5. And that's the setup which Kasparo, Karpo was not really good at. And in one of them, and I think one or two matches, uh, Karpo was not able to win a single game in this pawn structure with white. And uh, uh, the preparation to play against. Uh, Karpov, I think, uh, started uh, for Kasparov at the age of 12 or 13 or 15. Because, you know, he trained himself into a system which Karpov was not good at. Wow, that's just a great insight into the mind of a champion. Yes, and also because of his uh, great trainer, five times world champion, Mikhail Motvinik. Yes, absolutely. And how do you know all these stories, may I ask? Well, I read. I read books which contain less of chess material and stories. And I'm really impressed by the uh, biographies and semi-autobiographies where people quote but somebody else writes of top players and uh, their thinking process. I think uh, I believe in the thinking process of human beings. And I'm very impressed by the thinking process of the great champions, uh, not only over Vishwanath Anand, but Karpov, Kasparov, Alekin. All said great things which, uh, you know, they're very important. Uh, not even chess players. I think even if you go to Benjamin Franklin and he says that uh, chess is not mere idle amusement. Several important human qualities are to be developed and nurtured by it, ready to be used in life because uh, life is just like a game of chess. Mm -hmm. You know, the founder father of uh, uh, US, uh, USA and uh, one of the get a scientist of all times. He was a keen chess player. So, you know, they come out with words of wisdom which we should use. And our champions also come out with words of wisdom which we use. For example, Botovinik, in the 60s, Botovinik said that computers will eventually uh, defeat human beings very easily. And he couldn't do it and see it in his lifetime. But we saw that it's true. Yeah, the visionaries, visionaries uh, are proven correct maybe uh, after a decade or several decades. Like we can see various mathematicians or Galileo, for example, yes. was proven correct a few centuries after that. Even Darwin, nobody yes, believed yes. his theory in yeah. the beginning and then... Exactly. Yes, absolutely. And the champions are no worse. The Some of the greatest champions are no worse. They are as uh, brilliant as the greatest scientists in the world. All we have to do is uh, forget that they are champ chess champions. We have to see that what are the humanly qualities. Something that's a very important angle and a uh, bit uh, not explored by our uh, today's uh, players because they're too busy preparing the moves that they don't look at the character of a champion. Because those particular openings are sometimes suitable only to that character. I can't play the opening which Kasparov plays because I don't have uh, his character. So I have to try to find out uh, who is uh, similar to me in my style, playing style, and choose that opponent. Not that I must play like Kasparov or uh, even today, for example, we can see any any champion, be it uh, Anand or we can go to the modern days also. Uh, world number one, world number two, it doesn't really matter. It's important that you play something which suits you. Wow, 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 wow. Wonderful, wonderful gems of advice we are getting Good. today. Uh, G3 was played on the board, since the game has progressed quite a lot, hmm. let's we'll go we'll through it. We'll yeah, see the game. Yes. I'm sure it's a better preparation for black. Let's see the clock time. Uh, oh, no. Both, no, of, this them is both the of them are well prepared, yeah. In initial, yeah. Yeah, Standard initial of. clock time. Hmm. Bishop G2, D5, C takes, E takes, D4. So, uh, this is like a reverse Grunfeld. Oh uh, yeah, but it has actually become a variation of Tarash. If you play yes. in uh, CD4 is a modern variation which could have taken place in the other game. Yes. The old variation was Bishop E7. It would be the Rubinstein variation. Instead of this last move, 
uh, if uh, uh, bishop e7 was played sorry one minute yeah just uh, move back uh, just a move before this we could go down go Before back by and yeah. bishop, e bishop e7 seven castles and castles and bishop g5 uh, yes. the position which kasparov was able to play brilliantly with black but uh, others were not able to play so well but something which is supposed to be a little better for white and the modern version of it is is seen to d4 i think it came in uh, uh, vogue only say six or seven uh, years back the move she actually played cd4 i just started with i think uh, dubo or somebody started probably the actual game c into d4 a few moves before yes yeah c, into c d4 takes knight into d4 knight and bishop c5 and bishop c5 yeah so we get the same variation but uh, we compel our opponent to take a decision you can't maintain d4 so you do something this is what we were seeing in uh, i Other think game, uh, yes, in lanos game La yes, lanos yeah, game yeah. The, there was a choice yeah. so knight b3 bishop b6 shot castle d4 knight a4 looks like preparation shot castle bishop g5 h6 knight takes pawn takes not with the queen because then yes, black it's important black pawn structure will be completely ruined and yeah. these pawns king side king side is gone and yes. the safety of king has been forgotten yeah so yeah sometimes the uh, players overlook so obviously we can't expect that in a world championship selection so but i i already prefer uh, black a bit in fact uh, somewhere the strategic uh, triumph for for black because black is already preferred black has more space and uh, yes white's only good piece is bishop on g2 but yeah there's a chance of winning a pawn after all the exchanges and take on d4 but that's a position where bishop is a giant compared to a knight that's this exactly what happened okay yeah so this is one of the positions where i would prefer uh, oh what oh that looks like preparation because yes yeah. i don't understand to d8 because this looks completely normal yeah i'll be obsessive but you are you're given a pawn so you have to uh, justify that yeah yes you're maybe given a pawn. Yeah, more you active are, yeah but you this not not uh, enough i think the rook d8 must be the engine move i must say it could be the best move perhaps so rook d8 queen f6 looks logical but she has taken queen p6 let's have a look actually this is a typical position where a bishop is uh, stronger uh, than the funny knight and the uh, you know in one of the important uh, 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 sort of strategic comment by dr emmanuel lasker dr emmanuel lasker says that when you have a pawn minority on a particular side then it's better to have doubled pawns because it's dif more difficult for your opponent to create a passed pawn so now white will not be able to get a passed pawn so because of the doubled pawns and black is going to target the a2 and uh, b2 pawns with c5 bishop b6 and this is going to be Oh, I think this position is probably preferable for black. So he what? Yes, he not, yeah. uh, said was that four versus three, so black has a pawn minority, and it's better to have double pawns so that the it will be harder to create a passed pawn because let's say even this position e5 is not a passed pawn after exchanges because the f7 pawn exists. And had it. the pawn been on g7, uh, you could have got the uh, the the uh, other pawn, the f7 pawn. Had it been on f g7. The good pawn structure, white can get a passed pawn quicker. Yes. So yeah, it's a of course a general theory, a word of wisdom I must wow. say by Dr. Lasker. Wonderful. So these are these are very instructive uh, advices by Pravinji, and I think anyone listening to this stream, even uh, paying a little bit of their attention, will benefit a lot. from that yeah, i think what's receiving. important is you know somebody asked me of a particular book sometimes which i used to ask uh, 40 years back or 50 years back and uh, what uh, important uh, lesson i got from shri krishna sakharjikar ji once uh, india number 2 he said that who has written the book is more important and if a strong player has written the book then you may not understand but the book will be good so that's uh, i think a very important thing so uh, the piece of advice by the all time greats i think that's uh, very good so probably queen into queen is not a good move and uh, queen uh, takes yeah i, th I also uh, one very nice idea of rook d8 is that it stops the knight from becoming very active yes and uh, say after c5 and bishop b6 black can be worse for sure the a2 b2 pawns are really weak you can't play rook d1 because uh, you lose back uh, you could lose back the pawn not immediately but 
yeah there's a chance of losing back the pawn sometimes a2 pawn and uh, say rook d1 bishop e6 can be awkward i mean with regard to I, mean, I think black is a bit preferable but white should be able to make a draw i'm sure about that but yeah this is i think opening preparation where black will succeed in equalizing in my opinion and it has gone further no the game or this yes yeah. it has so white took on b6 with yes. the queen another pawn so, so white uh, yeah white enjoys capturing the pawns to three points <laughs> but b2 yeah then the rooks are attacked uh, rook so is attacked yeah, so, so bishop h3 is a I mean, rook is attack in, rook is mind. attack in case of queen into b b2 otherwise it's not attack but yes we need to keep this supported other queen b2 is not possible because the rook on d8 is hanging so and now white is two pawns up but now uh, black is go it's black's time to start winning the pawns now at least one or two yeah b2 so and e2 both can't be guarded but rook f d1 looks like a and then probably you exchange and take on e2 and then you are also ready to take on b2 or a2 <laughs> so white's position could uh, fall uh, the e2 pawn is very important in this because the the fianchetto structure which means the g pawn has been won a fianchetto structure without the fianchetto bishop is very risky because the checkmate pattern with black bishop on f3 and black queen on h3 black black's bishop comes to f3 and black's queen comes to h3 yes. and then there is a checkmate on e2 yes, g2, g2 which is prevented by this pawn yes. on e2 so the existence of that pawn is quite important and i'm sure that the entire variation has been analyzed and probably white is not able to maintain the uh, how, how how about rook f even here was that's it played? exactly yeah. what she played yes. rook f e1 yeah. and now she takes she b took b the b2, b2 pawn but i was she also gives the c6 pawn yeah yes exactly she did uh, not take it because then because we take on e2, e2 probably or uh, can we do that I think so no but I don't think you are losing a piece yes probably a forced to uh, draw no even a draw, draw is not well there here yeah. we can play uh, this rook, rook ah, sorry yeah, knight uh, rook yeah. a1 yeah uh, sorry this is good yeah. be a is not possible yeah epic blunder because of a8 hanging and after queen into b3 it's not the e2 weakness that matters the a8 weakness that matters right so a uh, queen a2 is not possible but queen e5 is the only you are move. walking into pin and uh, surely this has been analyzed before because you are walking into a pin and in case of move like knight c1 probably you move the bishop and uh, there must be some very dangerous rook move d1? for rook d1 bishop uh, i don't know bishop bishop f3 wins wow. the even rook because you played last move was very ambitious bishop f3 just wins uh, because and of queen e1 check me yeah yeah missing fianchetto bishop costing yes. white dear and, and and the significance of the e2 pawn in that case at least the f3 would have been guarded yes so uh, as you can see queen e5 rook b3 i'm sure that this was a part of preparation and uh, because you know nobody likes to have a pinned uh, piece uh, pinned against the queen because the risk of losing the piece is high yes so uh, i think uh, probably a well known line to each them because they had not take consumed much time here isn't it yes both of them Queen B2 was not met with Rook A B1, but yeah. uh, what did White play? No, Queen B. Uh, yeah. No, Queen no, B2 Bishop is B2. the position on yeah. the board. Okay, so who has taken more time? White. No, sorry, sorry. They have uh, progressed a lot. Okay. So let me see. So Bishop into E2. Uh, queen into C6. Queen C6 has been yeah, played. Yeah, and yeah, Queen into B2 and Bishop into E2 as well. Yeah. Bishop E2. Yeah. So up to here, I'm sure it's preparation because Rook B1 doesn't uh, win a piece. So. otherwise i need to play a move like queen e5 needs some um, knowledge of the position although the combination is not difficult to spot but it feels very uncomfortable to have a piece played so uh, what has uh, white actually played sorry just a moment i'll just uh, go back because i need to verify till where is the game yes i think the move was not uh, queen c6 but the move was rook a b1 Okay, first, okay, yes. to save the e2 pawn again, the importance of a2 e2 pawn is evident to both the players. They are such strong players playing at the, that level, so they know that the pawn is very uh, important. But in fact, they entered the same position which we checked, and now knight c1 would run into bishop yeah, f3. Oh, okay, okay. So, by, so probably they played with the correct uh, order. I think the entire game looks like a preparation for um, black, in my opinion. So bishop e. Uh, bishop e2 was taken and then black white played queen c2 another accurate move uh, yeah, but here the piece is not lost because of bishop d3 isn't it d3 so, yeah, yes, yes. And the queens d3. are exchanged and white maintains the extra pawn uh, 
Um, but I'm sure the ending is going to be a draw. I mean, yeah. If white takes on d3, yes. we take on e1. Yes, and that's winning for And uh, that would be winning for black. black. Yeah. So e uh, queen e1 is a check. So that's why uh, bishop d3 would be met only Must with rook, rook e5. e5. Bishop c2 and rook b2. Yes. This is yeah. and the equal. Yes, I think this position, there's no advantage. The bishop is strong. And uh, yeah, but technically a pawn down. For example, you remove the rooks and white is simply winning. So black uh, will have to play actively but i'm sure that this position has already been reached at home and we don't know how many moves after this as well but you can see almost no time has been taken to play such sharp moves so sometimes preparation can be great i'm not uh, saying that uh, preparation is not important some of the greatest players like kasparov vishwanathan anand botvinnik they have depended a lot on the preparation and they have won many games by their opening preparation even carlson and some of the players uh, believe in knowing. So it's both ways. But even the champions have not prepared without knowing the uh, gist of chase or the strategic portions of this. So they are very particular of knowing the basics and then following it up with correct preparation. Wow. And also uh, being able to anticipate what your opponent is going to play? Yes, I think a very important uh, factor, you know, uh, because uh, the openings, preparing the openings, What's important is that uh, what do you expect from the opponent? You can't prepare everything yourself. Or you could be playing all the openings because you chose a particular opening against a particular player. Uh, so, for example, I have very rarely played Benoni, but I play Benoni against the players who hate tactical play. So I'm willing to play a little worse position because my opponent is not going to enjoy it. So that can be one of the reasons to play such an opening. Yeah, I think particular... Uh Against a particular opponent, it's yes. useful to... Yeah, I think black should, uh, after Rugudi Wencheng and Bishop D3, black should have no problems here, isn't it? Yes, uh, I think so. Uh, just a moment. Uh, we are trying to change the board. Hmm. But so perhaps we can go to Humpy's uh, board because have they actually reached Rubinstein variation or some other... Uh, yes, I'll here? just change the board color because I yeah. think the chat was okay. not is very happy with is it. Is this good? So, no, they don't, they can't see it. So, I'll change it. Change it first and take their opinion. Yes. That's <laughs> good, yeah. This uh, looks bit good. A bit dark. It's dark, okay. We are trying uh, to, uh, we are trying different combinations. Yeah, maybe maybe uh, one uh, above that, uh, green or yellow, oh yeah. But this, this is too light, oh I this feel. This is too light, okay, then we go for... Hmm? Uh, no, uh, I no. don't like any of them. <laughs> uh, yeah, but uh, I mean they, haven't, they haven't suggested. So maybe this one. Let's... Okay, let's this let's one yeah, let's and we can uh, check. Yeah, viewers, okay. please opine on the change color of the board because <laughs> we are trying to make it uh, 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 more pleasant for you to view this. Yes. So let's have the board back and now we can ask our viewers if they like this better. It matches with the color of Nino's shirt. So right <laughs> now it looks very good. <laughs> so, uh, yes, we can get So some I think Rubidi one check and Bishop D3 will lead to obvious draw. Uh, or actually, is Bishop B1 possible also thereafter? Not very risky, but yeah, I could win that pawn. I could, no, but yeah, but uh, Bishop D3 and Bishop F1. Threatening huh? Bishop F1, but also uh, Rook D1 check and Bishop B1. It needs some analysis if you can win the pawn. I don't think uh, we are winning back the A pawn, but yeah, something trying to win the A2 pawn and settle the score there itself. But, but they but always have Rook, rook, rook K5. K5 and, uh, Knight uh, is doing well, so I don't think that's very... But at uh, rook f5, I just move the rook and try to play for attack then. Uh, okay. Rook to some other open file, and then bishop d3. But I think uh, b1 is an artificial move, and bd3 should be the correct move. And you'll move, move to e8. e8. Yeah, and trying to, and try some to play yeah, some e attacking one. moves. But white can always exchange a few pieces with rook d2. So uh, what I believe is rook d1 check and bd3 should lead to a roughly equal position. And the game hasn't progressed uh, here, no? Yes, and only yesterday you shared with us that the pieces should be active in the end game. Yes. So Bishop D3 looks uh, yeah, like very a very good strong. choice yeah. in this position. And you know, and that could black could because of the pop strength of the bishop, black could even go for a try for G5, G4, and uh, tighten the noose around White's king. Even in end game, there are chances of a uh, sorry, weak king and that has to be taken into account. All right. So let's go and have a look at Humpy, Humpy versus Lano yes. yeah. and we'll come back here. Uh, we left it over 
here and in fact yes. after ed5 yeah. humpy was taking her time and surprise surprise we expected her to go for g3, g3 yeah. but she goes for bishop g5 okay. here which so is I the think main yeah. cutthroat a weapon. cutthroat move so yes she is going to for he is going for blood having drawn first two games i think she is going for blood a uh, good yes yeah. so bishop g5 bishop e6 mm. e3 followed by c4 as yes. you had mentioned yeah. mm. c4 so a uh, what would you say are whites and blacks plans in this position yes Did here i think it's 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 a it's a very uh, uh, interesting uh, pawn structure because uh, if uh, i mean apparently uh, players like when sigbert tarash uh, started this tarash variation and for one of his victories over rubenstein uh, in that black was able to push b5 b4 and get uh, space on the queen side and eventually the queen side pawn uh, majority won the game because white's majority was crippled and white was not able to play f3 and e4 so soon and in a historic game between uh, botvinnik capablanca in a slightly different pawn structure with there was a pawn on c3 in that position uh, instead of b2 okay. so white was able to justify the pawn structure otherwise there was a time a few decades when bishop b4 and bishop into c3 was taken as almost a big advantage for black and botvinnik was the one who or defeated a uh, capablanca in that in a historic game and said that there's a balanced play and the position after bishop b4 and bishop into c3 the pawn structure wise uh, has been reached even in uh, anand carlson in the world championship match so you know that's a very dynamic position and uh, generally for a club level player much easier to play with black or in a because black already has a queen side majority and bb4 and the moves are quite natural to play bb4 castle try to play queen f5 and white has some problems in developing uh, the uh, king side and bb4 queen f5 can uh, create some threats against c3 the absence of bishop on uh, c1 the bb4 and queen f5 wouldn't make sense if white could go bishop d2 hmm. but now that uh, the bishop doesn't come back so black also has a very uh, aggressive i mean is in such a position white will be better but why will have to play white will have to play more accurately to get advantage there will be occasions where the best move gives you an advantage but second best move gives an advantage to your opponent mm. and that doesn't happen with black black has a serious danger if black doesn't do anything for another 15 20 moves and black pawns are not rolling then white will eventually be better with a b3 break wow so uh, this is uh also yeah. something uh, uh, that uh, uh, white uh, should consider yes, later a big on. a big strategic advantage for white then but here for example move like b3 will quickly fail to bishop b4 and queen f5 and white will lose some material so queen f5 knight e4 and it's gone the game is over so the strategic plans are all there if you are not uh, missed out something more trivial than that like this for example losing piece nothing uh, Uh, is more important than the basic principle the safety of king safety of material so strategic plan comes in picture only after everything else is there so this is not easy to achieve and that's why the position is uh, balanced so surely white will probably play bishop e2 and castle quickly uh, has the game proceeded beyond yes, that yes. okay let's see so, so I, i expect only bishop e2 and bishop b4 i think Yeah, bishop e2 was played. Bishop b4. Yes, and quick castle because queen f5. Now queen f5 is not good because I play bishop into f6, and you are you are not able to play bishop into c3 with a check. Hmm. Had the king been on e1, then bishop into c3 check and queen into c3 check, black wins a pawn and then recaptures with g f6. But right. now that so bishop e2 and castle were almost mandatory, and now let's see uh, if black is going to play bishop into c3 quickly or not. and how white is going to tackle uh, but how does uh, how does one decide that it's okay to give up the pair of bishops over here and not in some other position well as long as i am concerned i was uh, told this thing by a uh, great masters in the past they say that after knight c6 and b5 black will create a pass pawn which will be strong if you read uh, the literature written by the players not only the moves but the specific uh, Oh, you know one of the greatest contributions to chess have been by Stinitz and Tarash. Uh, Tarash was a person who started writing regularly about chess, a column for uh, weaker players, and he would explain his strategic ideas. And that's how, in the 
late uh, 19th century i'm talking of 140 years back or 150 years back, he started writing in german magazines at this stage some of the countries were very advanced germany austria uh, us and uh, england to some extent and russia of course ussr but mainly russia were very advanced in chess strategy and they even had chess magazines chess magazines go back to the uh, some of the chess magazines go back to the uh, 18th century the la last last part of the 18th century so you know the wow, are you serious yes yes philidor's right uh, writings and you will be surprised that there's a book called morals of chess by okay. morals they mean principle it was written by uh, none other than benjamin franklin the scientist is still available on the american government sites uh, wow. morals of chess more by morals he means principles so more than 300 years back and the uh, it was also published exact translation of that was published in uh, russia uh, over 200 years back so you know there was a communication between the chess fraternities uh, when there was no aeroplanes no trains and even um, between america and russia there was a communication and uh, you know once a chess player always a chess player so benjamin franklin kept on writing about chess and uh, although he didn't become a great player but yes he um, became a great chess author and some of the like chess language is unique as they say they exchange ideas and some of the great ideas most of the great ideas i learned from the masters before the second world war uh, they are the people who taught in order to explain to a beginner so as a beginner i found uh, tarash is a very great teacher when i became a better player i found uh, dr laskar as a even even higher level in stinets but uh, you can't understand uh, laskar without knowing stinets and tarash and that's how it is so <laughs> it's uh, there is <laughs> a there is a sort of way to study a syllabus you don't teach the uh, graduation portion to a child in the fifth uh, class <laughs> and that's what it happens it's study that side by side if you look at the five great books my great predecessors by gary kasparov mm -hmm. he goes in a systematic manner and explains how the theory evolves how the theory of greco and uh, morphy and anderson it uh, evolved it eventually evolved by sinets lasker and alekin and others so he goes by the same uh, idea you know Uh, world uh, correspondence champion Istrin mm -hmm. he got a phd uh, on his work on how a chess player how a successful uh, chess player should work and how a ch successful chess player works and he said that if your chess style has not grown in the same way the chess game has grown then you will have a stagnation before the others so yes yeah, study what was known to the world 400 years back first and then study what was known to the world 300 years back and 200 years back and 100 years back and then venture for bobby fisher or kasparov because if you are not uh, done the words well then you can't write the poets uh, poems so <laughs> it's like this so you know all uh, everybody in, uh, has studied classics yeah. and uh, those who have forgotten the classics they i mean it's time comes when uh, people forget the classics and at that time they get stagnated so the wonderful work nobody starts with uh, today's masters you have to learn and those who starts with today's masters will get quicker success and a shorter success span and shorter success so okay. again you have uh, to decide you want to be a star for a, a short while or you want to be a, a long term star and uh, strongest players do make it very clear and that's a, a thesis which i think he got from moscow university phd on that work and it was mentioned uh, by grand master yuri averbak in his visit to uh, bombay when i was a teenager and uh, i was highly impressed by the uh, way of thinking of some of the grand masters in those days wow, i just try to remember what they said and that's why probably uh, i'm able to uh, do well in chess or in life i think i and in commentary as, as well <laughs> <Okay>. yes <laughs> like totally enjoying these stories and getting to know so many new things which are not shared so commonly anymore we i have not read all these things yes in fact overbuck was uh, i mean very fond of me i don't know why uh, i wasn't a great player then but i drew with him in a simultaneous exhibition in uh, when i was a school boy so in uh, mumbai yes in mumbai and uh, several years uh, or later when i introduced and i talk he didn't remember the game of course but then he uh, we became he became quite in a sense he tried to teach me without any 
uh, taking any fees. You know, he would just come and tell me that uh, this it's not like this. Or he showed me a wonderful game, Carpo Miles once. Wow. And there's no occasion. He just came to me and said, "Do you know this wonderful game, 1984 Carpo Miles?" And I didn't know because I didn't play Zaitsev system. And if you're playing the Zaitsev system of Royal Opera, and if you don't know the Carpo Miles game, then I think you're missing out something uh, very the big. The Bishop A7. Uh that is not no, that is called Karpo uh, Uzikar. Karpo yes. Miles is the where the d5 pawn was sacrificed, okay. And the fantastic move, knight g5. Uh, I believe that even after that move was played on the board because I show it to students, and even after knight g5, they don't know the threat, whereas there is no defense against the threat, and yet they don't know what the threat is. Very common, so a very stunning uh, end of that game. So he showed me that game because he was impressed by that game and he wanted me to know that. So, such kind people who teach you without any expectation, uh, I think they. They did exist, and uh, well, I think they. Were, I mean, really grateful. Averbach was the only grandmaster I think who crossed 100 years of age, and mm -hmm. I read an article on him when on his uh, 100th birthday in one of the newspapers for Mo Mumbai and a magazine. Uh, 8th March 2022 was his 100th birthday, and uh, I wrote oh the nice. article. Uh, nice. His win over time now in a brilliant end game, and then unfortunately passed at the age of 100 in the. On 7th of May 2022, he passed away. But the only grandmaster who lived 100 years and who uh, author of hundreds of books and wow. um, I mean a person who wasn't a professional trainer but who helped hundreds of players l understand endgame. Wow, wonderful, wonderful uh, to know about. Yes, I, your story I think uh, with uh, Aberbach. Aberbach. Uh, one of the greatest persons of all the time, I must say also. Awesome. So, and he has also, uh, yes, of course, as you mentioned, he has written these series of endgame books, which I, I think mm -hmm. are like a staple for all chess players and they teach a lot about endgames. So, in case anyone watching wants to learn endgames, you can have a look at Yuri Averbach's series of endgame books and uh, I discovered them pretty late, to be okay. honest, mm -hmm. but I really enjoyed going through yeah. them. I haven't gone through all of them, but whatever I have, even the King Pawn and games yes, which King he explains. Yes, King Pawn is fantastic, yes. Yeah, it's just fantastic. Let's and, have and, and also he explains that uh, how many times have you reached King and Pawn ending? So people say two, three times, then why study them all? He says there are at least hundreds of occasions where you avoided a pawn exchange, mm -hmm. pawn ending, or your opponent avoided a pawn ending because it was winning or losing. And some of the games which you lost in pawn ending because you because you allowed that ending to come without knowing that it was losing. So knowledge is important because at least 200 times he said he avoided a pawn ending, it was bad for him, and he was able to get a good, good, good result. So study is important because you could avoid something, also not implement that. Wow. So knight bd7 on the board. Let's come back to the uh, game. I'm uh, not sure about this choice of knight here. I prefer the knight on c6. At least that was. That's what uh, Tarash and uh, others believed, and knight c6 is believed. But perhaps in this position, uh, it's not acceptable because the uh, entire line with bishop g5, no, it's uh, actually not good. It's not played in this particular structure. Uh, black doesn't voluntarily play this line. I mean, uh, Tarash ed5 is played only when bg5 is unplayable, or it's pl uh, not possible uh, with knight on c6. So uh, I'm sure that the regular setup is not going to do good to black right and also perhaps e4 mm. here uh, is the most critical move yes, and I that's the reason with the knight on uh, c6 yeah. and bishop on e6 this is super uncomfortable here d4 will be met yeah so i think you have to exchange bishop into c3 first and, uh, and then we can take on uh, yes and oh we need not even take yeah, we and can uh, play yeah, this and yeah, I don't and know, but uh, you get back the c4 pawn anyway and you're also making it uncomfortable for your opponent by threatening knight into e4. So as we see, this is tactically unplayable for, uh, in this structure, if white gets e4 break, white is always better. And mainly black prevents e4 break by supporting, uh, putting a pawn on b5 as well as putting bishop on f5. So e4 doesn't come before the e4 break. Yes. And now that the black bishop is already moved to e6, the entire setup uh, which Tarash was planning is unplayable because black has wasted a move in bishop bishop. So as I say, bishop g5 is no a choice which is the most principled one in the opening because black doesn't normally permit it. Black plays knight c6 first instead of knight f6. Then bishop g5 is met with bishop e7 in this more order. So sometimes, uh, yeah, so here 
Here knight f3 is a different, uh, yeah, yes, knight f3 is not good because of cd4, yes. Uh, I think we should not forget that uh, a pawn in center is a must, so in this model. But this is not a, this is, yeah, so in Tarash variation, black is compelled to play cd5. But in semi-Tarash, where black plays knight f6, in that case, only after bishop g5 is not permitted, they play c5. And bishop g5 is possible, they usually don't play. And when they play, they play knight into d5. If you look at the data for c5, c5, knight into d5 is the main move. E D5 is normally not chosen. Right. This position, great victory by Petrosian right. uh, against Paskey in 1966 match, and was considered to be unplayable for e many days till Fisher defeated uh, Petrosian in the same way, and uh, he prepared specifically against Petrosian because Petrosian felt the position very good for White, and he had beaten Spassky in a fantastic game. If you have not seen those games, you should see Petrosian win over Spassky in uh, this. Pawn structure and uh, Fisher's win over uh, Petrosian subsequently. That's one of the best games of chess I've ever seen. Wow, I will definitely go and see them after this stream. Uh, and uh, CD5 was played instead. Yes, and here, yeah, yeah, ED5 was played. That's yes, a bit ED5. This is supposed to give White some advantage after Bishop G5. So Humpy, uh, how much time did Humpy take for Bishop G5? She has taken about. Uh, no, um, Sorry, CD5, and she took about three minutes for Bishop. Yes, so she goes for the most principled variation rather than transposing into the routine with G3. And the final position, because black would not play knight C6, I think white must be slightly better. So E3, C4, but it's perhaps a modern theory. I'll have a yes, look when yes. we get a Yeah, obvi obviously this is theory, but uh, uh, the strategy whenever a strong player uh, sort of plays something which is not in agreement with a s existing strategy, there is a dynamic and tactical initiative related reason to that. And that the competitors are able to help you out. So I'm sure if it's a modern theory, uh, say 100 years back or 60 years back, it might have been considered to be a bad position for black. But if it's acceptable now to theory, it's because of the contribution of competitors, I must say, because competitors come up with some fantastic variations. In fact, uh, the strategic concepts are changing because of the, uh, they are more time related. Strategic concepts hold true, but they are time related. You want to play e4, and if you don't get e4, then the game is decided if white is able to get e4 or not. If white gets e4, white will be invariably better, and if white doesn't get e4, black will eventually become better. Be yes, to play yeah. So knight bd7 in order to protect the knight on f6 so that e4 is controlled. So when the queen moves, uh, e4 is guarded. Black can go for queen f5 next or bishop into c3 and queen f5. How is e4 now? Is yes, tactically I'm sure all analyzed here. <laughs> yes. Yeah, but yeah. Probably this is all, uh, this is the. Yeah, they must have analyzed. Um, Black must have analyzed this position at home. And even this uh, is not so great, perhaps because of. Yeah, now uh, the this F3, is yeah. now not. Uh, that's yeah. exactly what you were yeah, talking about. Yeah, you can't about. you can't easily win the e4 pawn now. Yes. So control of Jaeger. So I'm sure this position has already been reached at home, in in Black's preparation for sure. Yes. So knight bd7, and then uh, knight d2 was played. Yeah, was this exact position yeah, again aiming at e4? So the both Phoenix plan. Uh, if White gets f3 and e4, White will be better. But it's not always easy because uh, uh, it's sometimes the d4 will hang, sometimes e4 will be impossible. Generally, if you get f3 and e4 and e5, as Botvinnik proved against Capablanca, uh, uh, in a structure where black plays bishop into c3, in that structure, white wins if white gets, slow, white slowly wins if white gets f3, e4, e5, and f4, f5, and yeah. the king side weakness against is more important. Yeah. Except the ninth game of the World Championship match in which uh, Carlson played this position and he actually won because of Anand's blunder. Mm. But in the interview he said that I played a line which was very risky because I was in serious danger of getting mitted. So <laughs> and he played that risky variation. So I think courage is something important. For I think club level players I must say what uh, World Champion Stinnett slayed uh, 120 or 130 years back is chess is not for timid souls. And if you have to play a sharp principled move, uh, uh, avoiding that is only going to worsen your position. So wow. sometimes uh, people say that this is necessary. 
So necessary means there's a strategic obligation. It's not a forced move as such, but strategic obligation. So here, similarly, I think bishop into c3 eventually is going to be a strategic obligation to black. As long as black can avoid it, okay. But there will be a time when black will have to play that to prevent e4. Yes. Okay. So, uh, yes, absolutely. So knight d2 was played mm -hmm. over here and uh, short castle yes. uh, which is a uh, very normal move and white definitely played e4, e4 she yeah. has to go for it yes and now probably black will not play bishop into c3 because now there's no point in uh, trying to save has she played bishop into c3 no, I don't she think actually so. took on uh, e4. e4 and then she can go back bishop e7 but let's see if c4 pawn becomes weak also so e4 takes then which knight again uh, to take with is an important question C if you take with the c3 knight, you want to win the c4 pawn, but it may not be so easy because rook is coming to c8 easily. And uh, yes, now it seems but that knight, knight d uh, e2, yeah, knight d2 looks more logical than knight uh, c. I don't know, I'm trying to win the pawn, but it I I'll never this, succeed yes? in that. Black will get b5 perhaps. And that's why the worst, when you ca have a capture of choice, the worst place piece should capture first. Like the d2 knight is not as well placed as. Uh, D, uh, c3 knight so you should try to take it the d2 knight secondly we should presume that the c4 pawn is going to live here for some time it's going to exist then why should try to push d5 so knight d into e4 looks more logical instead of uh, this capture and now again the game re revolves around the d4 d5 like if bad gets d if white gets d4 d5 white will be much better if white doesn't get d4 d5 then black will eventually get a better position. So again, the entire play will revolve around pushing d5 and stopping d5. And in all of these lines, we see the importance of the knight being on d7 instead of c6. Yes. First of all, it doesn't come under attack after yes. d5. Yes. And secondly, mainly, it supports the f6 knight and we don't uh, need to worry about our structure yes. anymore. Exactly. And uh, the knight could be really well placed on uh, d7 compared to c6. So we are not getting into the pawn structure at all. The pawn structure which was considered to be better for black is white is not allowing that and as a result knight on d7. So that's wisdom. If we try to follow what Taraj did in a different position and you play knight c6, you would be in a bad position because of e4. So yes. that's very important. So uh, white in fact did not take on e4 with either of the knights even though okay. it was hanging by both the pieces. But take on she C4. played d5 here. Oh. She played d5 here, very direct. Humpy uh, plays d5 and black takes on c3, Yes. d e6. Okay. It's, it's uh, because now if we take back with the pawn, uh, yes. we lose our d5 pawn for yeah. free. It's winning for uh, black. Also. Black. B uh -huh. Black is a pawn up. So d5 then is a very sharp move. I'm not sure about the soundness of the move, but of course, uh, how much time has Humpy consumed to play d5? Yeah, that's a great question. So she took 10 minutes to play okay, d5. Okay. So she has planned something which I'm not able to see at the moment. So and e4, but, yeah. but it's important to note that for knight d2, she took 20 minutes. Okay. She took 21 minutes actually to play knight d2. So here, uh, we, we can't say that Humpy was in a familiar position. She, as you said, might have been aware of the ideas yeah. because knight d2 seems like a perfect move to yeah. play here. But she has taken her time to find it out over the board. Yes, in fact, the structures with bishop into c3 came in her match against Kuji Fan uh, sometimes. But here, of course, that's not going to come. So, castle happened. Uh, we saw this position. And then white played d5, aggressive. Yes, I think uh, when you she played uh, uh, knight d2, she planned for this. But I'm not sure if this uh, good... Uh, because white is going to be a pawn down or something. There are loose pawns for black and uh, two bishops are stronger than... But uh, somehow... I think black is very comfortable. Yeah, you so have to play two knights against two bishops. But yes, so by the way, here you cannot take the pawn because yeah. you simply lose Sh the bishop. Yeah. So bishop d2 is So two forced. pieces are attacked. Yeah, two po black pieces are attacked. And uh, black can survive only by exchanging one. One move before. So uh, one move before. So two black pieces are attacked with pawns. Sorry. And saving both of them is not possible. So one of them has to damage some of white's forces that does bishop into d2 does so white will be a pawn down but black will have a lot of weaknesses white will have two bishops and uh, black will have uh, two knights but an extra pawn 
yes. a sharp game and perhaps uh, initiative will lie only with uh, white so um, black should be fine but uh, yes ampi choice is very sharp i i thought that she was going for a kill today let's see if she succeeds because she is against a equally a uh, strong opponent and it's going to be a very good battle it's but probably 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 uh, what is interesting for me is she did not take on f7 first. oh but then you then you wouldn't get a c4 pawn see Yes. Then black gets the time. Black has time to save the c4 pawn. Rook c8 or, or rook c8. yeah, in an it file as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So you know, like c4 pawn is more important, and if black plays f into e6, bishop into c4 seems to be good. So c4 pawn is important. It allows knight to get to d3. So very important is to make sure that since black has to move the knight now, knight, even knight b6 comes into consideration. Or even knight e5. Knight e5 comes into consideration. Yes. To Rather than f6, yeah, knight e5, and we have to see if. Um, yes, this is going to be a bit. Um, I mean, it's bad for black. You know, yeah. Extra pawn doesn't make sense. Black must play knight e5 or knight b6. Knight e5 being more active, and uh, yeah, there is e7 tactical move like e7 is not working. Knight b6 does exist because it's a stable knight. It's a stable knight. Knight e5 is subject to be driven, so c4 pawn can become weak. Uh, knight b6 also is option. Knight e5, and one must see that e7 pawn fork is not there. So for queen into queen, you must take with the f8 rook and not with the uh, yeah. If after the queen exchange, for example, oh. one must take with the yes. This, this yeah. would be a yes. huge miss yes. because e7 yes. and yeah. our pawn suddenly, which was on yeah. d4, has reached e7 yeah. and will reach the eighth yeah. rank as well. So somehow, Ampi has played a very sharp line, and uh, her uh, opponent is going to. No, uh, that this pawn is important. Yeah, e7. I don't know if it's a good move, but White has given up a couple of pawns, and uh, it may not be uh, easy to justify if something is done. So, well, after knight e5 or knight b6, mm. let's say knight e b6. Yeah, ef7. We take on yeah. f7, of yeah. course, and yeah. now we are a pawn down, but we have a pair of bishops in an open position. And quite so a quite a uh, number of loose pawns. So something like queen moving the queen to some other some square, where it could attack e4, and uh, rooks could come to uh, d1 and c1. So White may hope to win both the pawns also, uh, slowly. C2 idea bishop f6. Uh, and bishop I'm, I'm not in a hurry. Yeah, I'm not in a hurry. Maybe I just get rook d1 tempo first and then bishop f6, rook d1. So that uh, queen moves and then I take on f6 and yeah, queen d5. So uh, bishop, bishop is attacked. Bishop f6 yeah. is hanging. But even bishop e3 becomes an interesting move because uh, suddenly you shift your focus to the c4 pawn by trying to exchange that knight. So rook c1 or rook d1 and that rook to c7 is going to be a um, battle for material. If White wins the c4 pawn, I think White will always be better, much better, because that's a powerful bishop. Uh, structure with bishop into b6 and bishop c4 will always be very strong for White if White is winning that pawn free. So Black is trying to do best to guard that pawn, and uh, probably it depends on yeah. So maybe queen f7. Yeah, something of that sort, and it depends on the uh, tactical d3. Well, yeah, so yeah, so. Yes, these are but all. But once you play rook d4, you lose the chance of bishop into b6. Yes, that and is. And if true. you play bishop into b6 first and play rook d4, your opponent gets b5. Uh, so you can't you can't have the cake and eat it too. <laughs> Unfortunate. <laughs> 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 Would have loved that. But yes, this is a uh, this is a great uh, strategic concept that we have just seen, mm -hmm. and it could occur on the board very yeah. well. They have already reached this position, and Black has played knight e5. Yes, I think Ampi is one of the most so original Black has players. Not uh, not Ampi is one of the most original players. I mean, she doesn't uh, believe in preparation much, and she carries out her own plans, and that's the reason why I feel that somewhere, uh, you know, if she can be caught in the opening, uh, she could be in trouble. So. Uh, but her wisdom uh, helped her think 20 moves and uh, 20 minutes and 10 minutes. She is a very great player, so she knows that opponent uh, knew this position and she didn't know, and she took 20 minutes and she found the right plan. And not even that, the dynamics of the position she sensed, and instead of going for a slow plan with e4, she just play e4 and d5. You know, it requires a character of a champion, a personality where she is willing to give up a pawn to create chances. She knows that she's a pawn down and she could. Uh, risk. She has to play for initiative. If nothing happens for 20 moves, Black will win. So, onus of doing something is on. Uh, knight e5 was chosen. Okay. 
Polina, do your impressions reflect the, these of Katrina's or what is your take? Yeah, it was a very calculated uh, game. And uh, I think yeah, after Nico 5 or 95, I had an initiative. And then I thought that Rook D4 maybe was a mistake because of Bishop E6 and Knight E6. And then yeah, after Rook E2, uh, it was still not clear. Yeah, I think it's more like a draw. Then maybe I had some chances because I still like my position, like I could not lose. But maybe it was nothing. I don't know. Overall, would you both say that this was a okay start for the start of the tournament for you two? Katrina, do you want to go first? Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yeah. I was, I was glad. Yeah. Of course. It's it's always tricky to play the first round, so yeah, it's, I'm pretty much fine. Polina, from your end. Uh, yeah, the last two days were quite complex, so um, I hope um, I'm glad to just start the tournament with a normal result. Okay, and now you're getting in your zone slowly because the tournament has started and you're able to focus on the things that matter most to you, and that is playing chess. So. Hopefully it will go well. Thank you both for your time. Good luck. Uh, enjoy and uh, hopefully things will be better for now. Thank you very much.
Baeva here with us. Uh, your first game here in uh, New Delhi in the Women's uh, Grand Prix in the third leg, but also the first victory of the tournament. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how do you feel about playing your first game here and uh, about the victory? I'm a little bit tired, it's maybe because of some episode about the tournament. But okay, we start the tournament and everything is okay and I try to show my best. You won a game. Uh, it seems that you surprised uh, Vaishali uh, in, the, in the beginning. Uh, she spent quite a lot of time uh, thinking, was that the case? What is your take on the game? Yes, usually I play Niders, but in this game I play something new and it's going good. So she, yes, she was surprised and spent a lot of time. What would you say were, was her key mistake? Where sort of things started falling apart for her? I don't know. In the opening, she can play uh, 94, mm, not C, take C, D, D, yeah. yet. But then I think the position was equal after bishop h6. I have bishop h6 and rook d4, but I'm not sure what is this because she have 93, rook d7, g 5 or something. So I play just 96 and position a little bit worse for black, for white, and she have. Uh, one minute or two, I don't remember. So I have advantage and what the key mistakes, I don't know. So you said you surprised her uh, in the beginning. How, did you, was it visible from her, obviously you were sitting across her, was it visible from her face expression? When you surprised someone, well, did, you, did you tell that based on the fact how much you spent time thinking or uh, based on some her physical reaction? Uh, how much uh, she, she spent, spent time, time, yes. Okay. Oh, I agree. Well, now after the first game for you here and the first victory, are you going to rest or are you going to start preparing immediately for the next round? Yes, I will have a take, take a rest. Take a rest. Right. Well, thank you very much and good luck thank with you. the rest of the tournament. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello, welcome back. So uh, we left the game at Humpy's board and we are still with Humpy and Lano. Knight uh, e5 khel chuke hai wo board par. So let's have that on the screen. Knight e5 on the board. And uh, I think Humpy is still thinking. She yes. has not made her move yet. Mm, queen c3 or... Uh, it's not going to be easy to win the pawn unless you attack the knight. And that's why I thought knight b6 was the most stable. Because knight e5 is uh, susceptible to attack and mm, some piece other than bishop should attack c4. I think the logic is that knight would jump to d3 which means the bishop can never capture that. So some other pieces have to attack c4. This is a very strong piece yes, on d3. Yes. No, if, if, if black gets knight three, uh, d3, white will not... Uh, white, can, white can forget about equalizing. So here I think uh, white has to play equally aggressively. Queen b4 risky. Uh, queen c3. Queen b4 looks nice. But queen b4, I was wondering if uh, taking b7 is going to be safe. Because if you take b7 any time, then uh, rook b knight d3 here is not good because yes. of queen c4. Yes. Yeah, and... Uh, that's bad, but the c4 pawn is the gist of it. It's the most important. It's a sort of soul of the position. If black loses c4, white is going to be better. So I don't know. Queen b6 comes into a possibility. I think I'm worried more about. Uh, yeah, somehow queen b4 doesn't look very comfortable. Is a knight d5 coming? Knight is, is knight d5 five. coming here? No, uh, queen into b7 is coming. No? Queen, so knight d5, let's uh, leave it. Ah, queen into b7, no, queen into g5. Knight d5, queen into b7, and is queen into yeah, g5. Yeah, yes. queen into g5 is winning, but uh, not... Oh, oh yeah. let's yes, ask yeah. our chat if they can spot it. Yeah. I will give us a couple of seconds before we make the move. So you can what happens to, to queen into d5? What happens to queen into d5? What happens if we take this piece? Can black now win somehow? Think for yourself and uh, we can make the move now. Knight check and there is a discovered attack on yes. the queen like we discussed yesterday. Yes, sir, yes, yes. yes. And even though the knight can be taken with the bishop, you can't take the pawn, take it back with the pawn. But the queen is unsupported and black wins. Yeah. But white has a strong reply, I think, instead of queen into b7. Um, All right. uh, let's just go back to... The variation knight d5 and yes. bishop, say bishop into d8 is a complex line and knight into b4 bishop e7 e7 e e7 rook e8 is probably bad for uh, oh because uh, of knight c6 yeah or even yeah knight c6 but even and you know i thought even after exchange sacrifice or not just, but yes bishop e7 wins a d exchange in a different way so Bishop e7 would be I think better. I think this would be a draw after knight goes to d3. You take the uh, bishop into f8 and ef7 check. Uh, okay, no, not check, but yeah, better save the yeah, ef7. So And b2 cannot be uh, taken. So although white is exchange up, I think uh, it should be a draw. And b3 could be a blunder because of c3 and yes. c2 and black suddenly <laughs> wins. Yeah, this would be so a disaster. The c4 pawn is going to be a giant. And the uh, game revolves around survival of the pawn. Wow, very well uh, explained. Thank you. So we are on this position and it is white to move. So we will come back to this board. Uh, sorry, not this one, but yeah. this mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. And we will come back to this board to find out what is it that Humpy decided to play. For yeah. now, we think that black is comfortable and white needs to play aggressively in order to equalize. Yeah, either eliminate the C4 pawn uh, not equalize that, so even advantage if you win a c4 pawn, you could be better. Uh, mostly, white will win an exchange uh, if white has to equalize. I mean, just if a c4 pawn survives, then the only way uh, white can survive is uh, win something else. Like in the line we saw, winning an exchange would lead to equality. So, perhaps queen b4, queen c3, such moves. Yes. So we will come back and uh, find out. Let's go to Zujiner versus Polina Shovalova, a game we haven't discussed for a while. Mm -hmm. And uh, it has progressed a lot since we left it. We left it over here. Yes. In the It was an Italian defense. Uh, let's just go back briefly. Zujiner opened with E4. Black opened... 
black replied with e5 and they converted uh, they went on to go into an italian defense with knight to f6 and bishop e7 setup here in this position white decided to go for c3 yes so uh, if you, if you play say knight c3 or rook e1 or a4 then it doesn't become really Italian because bishop is not on c5. Then it becomes more or less a Hungarian defense. With bishop on e7 is a Hungarian idea. And bishop c5 is the Gaikopian or the Italian idea. So different ways of playing. Both are very good. So with bishop on e7 and pawn on d6, it becomes more or less like a royal pace, the Spanish game. Right. And white tries to avoid d5. So white normally plays rook e1 or uh, knight c3 or even... Uh, Knight B D two prevents and even A four prevents. Do you know that A four also prevents uh, uh, D five because no, then I did yeah. not know that. So because that's yeah, uh, instead of rook even. So this is how we are preventing D five after rook even. Yes, one. yes. So that's why black yeah. will uh, play D six. Yeah. And we have a position which is similar. I think A four after A four also D five is supposed to be unplayable. I don't know exactly, but some bishop B five or something comes subsequently. And so uh, maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know this exact variation. Because your bishop G four is possible. So still, maybe H three. Yeah, so this position is uh, just little better. It's avoided at the top level at least. A6 is probably, f uh, no, A6 rook even. Yeah, I'm just yeah, making so a move to find out if hmm. black can simply wait. Yeah. But then rook even and now F6 and this black is... Yeah, uh, F6, is is F6 is bad and bishop F6, knight D2 is very awkward. Knight D2, E4. So uh, it is considered to be one of the moves which stops uh, E4. But yeah, and you see the disaster coming with bishop g5 now, no? also maybe c3 first and then bishop g5. Bishop g5 looks great. Awesome. Yeah, because yeah. f6 already weakens mm. this diagonal and yeah. uh, otherwise we are just yeah. bishop Som d5 and knight. Sometimes I've seen uh, some great players defending bad positions and stronger than me and I didn't know how to do. So I said, I'm sure you don't like your position. And then they, they said, yes, actually I don't like it. I was just defending the position for the sake of arguing. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. So no black, no, there will be no takers for black, as you can see. Right. So c3, allowing d5 is, uh, I don't know, because um, I, I prefer black in this, although white is win, wins upon many, li many lines. But right. So d5, ed, knight d5, this is the position mm. where we mm, left yeah. it. And rook e1, very logical. Mm. Bishop g4, yeah. h3, mm. bishop h5, this is all discussed. And if g4, bishop g6, knight e5, if white chooses to take a pawn like this, then there are too many holes near the yeah. black Black plays for c6 and then bishop d6. Yes, first let's support the knight and then bishop d6 and we take advantage of the weak mm. squares around white's king. So that's why white plays knight bd2. Yeah, recently Anand actually uh, showed that this was possible against, I think, uh, mm, one of the uh, players, I, uh, I think, it was it Ding Liren? But here, Anand played this move. Uh, this move uh, looks like a bad move because black can get knight b6 here. And uh, the d3 pawn suddenly becomes very weak. But it was played by Anand and uh, the game ended in a draw. I think bishop b5, it's a complex line. It's also a theoretical move. But uh, white has played a setup which doesn't offer anything to white. I mean, this is a line where uh, knight b6 is a move, I think, and the regular F6, move. Yes. Yeah, now. It's not easy to get d4 um, without weakening the pawn structure. But so, but yes, Anand played this with white and he got a reasonably good position, knight e4 or something. I forgot the game, but uh, I'm, I'm sure that the exact position where Anand played this, I was surprised and I was worried about the result, but the game ended in a draw. So, uh, knight b6 was not played by uh, Shuvalova, she uh, just to just to opinion, can you ask Injun if knight b6 is the best because it's played by Anand's opponent? Yes, knight b6 is yeah. one of a uh, okay. good moves. Okay, so I'm not finding it out. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the game. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a6 was played instead. Okay. And uh, I mean, I'm completely in awe of your memory. Like, how are you able to recollect <laughs> what exactly was played in which game? Is a real. Uh, I think I I remember all Anand's games. All of Anand's games. Yes. All of them. I yes. don't think almost Anand. Almost all of them. Do you think you remember them no, no, better An than Anand? Remember? No, An Anand. No, Anand remembers much better than me. Oh. He will even he will be able to tell you on which move he made a mistake and what was the novelty oh. of a game played in the 80s. Wow. 
but that's interesting because you know i saw an interview of humpies with like she did a long interview with uh, surya mm-hmm. and um, this was during the lockdown and we were dis- uh, they were discussing some of humpies games and she could not really recollect what she had played in which game and it was very interesting to watch how everyone thinks chess players remembers remember all their games but uh, humpy is such a strong player that has not been h- her approach to uh, studying chess oh uh, i think there are two uh, ways and of uh, memorizing uh, one is you actually remember everything and when you remember concepts but anand is good i mean anand's memory is better than anybody else i have seen so anand just simply remembers incidences and i mean everything even of the non chess instances and senses he remembers very well his memory just happens to be um, you know like uh, yes yeah, so i i would consider him as a sort of genius means yes. i mean he's uh, meant to play chess and uh, yeah he's just naturally good at that because i saw young when he was young even if he did, didn't uh, was not able to justify the moves he was found correct he had that great sense of positional play that uh, he could just uh, outplay the opponent without giving a reason why opponent's position was bad just wow. like kapablanka it is in fear about kapablanka that kapablanka was always playing the best moves without being able to justify he said that okay it just occurred to me and that was the case with anand i have seen myself because when i asked him whenever i asked him logical explanation when he was very young he said no but i don't like this <laughs> and then the hours of analysis sometimes days of analysis would prove me wrong <laughs> so i said you said it without any knowledge of the position you felt it so he said yeah i felt it was not good so that's the sort of comes only to a genius not to people like me who have to think it out logically no i, I mean i think you are also uh, like phenomenal uh, exceptionally phenomenally uh, uh, like you know great and a legend i mean i cannot imagine i have never had this kind but, of but, an but enriching I, but I only conversation g- i only only g- gather but player. i only gather information for example one of the as a child what averbach told me so he said that at a particular level huh. you play only by memory so i said uh, that was i was very young so i asked him do you what do you mean so he said all the concepts you rarely find out a concept you are not come across for example i'm sure that you played chess for more than 20 years and uh, there is not a single checkmate or checkmate pattern or combination you don't know it's only the matter of spotting it i'm Perhaps. sure yeah as yeah so i don't i i know there are still some new concepts which we learn ev- which we see every day no no with engine some new concepts are developing but i what i'm talking was about 50 years back when the theory was more rigid than today uh, the engines had not shown that some totally unacceptable moves are actually playable but in those days it was uh, quite clear that for example uh, say we take a exam opening of kings indian which i play yes if i don't Your do anything yeah if i don't play uh, if i don't get something some attack initiative by move 40 i'm going to lose the position i know that that by move 30 or 40 i should have some threats if i don't have the threats i'm going to lose so that's a rough concept so then i i'm fighting for survival so that's not of concept cement so that has to be memorized uh, it, it, it are remem- they are remembered and they are used uh, subsequently that's and, what he meant and there's one more uh, like uh, on the same lines we will get to the life position but since we are on the topic uh, you are a great expert of kings indian of course uh, anyone who wants to study kings indian should definitely have a look at pravin ji's uh, pravin ji's games he has such great understanding of kings indian and you've been playing it so for so many years yes. but you are also g- a great follower of the uh, classical masters and you read a lot of books yes. so for example korchunai who was uh, like world championship challenger and uh, such a great legend of the game he always believed that it's kings indian is bad for black yes so kings indian is losing he was saying yes. not bad he said kings indian is losing opening so he was very critical of the opening and then when you read such comments or such opinions how did it affect you and how did you not give up your pet opening well i think as a child i learned that this was a game between me and my opponent it was not a like as fisher said because that was that contributed also if god plays with god god with white will win that's 100% about kings indian 
Right. But I'm not playing to uh, going to play against God. <laughs> so that's important. And if God was playing chess, we wouldn't be uh, there wouldn't be world champions. Only one world champion. <laughs> yes. So Fisher made it very clear. I think some of these uh, comments by these people, which are generally ignored, you know, I, I realized immediately what he meant at that time. Yes. That is how you play against your opponent. If you're playing, if you're able to play a position better than your opponent in that game, then be it Kings Indian or Dutch or whatever opening. <laughs> Yeah. Yes, you absolutely. are going to. Yeah, so that's I think very. Kurtzman, of course, knows, and he was hoping to uh, beat Kings Indian in his own way. That's uh, Soviet Soviet way, and most of the Soviet masters felt that Kings Indian was inadequate, yes. except Boleslavsky and Bronstein. This Boleslavsky's son-in-law, Bronstein. So they were experts in uh, Kings uh, Indian, but other Russians don't play Kings Indian in general. Okay. And at the same time, Kurtzman tried many times against Kasparov, who was world champion. And he was not even able to make a draw. He tried exchange variation. He tried sandwich. Uh, he tried uh, main line, and everywhere Kasparov was able to beat him. So again, how uh, how much better Kurtzman's position was, what advantage he had, is irrelevant because he lost all those games. Right. So at the end of the day, it depends on how you play over the board than what you have. What kind of opinions you have about the? And a successful player, Kings Indian player, has to bear in mind that this position is not equal. <laughs> and one of doing yes, for example, Smirin calls it Kings Indian warfare. <laughs> it's a war. You have to start a war, and you are lesser, you are worse army. So you, it's important for you to strike first. Wonderful, wonderful. So those are great gems of advice. And now let's come back to the game and get to the live position. We have reached the tenth move so far, but they have played so many more moves. So let's get there. Knight so f1 was Yeah, but played. I prefer white here because knight b6 is not played. I prefer white. Yes, knight b6 was important. a6 was the move that was chosen by black instead. So she took about eight minutes to make this, seven minutes to make this move. So perhaps uh, she was out of book, but we we will find out. Knight f1. Knight e4. Oh, okay, but knight f1 fine. And again, there's a chance to play knight b6 and bishop g6. Attacking the d3 quickly, so we are trying to simplify. Now it will depend on the tactical uh, possibility. For example, if you play knight b6 here, and b uh, if you play bishop, knight b6, bishop b3 looks necessary, and bishop g6. Now can white take the e5 pawn? If white can take the e5 pawn, and uh, which I think uh, in that case uh, white is better. If white can't take this pawn, for example, for bishop d6. Uh, so, for yeah, example, queen yeah, d3 is yes, a blunder yes. because of e7. Yes. And so, so is bishop into d3 because of rook into e7. And so is bishop d3 because rook takes e7. Hmm. And we get two bishops for a rook, which is a great material yes. exchange for us. So, this is already a huge plus. Uh what else does black have? Bishop yeah, for example, bishop d6. And if white goes rook e1, then there's a trick. Wow. Bishop into d3 recovering the pawn. Wow, nice. Here, bishop d3 would win, uh, would recover the pawn because but, queen but d3 white, loses. Yes, but white is still slightly better. Because of bishop h2 check, discovered attack on the yes. queen and we pick up the queen for free. Yeah, so but white plays rook e3 and white is a, st a solid pawn up. and uh, We support the pawn twice and, uh, and yeah, we are there's no pawn There is no justification for loss of a pawn. Yes, and this is all good, all and good here. Yeah, so white is uh, winning here. So that's the reason why now knight b6 is not possible. So so knight f1 was played. In yeah, uh, so knight f1 was played and black played queen d6. Queen, queen d6, d6 okay. and... Uh, yeah, logical. The pawn was attacked. I was trying to uh, get rid of the e5 pawn because now it's more likely to be a weakness than a strength. E5 is now more likely to be a weakness than strength now. Right. So Bla white will put more pressure on it. Let's see how she continued. Knight G3, yeah. Bishop G6 is lost. So this is indirectly putting pressure on the E5 point because you drive away the bishop which is spinning the knight, which means one attack against E5. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy to bring the third attack, but you get one tempo with Knight E4 also. So it's again going to be, should be, um, yeah, I mean... It Probably it's going to be very tactical now because the queen goes to d7, then you you yourself stopping knight into e5, and with queen on d6, there's no third attack possible. Queen e2 would be artificial move. Knight f4 yes. probably. Knight f4 or yeah, knight f4 uh, probably doesn't work. I think. Ah, uh, sorry. No, no knight e4, knight e4. See this pawn structure, you have to be careful. Your pawns are doubled, 
and white will get a majority with d4 and your majority like yesterday's game the exchange variation yes. you are saddled with uh, some position where this could be strategically uh, very difficult for black so knight f4 perhaps not but uh, say something like rook a8 or uh, rook f8 rook f8 perhaps yeah yeah looks great so knight into e5 would uh, walk into i think uh, some sort of pin uh, i think this rook is unsupported so we can uh, actually this would not work because yeah, b yeah because we simply uh, pick take up on the rook two rooks yeah yes. and there is no uh, no damage happening uh, due to loss of queen loss of queen itself is not a great damage there is a gain of material so knight e5 if it's not possible but because of bishop move yes and uh, yeah and then d4, d4 and, yeah, and we jump simply take take back and white is driven back yeah queen f1 or some funny moves to be played d1 probably yeah so black is uh, much better this here, looks yeah. so awkward yes yeah so black has completed the development yes. white has problem with the c1 bishop which has no square mm -hmm. black's bishops are very menacing on d3 square is weak and this more both uh, pieces are looking at queen side and this is going to be a tough position so black would e this is a position where one mistake could lead to a better position for the opponent and objectively it's very difficult to see that black is better here where well, uh, equal material symmetrical pawn structure remove all the pieces and the game is drawn <laughs> but black pieces are so strong and white pieces are uh, waiting looking for squares to be developed yes absolutely activity piece activity one of the factors which influences the result of the game uh bishop uh, so this all all, yeah, all of, of this of was yeah. not played yeah. basically bishop, bishop g6, g6 yeah. was met with d4 okay uh, so white decided to do, uh, take some action in the center she is now she had 1 hour 7 minutes on her clock when she decided to go for d4 black played knight to b6 yeah i think one of the uh, ways to simplify as well no mm. Uh, in let me just yeah. uh, verify if this is the right move. In uh, my opinion, e d four is good enough to equalize. Yes, knight b six was the move. Knight b six was played. Okay, but e d four was also good. I think this position after d four it's e equal roughly. I mean, white is not going for uh, a kill because of once the e five and d one get the dynamics uh, nature of the position is gone. Uh, perhaps she took on no, d four. No, huh? perhaps take with the knight is accurate because. Um, but now I'll just take and play. Yeah, um, I think c5. Yeah, maybe I exchange it. it no, no, c5 would be a blunder because of bishop e3. Yeah. And I attack this knight, and if you support it, I simply yes, pick it up and yeah. take the. So. Queen. So not c5, but maybe any other move. Yeah. Basically, so rook d8 would also hmm. be fine, I think. Yeah, why does uh, actually black pieces are uh, well placed here, but. Yeah, sometimes what happens even if you take on, you are not threatening to take on d4. So that gives white some time to push a move like play a move like d5 perhaps, or to play um, um, attack the b7, maybe queen f3 and bishop f4. Because you can't play knight d5. E7, right. e7 is hanging. Yes. So. so let's just show this. This is impossible because we need to keep our e7 guarded at the moment. And uh, white pieces are very well placed. Yeah, and if you play c six bishop f four, why should uh, uh, black be? I mean, you can't take d four again for the same reason. But the additional reason of bishop c seven also has been created. Yes, yes, yeah, that's yeah. why I should not yeah. allow it. Yeah, so uh, I don't think now there is white has to worry about the pawn because white pieces are more active. Rook a d one or knight e four seem to be very good here. Knight e four doesn't it allow queen d four again? Bishop e three. Yeah, I think something will go. I mean, even. Uh, Bishop e3 and yeah, bishop e3 is e4 is attacked, so oh not bishop e3, right. not bishop. No, e3. but uh, then we take and play bishop b6, and oh, then the rook and two, the bishop. Two two pieces are attacked. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, so perhaps bishop e3, or I was thinking of bishop c7 followed by rook d1. Even that is, I don't know, but rook d1 always there's a bishop into e4 move. Perhaps the entire variation is possible for knight e4, queen into d4 is possible perhaps. Bishop, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, but you take rook into e4. Bishop into yeah, yeah. This would be a yeah, mistake. Blend that a piece yes. is being lost, so rook e4, a piece will be lost. No, something will go at least. Yes. So uh, basically, queen, queen b4 will yeah. be played, and then 
this is complicated yeah let's just say that because uh, it's still a game nothing yes, is hanging yes and bd6 or something yeah, but you are upon down and uh, white has to even a3 moves uh, can be very awkward it's position which is playable but black is taking a big risk of hanging pieces and uh, uh, one mistake could result into losing a piece yes absolutely so let's see how did black handle uh, how did white handle the position instead knight b6 was played bishop b3 ed4 was taken back with the mm. pawn so pawn comes to the center but it's completely alone by himself <laughs> because there is there are no other friends to support him on d4 <laughs> either on the c or the e rank so basically it's an isolated pawn uh, the advantage is that we also get some squares for yeah. our pieces with the help of the pawn and uh, and we have more space we have more space and we control important sp yes. squares in the center at the same time we have a very bad uh, uh, control of d5 square so black piece can uh, be at d5 whenever black wanted uh, one important thing uh, uh, i learned from uh, grandmaster and former uh, world junior champion cheko he told me once that if there is a isolated pawn then as minor pieces start getting exchange the pawn becomes very weak very weak and eventually in queen and uh, uh, queen two rooks and queen ending the pawn could even be lost if black triples and the pawn could be lost so uh, four minor pieces yes white has no problems even three minor pieces probably white will be equal so now the battle will be more or less for the activity of white pieces and for prevention of uh, activity by white pieces black by black so black will try to prevent white from activating the pieces and giving threats against uh, f7 for example if the g6 bishop is exchanged with b3 bishop black's advantage will increase because uh, then the knight on d5 will be really more stable there will no pressure against f7 but with knight on g3 you have to worry about f5 square which on in isolated pawn positions generally white never has knight on g3 but here we have knight on g3 so uh, bishop is required now on g6 yes so different factors every pawn structure has a more relevant uh, uh, points that is the where are the pieces at that pawn structure the pawn structure is better for black but if white pieces are active then white is in a good position so it's not just about the pawn structure but about where uh, the piece placement as well we yes. should see the position entirely and not sep uh, not the factors separately by yes ex exactly so always good to get a broader picture of the view guys it helps cd4 rook d8 knight e4 was played mm. queen d7 mm. bishop f4 so white has managed to activate yes. and centralize all her pieces yeah. many of her pieces queen bishop comes to b4 uh, yeah but uh, no, there is a trap for knight into d4 probably uh, c7 was hanging oh ah, and the, yeah but oh, okay and is exchange going after that no, but is beginning yeah. i think bishop c7 so that bishop e4 will be met with bishop d8 yeah rook d8 and uh, eventually f3 queen and queen into queen and f3 I probably think queen queen uh, i think queen into queen and f3 is adequate no if we attack the bishop uh, then yeah, the also, bishop also. is hanging but i thought queen into queen and f3 was simpler oh all right sorry i did not see that so yes this is also yeah, simpler because and if the bishop moves the e7 yeah, and hanging. bishop f3 rook e7 everything goes <laughs> back rank my treat also <laughs> we don't pick up the bishop so bishop c6 b f7 goes no yes. so, yeah. so this is fantastic and knight d4 cannot be taken so black played bishop to b4 activating her piece and at creating some threats otherwise white will simply roll over yes for example if for rook f1 knight into d4 can be taken because e4 uh, knight e4 will hang di directly knight is hanging uh. so yeah so rook has to go to awkward square rook um, e3 was yeah. possible but the knight d5 yes and then you attack both knight and so knight. again i think i learned as a child uh, that rooks are best in the 7th rank so which i said rooks are in 7th rank but one player said that if you can't get a rook in 7th rank it's better in the 1st rank <laughs> uh, rook doesn't uh, third rank fourth rank fifth rank is not suitable because it can be easily attacked by minor pieces right over here also this is possible even if uh, yeah i think oh, sorry e4 is hanging but yeah but c7 is yeah p6 is hanging but knight a8 i thought was the problem 
right backward moves oh, are yeah, difficult yeah, to so we, spot the, yeah i think uh, and both the pieces are hacked no i think yeah and bishop e3 you have to uh, see the pin also bishop e3 rook into e4 pins the bishop on e3 so you get don't get previous move either no, anyway the pawn is hanging yeah, the, yeah so yeah i uh, know the pawn is the knight is supported sorry yeah. so yeah what happens in capture of the pawn then uh, knight a8 yeah. that is the problem yeah so uh, so uh, how does uh, white white Can't survive be, here yeah right i think he, she she might have uh, some resource earlier maybe here bishop c7 we saw this oh no uh, we didn't no here they are because taking on d1 is now possible and still it's now and we continue with queen d4 and bishop b6 yeah so black should probably extend or on d1 or maybe even rook d8 bishop d8 rook d8 and rook e4 because d1 is amply supported and yeah. if she takes then we take on d8 yeah so i think tactically is justified why it is not losing the d4 pawn for sure great so this was all complicated but easy to spot because these are straight forward lines yeah. these but are they, not but they have to be uh, seen before because you know you can't see it later the after the capturing the pawn oh do i have something that can't be done <laughs> <laughs> then you have already taken you have yeah. taken the decision yeah. i think always when before taking a decision especially in a critical position yeah. we need to think of the consequences yeah. so that is uh, like life only and uh, the i think the good player knows which is the critical position and which position you can make many moves yes, so how, how does white get back the pawn after knight d4 knight d4 we saw this yeah. uh, after bishop c7 no all yeah but bishop c7 we saw already uh, it's unplayable no? that way yeah, here bishop c7 no we saw this yeah. one is unplayable yeah and bishop c7 Yeah, because knight a8 and now the d8 rook is not attacked yeah so white plays bishop c7 and black has to take everything i think no? but then, then we take with the bishop oh and we so it becomes a piece for piece then yeah? yes and she will attack our knight and we take the piece yeah also knight d6 was a possibility in the previous uh, yes yeah, but you take rook it or rook into rook and yeah uh, this oh line yeah. goes on but it's fine yeah. i mean and white is uh, white may have two bishops uh, eventually but or attack the ab son white can't be worse white is not really much better but i am just wondering if we have a better move here because i saw the bar fluctuating but i think this is the best uh, way i don't see any other move yeah i think uh, yeah bishop c7 and this would be the main line queen yeah. d1 take rook attacks the knight we take the knight, knight. Okay. or maybe we can give a check and spoil her pawn structure a little yeah, bit and okay. then take and uh, okay white is slightly better because of the yeah. pawn structure and bishop f3 if white gets white will be much better yes so perhaps bishop e4 or something right so yes these are possibilities hmm. uh but the game did not go this way we will look have a look how the game continues oh uh, surely Bishop surely D4? both the players are not trying to simplify black is not going to play knight d4 because that's a point which is being targeted and if black is playing for a win black will not try to exchange that pawn but win that pawn free by uh, planning and that's why this position is one of the sharpest positions as you said c5 and e5 squares white's ready is uh, knight is ready to jump to c5 and in fact knight c5 was a possibility here wasn't it yes just one minute um can we have the commentators and player camps and uh, board screen uh, all together thank you so much so knight c5 was Parab possible but she did not go for it she yeah. went knight c3 here okay i think knight c5 would have been met with uh, queen c8 queen c8 because yeah. Uh, yeah. it doesn't make sense to take mm. and there is a threat of bishop into c5 now because of the pin or knight d4 yeah direct bishop c5 we need yeah. the material yes and the uh, rook is also oh yeah so this is a uh, uh, this was possible but she went for knight c3 back mm -hmm. and uh, sorry black player queen c8 <laughs> yeah, <laughs> i thought anyway, right. I yes, yeah. anyway voluntarily because rook in front of the queen yeah, yeah. and this is a very good formation to ha have i learned as a child that if the queen and rook are forming a battery then it's always better to place the rook in front of the queen yes. rather than the queen in front of the rook a so famous famous alekin game where he uh, defeated nimzovic by tripling in the c line so he had rooks on c1 and c2 
and queen somewhere. So he played <laughs> rook c3, rook 1, c2, and then queen e1. He had, so he didn't play queen c2 after rook c3. Rook c3, rook 1, c2, and brought the queen to c1. So he made and a he, triple battery yes, on the, and the c6, c6 uh, file. Yeah. So here now there are two ways. White can try bishop g5 so that the rook is at an awkward place, or to play a3 before bishop g5. So trying to well, a3, the purpose is that if you capture, then my pawn is strong. I'm, I will be better if you capture. Actually, Much she did better. go for bishop g5. Okay, but so I think a3 was better, and bd6 bishop g5 would have preferred that actually. Yes, this was also possible. Yeah, this was. I would have preferred. It's a chase is a. A sort of priority. I mean, you. My priorities are different. My style is different than her. <laughs> She's a strong player. <laughs> you are also. So <laughs> we would have seen a different strong game. I think the wonderful uh, nature of chess is because everybody can play plans and moves of their choice and still get interesting position. It's not that there are fixed moves except the captures and recaptures. Yes. The for example, there are at least five or ten moves which are playable and which can be different plans, three or four different plans. And a player is at liberty to choose the plans they want rather than it's not a forced nature of the game. Then it would be very boring to play the game. Yeah, I think forced moves are easier to find and that's why many times uh, against a um, weaker player, I wouldn't call lower rated because lower rated many times surpass you, they become higher rated. <laughs> uh, but I would call a comparatively weaker, when you're facing a comparatively weaker player, it is advised that uh, play non-forcing moves so that yeah. you force your opponent to commit unforced errors not force, tempt your opponent to commit unforced errors yes. rather than uh, make them play a forced line, forced variation yeah. where they can simply calculate and find the best move because there is only one best move in that position. Actually, the difference in chess and other uh, card games or board games is that chess has uh, unlimited permutations and combinations. So you could just play anything and that will be something new. Whereas uh, there were checkers or the drops, the game, which was being played uh, on 8 by 8 in the uh, 70s and yes. then it was learned that everything can be analyzed it was analyzed till the end that's why then in the years, late 70s they started the drought uh, checkers world championship on 10 by 10 board where it becomes uh, the pro possibilities are more and now it's a possible game yeah that i i did <coughs> not know that that they changed it from 8 by 8 to 10 by 10 10 by 10 yeah. so not, not for the beginner level but the championships oh okay and way way back in the late 70s so queen c8 bishop g5 was played hmm. rook d e8 uh, rook is attacked so mm -hmm. rook moves to the open file um queen d2 knight or knight e5, e5. Oh, knight e5 is fine she is playing very actively yeah takes takes now the pawn structure has been corrected and yeah. it's actually a great pawn structure for white uh, unless you lose it yeah no <laughs> great, great in the sense if you get f4 and f5 it is great if you don't get f4 and f5 it's only uh, interesting but yet what, in if, what if i play queen g f uh, queen f5 i think we play f4 at 6 and g4 is it i'm i'm uh, yeah, this is a nice idea but no? g4 again queen d3 and we simply go back or we take sorry first take yeah, and then yeah. go back yeah so yeah uh, but uh end game is not dangerous for uh black it should be tenable with bishop c4 or knight c4 but yes white has uh achieved uh, f5 by force because f5 can't be stopped so white will have some technical advantage slightly also rook d1 uh, because because the bishop rook doesn't come to d8 so d3 bishop is uh, oh yes yeah. so some advantage and easier to attack the uh, black's uh, pawns and the e-pawn could be a menace. Even direct e6 break can sometimes create initiative, but better to create a passed pawn on e6 sometimes. So this is little preferable, but not big advantage as such. But at least the same structure uh, with queens will be more impressive. If white has a queen and black has a queen, white will probably get mating attack. Right. But uh, yeah, but let's say G4, uh, let's say queen d3 was not available and yeah, you have to go back c8, yeah. this would be terrible. Yes, yeah. Like bishop yes. h5, f5, yes. and all over. And f6, and I don't know. Yes. <laughs> very, <laughs> very fast, yeah. So, so, uh, so she did not play queen f5 though. She yeah. played h6, mm. uh, kicking back the bishop mm. and not allowing this f4 idea, I think. Mm. Bishop h4. Uh, bishop e7 was played. Okay, so she wants to challenge on the d-line immediately. Queen f5 was a possibility. Yes. Because now uh, g4, I, um, I don't know, g4 now doesn't make so much of, uh, but there could be some. Uh, 
Yeah, let's see. Queen Bishop. f5 was possible. Queen f5, perhaps. Mm, g4, g4, a, g4 is a anyway. nice move. Yeah, anyway, g4. But do uh, we get anything? If queen oh. f4, we play bishop g3. Yeah, queen d3 again. So has queen is trapped. Yeah. No, yeah, okay. Uh, queen has g5 square, no, but f4, this but looks terrible. Yeah, that's, yeah. Yeah, that's f5 coming. Yeah. So, so queen goes to d3. d3 again. And now here, I think... Um, and now we take and play f4. It's almost the same. Oh yeah, or rook, rook d1, f4. I think is yeah, rook d1. We can wait with f4 also. But bishop c4, yeah, and f4 perhaps. But it's not big advantage. I says rook e4 is also but possible. But can't we play this? Oh, I understand. Now knight e5 is the problem. Yeah. Mm, because because after rook e5, we have bishop c3 and rook mm. e8, bishop d4. I lost uh, rook and bishop ending. And after, uh, sorry, after rook b4, there is knight f3 and knight e1. This is a nice tactic. Yes. So the e5 pawn is weak and uh, it is capturable because f4 has not been played. So I think roughly equal game. And f4, how is f4? But this looks fine, no? Yeah. After bishop uh, yeah. C4. Even bishop f2 we can No, bishop play. c5. I think exchange of uh, black bishop will help uh, white, white in my opinion. Yes. Yeah, because... Um, but why, why do... Do you feel so? Oh, first, the king position is improved. Secondly, uh, the uh, e, uh, the b4 bishop is a potential uh, stopper of the e passed pawn. In absence of that bishop, if white gets f5 and e6, it can be very... If a rook has to block at a pawn, because many times the knight will be required to stop knight d5. If white gets knight d5, then the black position... So most of the time, knight will re have to remain on b6. And in case e5, e6 comes, and e7, it's, uh, it's not a possibility but with bishop on b3 if the e pawn is not blocked on e7 then it will be dangerous so it's a long way but if yes. you get f5 and e6 it's better to uh, have e7 easily available absolutely and also king gets a tempo which is very important king f2 is a useful move yes like for example if here bishop c5 bishop f2 our king comes closer to the yeah. center which is always a good thing yeah. in the end and game. we are ready for rook c1 and rook e d1 or something or, or rook, rook d1 and f5 both pawns are plans are there right okay so this was not played queen f5 was not played and she went for bishop e7 exchanging the yes. bishops but now yeah we before white plays and g4 and f4 and the queens are alive so it's fine because uh, she may start her own uh, initiative and she gets control. Of now, uh, whether white has time to play take and f4 and g4 and f5, it's a long way. Uh, and if white gets this, white will be much better. Our but next plan is f Yeah, but black a black chance of uh, rook d8 and, uh, or rook d7 and rook d3 in case. But I, I don't know. It's rook d8 maybe. Because d8. f8 rook is anyway yeah. not doing nothing. So even queen g4 comes into consideration. But queen f3 looks uh, better. And then rook d3 is coming. I don't know. It's, uh, still, these are only one, one more threat. Rook d3. I don't... Uh, even queen f2 was uh, possible. So uh, it all will depend on if white can get g4 successfully. If white gets g4, white will be better. So rook e3 was more logical than queen f2. Yes. So I think this was... Uh, yeah, but I don't know. She is not uh, trying to exchange queens, which could be uh, dangerous here, maybe. This was possible, I think, right? With yeah. after bishop e7 to take. But she did not take. She played bishop g3. So, but now the bishop is well placed on e7. Yes, actually. Because we um, wanted to play this plan and now we are bishop that is means blocking. Yeah, that means if you have to play bishop h2 and f4 and g4, then it's... Um, no, I think she wants to play f4, bishop f2 and g4. Okay, but I think you're giving too much time to your huh. opponent, so I don't know. So she did take make use of that time. She hmm. played c5. Ah, okay. Immediately... Yeah gaining space and huh? also you know when bishop was on b4 c5 would have blocked her own yeah. path back but now bishop is well placed on e7 and the black is going to get an outpost at d3 for the rook after c4 and uh, bishops will get exchanged and black rook will come to d3 by rook d8 attacking the queen and that is where uh, f4 and g4 is going to be almost impossible with a possibility of black rook coming to d3 do you think that white can afford to play f4 and g4? It becomes too slow then. Yeah, I think this bishop g3, this is a critical position actually. Mm. In, in general, in chess, whenever there is a possibility to gain material or to sacrifice or to exchange 
your material it is always a critical decision to take because it changes the nature of the position and the most difficult is which equal exchange is better for us or worse for us because it's the same colored bishop yes. so we don't know because both both have equal value and none of them is a bad bishop but objectively uh, the h4 bishop has limited scope and uh, also should be exchanged yes i i yes i, I mean considering the fact that on bg3 it's just being blocked by yeah. its own pawn unless she's playing own. for e6 break yes and, unless uh, she wants to take e6, e6 break. but then c5 maybe was missed if, uh, if yeah c5 so e6 makes no sense because of c4 yes and, and probably some other moves also no she had considered c5 because she took very less time for knight okay, d5 knight okay so she okay. plays bishop g3 c5 and knight d5 okay so she she takes care of uh, that c4 and uh, uh, rook coming to d3 because she is occupying the outpost at d5 now although so it's not supported with a pawn but the bishop cannot be easily driven and she wants to play queen f3 or f4 and queen f3 perhaps or queen b3 and rook d8 was played and e6 has been pushed Okay, she's going very, very aggressive. Oh, was Rudy at best? Oh, perhaps. But I Can we play something like Bishop D8? I don't know. Frankly, even Bishop F5. That Bishop uh, is it losing uh, tactically because Bishop F5, Bishop E6 is a consideration. Queen F3 was my problem. Yeah, but, but uh, I just play B5 supported. or something. It's supported. Yes. B5 no, B5 loses a pawn to BB7 and Bishop into A6. I don't know. Looks awkward. Bishop into h3. Bishop no, then bishop b5. b5 wins an exchange. No, rook b8. Uh, rook bishop g4 or rook b8. Um, either, but uh, yeah, but it's a sacrifice decision. No, it's you give up a pawn, and it could be losing. Yeah, white plays just a4. I think it's winning. A4, yes, yeah. and we have this very yes. strong pawn. So black has to justify. Black has no attack. So giving up a pawn is always. So if you play bishop f5 to stop e6, you have to calculate queen f3. And uh, after Queen F3, what do you have? B. You're going to lose a pawn for sure, no? Queen F3. Yes, I think that uh, that I mean, Black is in a bit of a trouble here because uh, I mean, why would Black voluntarily give up a pawn? That doesn't make sense. Yeah, unless there's some uh, so counterplay with C4 immediately and Bishop B4. Does look active, but can I play? Uh, e6? yeah, E6 probably, but Bishop move just uh, moves. I think such endings you can say presume. Uh, uh, oh, very Bishop F6. I'm sorry, yes. and then. Yeah, this such such endings uh, extra pawn doesn't make any any sense. The uh, what matters is the presence of C4 pawn, like the other game, uh, Humpy game, where the pawn on C4 the, all depends on B2 pawn. If B2 yes. pawn can survive there, otherwise White could lose this position also. Yes, let's just continue a few moves, and here, this pawn we are already losing, and if B3 then C3. Yes, and the rook will be and lost. This yeah. would be a disaster. So, so the the bishop on g3 is a big liability compared to the bishop on f6, which is giant and the master of the position here. The master of the position is the f6 bishop, because it attacks b2. I think this was a huge decision. Bishop e7 was a good move, uh, and it was not a great move, but it proved to be a good decision. Yes. Because yeah. White did not take on e7, which mm. she had to mm. for an advantage, but she played Bishop g3, mm. and now after c5 take take, uh, Black yeah, was able. To, Black could have equalized after Bishop f5, or even gotten a slight advantage. No, if White takes the yeah, but the Queen into a6 but position uh, actually I'm not worried about that. Uh, Position which we are seeing, White uh, may not play e6, but I thought that pawn down was perfectly all right. Yeah, actually they have uh, played something else on the game. Uh, I I want she allowed e6. I just wanted to know if we can also play a move like Bishop d8 yeah. here, mm -hmm. not allowing e6, but then again Queen f3. Yes, yeah. and so this this is a, a the constant a, a, problem. Yeah, the a pawn goes uh, because of the absence of so yeah. And here Bishop c6 is a problem, I think, or Bishop b7 and Bishop c6. Yeah, it's too uh, and too artificial. Yeah, rook is on the bishop comes back to h. I don't know bishop h4. Rook d1 threatening bishop h4 and threatening rook d6. Oh, rook d6 is not a no, threat. No, uh, rook d1 bishop h5 I think. Bishop for bishop I don't know queen. Oh, this is so. <laughs> yeah, it's too and complex. Bishop h4 maybe. But rook d7 bishop h4 will help uh, equalize easily. Oh, but rook d6 and you take. Rook d6, queen d6. So it's yes. also not very clear. Yeah, okay, I think this was also very yeah. interesting. But 
neither of these moves were chosen what she chose hmm. was surprising to me because after rook d8 e6 so she's not worried about e6 i mean she's just go going to allow ef7 check bishop f7 yeah, because of the pin king H8. because of the pin so ef7 bishop into f7 and th that bishop is in trouble probably you take my bishop. but ef7 uh, what does she want because i'm not very sure if uh, bishop f7 is correct rook f7 maybe because bishop f7 rook e7 and bishop into d5 black's king side is really weak sorry bishop so e f7? f7 yeah rook e7 and yeah. black's king side is very weak yeah but perhaps you could try rook f rook f7 queen b3 yeah rook d5 but i'm not very happy the g7 and h6 are weak uh, yes. yeah this is not equal for sure yeah it doesn't look great yeah it's surely not bishop g8 force i think no <laughs> Okay, but this looks just yeah. yeah. This looks uh, basically as we discussed the previous day as well that uh, in an opposite color bishop a middle game the side with the weaker king suffers more yes. and is at a disadvantage. So here all the fun is being enjoyed by white and black is suffering. And so uh, before knowing all this theory, uh, uh, Vishwanathan Anand uh, even sacrificed an exchange against me to get uh, just the majority of this type. And my rook was useless compared to his knight, and he checkmated me in a uh, very nice. I mean, as a child, when he had not read all those great books, mm. but uh, he sensed that something is wrong with this king, mm. and uh, I I couldn't believe because I was full exchange up, and I couldn't guard my king. Wow. <laughs> when when was this? Which year was this? I think back eighty six or something. He was a national champion, but he wasn't. He hadn't. I mean, he was a young player, so he had not read all those books. Which I had read. So E F seven has not yet been played. This is the po life position on the board. Sorry, yeah. Uh, let's so I think white is technically better because of the queens. If queens are exchanged, then probably it will be pure draw. Maybe black gets B five C four. In an end game, black will be better. So how uh, dynamically and aggressively white plays here? Uh, black cannot play generally bishop F six because of E seven. So black is planning to play f into e6 for sure, and uh, because of the pin, white can't play the logical moves like queen g4. Otherwise, if white could support the pawn with a queen g4 or something, then there could be a because the bishop is hanging, you can't play. For queen b3, there could be a queen b3. There could be b5, perhaps threatening c4. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think there are possibilities. Meanwhile, let's just share with our viewers that there has been a result. Oh wow. Nana. And Harka drew their game. Mm. So can we quickly go to that board? Uh, so good preparation then, because uh, you know to uh, and get uh, a quick draw with uh, black is good. Quick quickly summarize the game till the mm. point we uh, left it at. Mm. Uh, white opened with d4 and black replied with the Slav defense, and white opted for the exchange variation of the Slav with a symmetrical pawn structure. Uh, beyond that, Harika was very well prepared and she entered into a line which she was very uh, she was quite familiar with sorry over here bishop d7 sorry let me get the position on the board and here bishop d3 here white black had a few choices like knight c6 and bishop e7 with the idea knight c6 with the idea to force a3 and then knight h5 mm. and go for this structure but black played rook c8 and knight f3 uh, and here as well there was a important moment yes. that if black simply goes back bishop g3 then you take and uh, play f5 yeah play f5 fine, yeah. and guard the h7 and black is fine so white first place bishop e5 important move mm. so that you force weaknesses with f6 black did play f6 white went back bishop g3 and this is the position we left it at mm, so knight into g3 and f5 looks good also uh black in fact went for g6 over here and sh it she was under uh, in her preparation because yeah. she has taken only yeah. 1 hour 23 so minutes so that could be a new so move far. i think knight into g3 was possible but uh, yeah i mean so no. basically uh, she is taking advantage of the fact that her opponent played bishop e5 so she is getting something else which white uh, which black would not have got if white played bishop g3 directly so i think she compared bishop g3 and bishop e5 and she felt that instead of transposing, she should take advantage of the fact that f6 was a tempo. But it's risky. I mean, I don't know. She wants to castle next. Yeah, she must have 
prepared because you know you don't like this position if white gets quick e4 or something you could be in danger g6 has been played in three games so mm -hmm. far mm -hmm. and uh, uh the reply what white replied g6 with it is rook a c1 logical move also e4 what logical if it's uh, tactically working if mm, four it is not clear i think d e bishop uh, into e4 so uh, king f7 or knight uh, even king f7 even castle castle is also possible if you want but i want to play d5 or something i want just i want to see if i can punish this if e5 then perhaps sacrifice or something bishop into e5 or something of that sort yes this could be dangerous yeah the, i mean the position was definitely analyzed i don't know if it's good bishop into bj so it's just a um uh, instinctive reaction but all yes. such reactions are always refuted by <laughs> home analysis and engines very fast so um yeah to play a move like g6 uh, e4 for fast. example uh, 40 years back or 20 years back i would have played e4 instantly right. but uh, now with opponent deliberately playing this i don't want to go for e4 because uh, everything of that particular resulting position could have been analyzed things have not changed a lot with engine So a lot depends on the speed at which your opponent is playing <laughs> as well. Yes. So But even that is a very strategic move because in one of the world championship matches the against one against Kramnik Anand won the game one and three with black pieces uh, out of home preparation and I asked him then I was watching and I didn't understand why were you taking so long if you knew everything. And then he said if I played too quickly then he would simplify so it's important uh, to give an impression of being slowly outplayed. Wow. And actually, <laughs> turn the tables, wow. and that's exactly what Kasparov did against uh, Anand in 1995. So Anand did learn from Kasparov, and he made use of it 13 years later against Kramnik, against Kasparov's student. Wow! Against Kasparov's student and Kaps Kasparov's nemesis, he was the one who defeated him in the yes, World Championship. Yes, also, also, but mainly. Yes. Uh, he was a student generally yes absolutely wonderful it's all about learning from your opponents so rook a c1 was played after a thought of 13 minutes in this game by nana uh, short castle by black queen e2 knight takes g3 by the mm -hmm. way here you wouldn't win the piece after uh -huh. take take queen takes of course we don't go king h8 because then we are simply losing this game after queen h5 and white mm -hmm. will be a two pawns up but we go back with our knight simply and there is no light square bishop long gone there is no knight g5 because f6 controls it yeah, no no pieces to attack the black king yes and the queen will be driven off quickly with um, black bishop queen e8. coming or queen queen coming yes queen, or yeah. queen e8 mm. yes and so this is all good and uh, white black would be in control uh, so queen e2 was played instead of bishop g6 Knight takes the pawn. Uh, bishop. bishop. Was it necessary? I mean, is the bishop? Uh, may perhaps he didn't uh, think of an idea. I was thinking that you could delay it as long as you could. I don't know if that is a correct strategy, but uh, you could delay as long as you could. And uh, when the bishop tries to, because bishop white has no white can't play h3 any time. The pawn structure will be seriously damaged. H3. And I think uh, this is the yeah. idea. Yeah, but e4 at the moment can also be made. So knight into g3 doesn't. Are uh, you mean at a later stage white could take f into g3 so she wants to make sure I think this is also part of preparation probably but even after e4 you can always take on g3 what i meant was if you have useful move here then why play a knight in g3 so quickly yeah. but since it's a matter of choice and again uh, maybe white wants to play bishop uh, h4 which could be so maybe a6 b5 is possible hmm. or knight c4 is possible knight c4 i don't know you are encouraging e4 but No, ah, yes. So a6 b5 and knight c4. Yeah, something. Also. Yeah, but knight c3 I mean it doesn't change things much. Only thing is you're committing uh when it's not required. But of course that's a voluntary decision. Uh you can't always uh, play something when it's forced. You can play voluntarily as well. That's the game of chess. So fine. She took knight into g3. And how did it end in draw then? But it looks roughly uh equal. I mean I think she Does she want to play f5 quickly? Is that the reason why she played knight into g3? Let's have a look at why yeah. she went for it because she could have waited. Uh, and actually, maybe a6 e4 is not possible because we take take and uh, knight e4 and we play. Can f5 we play f5? Yeah, f5. I don't know. Bishop h4 is always coming, no? Also. Yeah, and so knight d6 is annoying. Yeah, but then yeah. rook c1. 
Yeah, so you Sorry, have to, and yeah. knight g3 as well. Hmm. We are attacking the So queen. not knight d6. You will have to play uh, bishop h4 wins means there is chance of knight f4 subsequently. But but don't we win three pieces after take? Yeah, take but I don't know. But the king... And uh, rook No, it's not gf3. I would try to make use of my queen. Quickly, yeah. sorry. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a terrible move I chose for you. <laughs> Very convenient. Queen e5, maybe I'll take on. Yeah. And I got three pieces and that's yeah. great compensation yeah, for the yeah. queen. Perhaps, yeah. So, oh, yeah, three pieces are stronger than uh, uh, queen generally. And particularly with uh, weakness on the uh, king side b in the queen's camp. That's really serious. So, yeah, so there are various options uh, possible. So, this this was all possible. Uh, I mean, this e4, was all... E4, uh, wasn't played. e4 wasn't played, no? Yeah, probably knight c5 is possible. Also very strong, I think. Because knight e6 is because the... Uh, 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 is bl the uh, uh, there's no point in playing f5 if you're not winning a piece with f4. And you're not winning a piece with f4 because bishop h4 comes. So f5 uh, doesn't uh, have any merit even otherwise. Yes, because bishop h4 is always supported with the knight and we don't need to worry and about And we are disconnected your b4 bishop from going to e7. So uh -huh. the dark squares on the king side are going to be terrible hmm. after bishop h4. So, yes... Uh, i6 was very much possible in this uh, game, uh, waiting, but Harika instead took on g3 after a 7 minute thought. Uh, white took with the h pawn, here it makes more sense to take with the pawn and go towards the center. Ra and then uh, king yeah. g7 was played. No, in this position I was worried about g4 uh, by white. So yes. did she play g4? No, she didn't. I, I also felt... G4, G4, because G4 you have to play either G5 or H6. But then G4 pawn also could become weak. Maybe it's a matter of time now. Uh, can black play H6 or G5? Because if white gets G5, uh, it will be a pawn sacrifice. Okay, so BD6 or something, yeah? Uh, no, yeah, G5 will not come so easily. Okay. E5 is not possible because knight D5 is yeah. hanging. And right? The and the bishop also will be attacked. Uh, B4 bishop will also be attacked. Yes. So by playing BD6, perhaps you could uh, plan uh, E5 also sometimes. But here, w can white uh, give up a pawn with G5? I don't know. Or now E4. E4. Yeah, BD6 encourages E4. Bishop F4. Yeah, but I don't need the uh, D file, uh, C file now. This looks so awkward for black, but maybe... Yeah. D for D for I don't nine. understand. It's a big, big yeah. advantage for. Yes, this pawn structure. Uh, no, G5, looks G5, uh, G5 puncture first. I think looks very strong. No? Actually, recently Pragyananda won a very nice game against Vidit oh. in the uh, Inter Petroleum Championship. It's okay. an underrated tournament. Okay. okay. Uh, played in India. Uh, between petroleum companies uh, and we play it as a team championship mm -hmm. as well as an individual championship mm -hmm. and uh, Pragyananda defeated Vidit uh, in this against like he had uh, Vidit had chosen to go for this pawn structure mm -hmm. with uh, E6, F6 and G6 not in this line <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. but uh, similar uh, piece placement and pawn structure mm -hmm. and very instructive because this uh, queen uh, the uh, pawn didn't come to g4, but the queen came to g4 mm. at some point. Yeah, that's a known pawn structure of isolated pawn. And the pawn, same pawn structure after f6 is quite weakening. I remember one of my games also. Um, I had one after f6, I broke e4 and I was able to. So I think g4, probably black has to allow uh, g5 and just take fg. I don't know. It's a, again a sharp position. Is knight c6 good then? Because for g5, I just take the pawn then. And I also discourage e4 in some ways. Uh, g4, knight c6. Mm -hmm. uh, and I play e4 anyway. How are you discouraging me? This is supported. No, I'm discouraging from playing g5, but here. It is, it is so awkward, but I. I feel Harika would have been comfortable because she was uh, she had studied this position obviously right like I'm sure she has I'm sure she has played uh, some practice games in the structure yes so she's not worried about g4 g5 plan maybe this idea mm -hmm, yeah. is it possible I don't know some g5 no, but g5 is not working in general f5 right g5 will be met with f probably take oh, the take the right pawn now free, we can yeah. take the pawn take. free yeah take the pawn yes. free no? Because knight c6 even <laughs> covers all the squares. Yeah, the knight c6 idea is to uh, take fg5 for g5. So, 
I'm co covering the. You are intending to weaken my G E five square with G four G five, so I want to protect it in advance, like Nimzovit said, prophylaxis. So this oh. was possible. Hmm, I think the position is. I like white actually here. I think the position could have gone either way. Hmm. Yeah, of this. course, but uh, it's easier to play with white. I think maybe even G three king G two. Yes. Rook wow, CD this like this yeah. this idea looks like so great. It's an idea everyone wants to implement at least once yeah. with king to G two and the rooks Rook, coming yeah. to H one and uh, then you can even play queen E three queen H six. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. so but again second rank defense. But you know it's not all that easy with rook on C seven. Even after you achieve rook h1, queen e3, and queen h6, there's no threat after king g8. Yeah, I think rook c7 was yeah. a very precise move. But okay, let's say bishop f7, ah. king g2, ah. uh, let's say queen d7. Yeah, like and rook h1. Now it's not going to be easy. Rook h1, and now ah. queen e3 is unstoppable, and it's. I mean, yeah. rook c7 was just by luck. I got it. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, I thought you intended to defend uh, it. Uh, I just <laughs> wanted to okay. like activate it here. So okay, that is the sense of chess. That's very important. I think for the viewers, sometimes um, good players are able to play the best moves without justifying. It's the sense that's developed by practice and seeing the game. So yeah, rook c7 is one of the best moves I think, and probably the best move in the position was quickly right. played by Somya. <laughs> The idea is to support h7 and. Uh, See, even if you don't do anything for three moves, yes. you allow rook h1, queen e3, and queen h6. Still, nothing happens but, after king but g8. But no, doing nothing is the real uh, challenge. Yes. Maybe a6 yeah. and b5. Yes. No, seen but seen even it. then, the b5, c6 yes, point yeah. would be vulnerable. Mm. So let's just check. Let's just yeah, check. Yeah, b5, for fun. b5 is risky, I think. No? Yeah, this. But okay, at least we are not yeah. getting checkmated. Mm -hmm. We are not getting yeah. checkmated. No, this is very pleasant for White because White plays bishop c2, threatening on d5, threatening take take and knight into d5 and bb3. So, but White uh, could have played in this way. G3 is a possibility also. The this position is very flexible, very flexible. So White had many ideas in yes. this position, but White went for e4 direct action in the center. Okay. Rook e8 so was played. Rook came to c2, down mm. to 22 minutes. By the way, after Achha, rook, rook c2. c2, okay, queen e3. I thought was more logical, but okay, fine. She's this afraid of knight c4, perhaps. So she's not going to touch the g3 and f2 structure. She's going to try with something in the uh, e5 break or e5 or e yeah, rook c1, and then per perhaps e5 followed by penetration in c line. So rook double, yeah. So okay, queen e3 looks long. okay. E3. Played e3. So you decide if you play bishop into knight, I take with the pawn. So you have to retreat the bishop, yes. and now queen could stand on e3 better. So bishop f8 was played, and queen d2, queen was removed from the e file. Yeah, queen e3, e5 could be coming if she played. But I saw e5 and d5 was coming. That's why I was confidently playing that move, queen e3. But queen e3 is possible. Yeah. Engine See, I play queen e3. Mm, yeah, so queen e3. The idea is to capture on e5 and pawn. In case when I play e5, opponent should not be in a position to play f5, because I take knight e5 and take with the queen. And queen d2, black can even take f5 for, uh, in case white plays e5. So queen d2, okay. And uh, yeah, black is very awkward. I don't know. Harika must have played very well too. You know, somehow it's a psychological uh, portion. Uh, I I wouldn't like to play this position with black. Just a matter of. I mean, neither. I am very uh, uncomfortable, but maybe Harika has like studied it. Yeah, obviously she has. She but knows she, the position. She so. was also down to forty minutes here, by okay, the way. Okay, so probably, uh, yeah, she took a great decision G six, which was I don't know it's the best decision knight into G three and F five, but she after she committed, uh, she is playing consistently. Queen D two was played with fifteen minutes on the clock. Okay. Queen B six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Queen E four. Queen E three would have solved that problem. Attack on d4. <laughs> yes, even here she can play queen e3. Actually, threatening d5. Oh. Attacking d5. Or can we take d5? No, I think uh, queen. queen is not getting trapped. No, He's no, no I mean bishop c5 after knight d4, knight d4. Yeah, but you and always knight. you have a, you always have some sacrifice knight into d5 or something. I think you since you have won a piece, also knight d4. So basically, here e5 is not possible because of yeah, knight, knight d5. d5. So let's rule that out. Can we? And you are going for uh, direct knight d4, but I think, in my opinion, such moves don't work. But maybe <laughs> it works. Knight c e2, you have. 
Can he play E5? E5 yeah? No, E5, BD4 is just winning for black, I think. No, it's just lost. Yeah, I just lost. So A knight uh, C, E2, E5 play, and are you critting E5 then? Bishop C5, knight C, E2. E5. I, yeah, and now some rook C. I'm not, I'm, I'm actually winning two C5 pieces for a rook, but... Ah, okay, I'm losing some material, okay. Rook C return is not a check, so I can't play that equation. Yeah, the and king yeah. being on G7 But even, even with check, it wouldn't have worked, no, anyway. Hmm, First rook C8 right. had to be check, hmm. which is not happening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, in that case, I can't play rook C5, which means I'm losing back the piece, and I have to find a proper counter clip. Maybe just take on D5. Yeah, you take on D4, I don't mind. Yeah, I move. Yeah. This shouldn't be bad. Black as B4 is a threat now. It should be alright for black. For white as well. Yeah, white can't be worse, Both. I think. White can't be worse. With that E6 weakness, and knight wanting to jump there with knight D4 on F4, I don't think uh, white can be worse. If the pawn... Queen F3 because... Keep uh, keeping knight F4 also, and knight yes. F4... Knight f4, bishop c4, and knight e6. And whatever you do, I can't be worse. <laughs> yes. So, yeah, this was a possibility. Uh, but she did not play this. They actually repeated the moves here with knight a4, queen to a5. Here also, uh, I, I think, okay, knight c3 is probably the best because... Yeah, I mean, yes, because your rooks are not connected, so you yes, shouldn't play this because yeah. the rooks are not connected. This oh. looks awkward because the knight and... And the white doesn't have rook connected. So uh, if white had rook on c1, perhaps white could have exchanged on uh, c8. But now coming Can back... Can I play this move? Something... Uh, ah, okay, you aren't in a pin, so... Oh, Bishop you can take and play knight b3. And now there is no way to support it. Which means you have to take on with a rook on the previous move. But even then knight b3. Mm, take, yeah. take and knight b3. Knight b3, b3 preventing b4. <laughs> Oh, this is a very, <laughs> and preventing rook c1 as well. Yes. So, yeah, this was a dangerous uh, setup to enter into. So, I think uh, Nana decided uh, to prudently not exchange and come back knight c3. Again, she had the choice to change something yeah. over here. Mm -hmm. uh, but she chose to repeat because the I think she was also low on time, 14 Yeah, minutes. I think uh, such position doesn't come in... Uh, your line before. I'm sure life before. I think they, s they have not reached this position before, even if they are well prepared. And at this stage, it's difficult to make a decision. For white, surely, because white was down to 15 minutes. And black, because black felt that BD7 and pawn on E6 was a big problem. And uh, she wasn't very comfortable. A good fighting game. Uh, it would have been very... Uh, they agreed to a draw in a very interesting position, but... <laughs> yes, <Yeah. laughs> I think the game was very interesting. Yes, uh -huh. and uh, if you just go through it, Ra rather it was becoming it has be it had become interesting only a few moves before. It was yes. a bit dull in the opening, and uh, it especially had like the idea with G four yeah. and G three. Yeah. I think this was so fun and. Uh, but even E four was a good idea. Yeah, and the uh, draw was not a forced result for either side. Both could have decided to play, but again, it's uh, important uh, to see how comfortable you are with that position. Sometimes you just don't like a position, so we can just uh, take a decision. I've seen uh, great players like Kasparov and Anand uh, making quick draws sometimes, and they say that I just didn't find uh, comfortable playing this position. So that's an important uh, decision. The position may be good, but they're not comfortable, so they don't. They just make simplifying moves and draw sometimes. So I think both the players were not comfortable with this position. Right. So let's go, okay, so we have the first uh, result and it's a draw and we can have a look at if, uh, what is game Bibi Sara doing against Nino? Uh, Bibi Sara's we recently saw, I think Humpy's game we have not seen in, uh, oh, Bibi Sara's game we didn't see at sorry, all. Sorry, no? but White is completely winning. Huh? When was what this? What happened? Oh, that, that, oh, yeah. What happened? Bishop D3, we left it, uh, no. We left it at... Uh, uh, exchange down suggests that black blended and exchange. Yes, yes, yes. Somewhere Let's have a look. We left it here, rook yes. d1. King and we thought rook d1 and bd3 would equalize. Yes. That's exactly what happened. And we felt that Nino was in her preparation. One hour, 12 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Bibisara played knight c5. So, basically, this is the 24th move with Bibisara having 58 minutes to Nino Batsyashvili's one hour, 12 minutes. Okay? And white is a pawn up. But black has enough activity yeah. as compensation and they have almost liquidated uh, all their pieces. So only 
uh, six pieces, six pieces yeah. on the board. So knight c5 was played. And now bishop f1 check or bishop c4. I think they're the only two moves that should be considered here because the bishop is attacked. And although knight, even knight in 2d3, rook d3, such endings are not winning. They're drawn endings. But why play such a view? What about? I thought bishop f1 check is not very useful also. King f3, but rook a3 check. Bishop, c, bishop f1 check and bishop c4 is also option. Yes. So, but she went for direct bishop c4. So sometimes bishop d5 check and serious counterplay. And this move forces a4, no? Ha, a4. Yeah. So knight to c5 has a dual purpose. It attacks the bishop and it also supports the pawn on c mm. a4. And it can never be moved from c5 unless you move the rook first. Because and it will keep And now the pawn it. cannot be recovered by the way of rook d5, rook d5, bd5 check. Uh, followed by rook a5. I think it's a possibility though. bd5 check and king moves and rook a5. F3 maybe, yes. Yeah, and rook a5 and rook c2. And now this is a position which is probably a draw. I mean, there's no improvement really. Bishop c6, uh, rook c4, and bishop d5, and uh, rook c1, and still bishop c6. And oh, uh, this is a draw. But knight b3. Uh, oh, knight b3, I. And rook, rook a6, yeah, and a5, bishop d5. That's what I thought. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this was possible. And yeah, this that, is that's the strength of a bishop uh, compared to knight. Bishop and pawn can support each other. Knight and pawn cannot support each other. So either you lose a knight or you lose a pawn. <laughs> Choice is yours. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer to save my knight. <laughs> 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 so then uh, uh, what happened is that, uh, let's go back a little bit. Bishop c4, a4. Black did not play rook d5 here. The Black played the, the knight on c5 is strong because it guards the pawn and its important guard is uh, e5 rook. So a natural reaction would be to exchange that rook and go for... I mean, if you say that I'm happy with the pawn down, it's not correct. You have to take make use of the activity and try to get rid of that pawn. Let's see, rook a5 uh, is a possibility, but some tactical uh, mishap is going to... Uh, rook f5 is risky, no? Rook b8 check and knight d7 and so I don't know some. Also, rook b4. Ah, rook b4 will be met with bishop d5. Mm. Blunder. Oh, uh, bd5 winning an exchange, yeah. So, uh, not uh, rook b4. Yeah, but this is the. B uh, yeah. It's Maybe rook e8 and rook c8, but then rook d5, yes? No, this is, I think, uh, uncomfortable. Black is. Uh, no, why rook d5? There be, I don't like this position for white. White is. Yeah. Uh, rook c1 will win some material, I think. Or or BF1 check at rook c1? Or oh, yes. Wow. Very yeah, nice. So something spot. is going. And you. Okay. A this wonderful this uh, <laughs> feel of the position. So, this was. Yeah, this is. The knight is pinned and the rook cannot be supported. If the rook was on c7, we could have played knight e6. Yeah, knight b7, you can try, but rook f5 check, you have to. And knight b7 still exists. There's some tactics still rook left. Rook f5? Yes. And uh, king e4, you have bishop, bishop d3, d3 check. And king g4, you have bishop h3 check. And. <laughs> Oh no, no, but yeah, but uh, uh, king uh, king g4, rook g5, rook g5, check. not bishop s3 check, king s3, uh, rook into c8, knight d6. Not this check, <laughs> yes. but even here, luckily, rook h5 exists. Yeah, but I, okay, and rook g5 again, okay. Now, rook g5 is the important win either lines, yeah, okay. So, uh, no, black pawn being on h6 is important. If it was on h5, yes. then king g4 would not, <laughs> would not have come, yeah. So, uh, so I think black has, uh, Anonymous activity, rook f5. Was rook f5 played? No, they didn't play. Uh, what did she play? Uh, she played rook c8. Rook c8. It's, it's still al also equal. Also works, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, but you're not attacking the pawn, which is a bit... Uh, yeah, you have now... Now the knight can move, actually, because it's not under yeah. attack. But still the knight isn't a very uh, happy squares. And black has to... Uh, white has to be careful. Bishop d5 is the threat. Mm. Bishop d5 check and then you will take the yeah. knight so what was played knight e4 yeah was in played. advance yeah so bishop d5 or bishop f1 both are not very effective and the pawn is saved so white may just say, uh, play say rook uh, b4 uh, next or you know if white is able to play something like rook c5 mm, see exchanging rooks is going to win a piece so uh, the, uh, every time a rook is exchanged white is somewhere somewhat better but this position i'm sure that Black has no but chance to win this position. I think it's uh, rook c8 is also enough in my opinion. But just look at the time consumption of black now. They reach this position hmm. with one hour twenty-five minutes for black. Yeah. Yes. 
this was the 22nd move mm. bishop c2 is forced mm. one hour 25 minutes for black on the 20 mm. after the yeah. 22nd move is over mm. then on the 26th move only four moves later mm. black is down to 45 minutes so almost so 45 minutes yes. taken 40 minutes so i think she didn't develop the skill the uh, feel of the position and uh, maybe she was trying to find out the moves um, yeah sometimes it happens uh, with excessive preparation because a uh, few times i got into a, a theoretically a bad position against some players who had uh, stopped at uh, white is better or black is better and i was a complete stranger to those positions as a opponent so i had a good feel of the position because i arrived at the positions on my own and they had prepared it and as the thing stood i was able to win this game i remember at least three four ex examples where my opponent had uh, taken zero minutes and i had taken 45 minutes and uh, that sort of uh, opening and i won those games so it's exactly because where the preparation stopped i was in better control because i i arrived at that position with a logic and my opponents had just seen the engine plus equal or whatever it is and they didn't know what to do about it are these so modern opponents may i ask <laughs> uh, not or all very modern but yeah but generally modern but not all that order and some very strong players so i wouldn't like to okay. mention the names <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> rook c8 uh, so yeah uh, continuing on that uh, yeah it is important to not only study the opening but also also study the resulting middle game and in this case probably the resulting end game also yes actually what happens is very often the uh, young players are even those who play professionally nationally and internationally they are convinced with plus equal is after this we can manage but we can't manage because you don't have seen uh, such position afterwards at least play a practice game the advice which uh, kasparov and many others followed that wherever you end your opening preparation just play a few practice game at that end product so it doesn't become an end product even if your opponent reaches that you still know something better than that more than your opponent mm. yes rook c8 knight e4 was played logical here also yeah. bishop e4 is possible i bishop think bishop d5 yeah bishop d5 probably you are not threatening to win rook b4 or something ha but uh, this end game is also holdable no yeah i was uh, it's born is going after i'm uh, uh -huh. probably go and there will be tactical threats of f5 also sometimes i don't know yeah it should be okay bd5 should be okay even not trying to force matter should be okay also bishop f1 and rook d3 check is also very irritating that is what happened bishop f1 yeah so why should there be anything wrong with that she made a blunder later we will see okay. king f3 rook d3 mm. this is all fine yeah. king g4 and rook d4 is simple here no i mean rook d4 should be okay uh, rook d4 also looks fine i'm attacking fine, the yes. pawn I'm attacking the pawn. And if a5, there must be some tactic, right? Yeah, I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm looking for something. Maybe even. Yeah, they just. You are not getting out of the pin, so even slow idea like g6, f5 can work. I don't know, but something must go here. I'm not. Um, I don't think this is playable for. Uh, right. Let's see if I'm. I mean, it's just a feeling of the position. Yeah, I also feel like something must be there. Is the direct f5 possible? F5. The problem is King F5. Yeah, F5. And then what do we? No, no, I think some Bishop H3 check or Bishop D3 or with Rook F8 check to come or Rook F8 check first, but then King G4 back and uh, you and then Bishop G2. Yes, uh, and now not F3 is not possible. Yeah, F3 is there, but I have been I have so one more. So let's say King E King E6, then Bishop H3 would be just lost. No, maybe mate. Rook D7 yes. mate. Yeah. yeah, it's just mate. Yeah. So. This is a very nice tactic. Yeah. F five was fantastic, sir, because you are opening the F file for your rook, and now be after Bishop G two, there is no F three. This is important. Yeah, and rook rook E two, the only defensive way also fails to Bishop F three check a fork and a pin. <laughs> oh, this is just wonderful. This is a wonderful combination found by Pravinji, and uh, F five very important move here. So, what happened? She did not play Rook D four. That is what happened. She oh. played rooks. Uh, by the way, rook d4 you don't need to play. Yeah, a of course you don't play f5. But yeah, play. If, uh, what my contention was that I get back the pawn because you can't play a5. Yeah. Uh, so probably f3. Yeah. yeah and yeah. stop this. Uh. Yeah, perhaps it will be equal. First of all, once I take the a4 pawn, uh, I am afraid of nobody. F4 would also be a blunder, yeah. I think, after f5. Yeah, maybe a mate is coming very quickly. Uh, no, here uh, this is the. 
G4 wow. is coming, but ah no, rook f8. Rook f8, check and where does the king go? E6. Uh, then I take king G4. King G6 and uh, bish yeah. bishop. Bishop G4, bishop G4 and rook a, uh, threatening rook E4. Bishop G4 threatens rook E4. Rook D6. Yeah, and no, and even if you support the uh, rook, which you can't actually, but if knight moves, rook D6. If knight doesn't move, rook E4, rook E4, rook F6 mate. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, then rook E4 and B F5. Check. Okay, you don't allow me to checkmate, but I win a piece. <laughs> Fantastic. So this was also possible. Uh, no, okay. no. There were many tactics. Yeah, but uh, as far as black is concerned, black black need not play f5 because black can take rook into f5. I was looking at that opening from point of view that black is not worse at any stage. So maybe f4 is risky, but f3 is good yeah, because we keep the knights up. Yeah, and now I probably take on. Uh, I mean, g6 comes into picture also. Not some strange move like g6 threatening f5. It's not yeah, easy this to. It's very awkward. Yeah, I mean to play voluntarily is also strange by for white, but. But I she's good at calculation. Yeah, right? so probably she is used to playing. Because but who did who did king f two and, and then f four and win the f three pawn? <laughs> <laughs> so you have a different way of drawing it. This is. Uh, yeah. No, it's also a draw, but yeah, because rook a two is. This was possible. However, none of this happened. What did they but do? But white showed great courage in. Uh, playing king g four, yes. I mean, rook d three check. That's the only legal move. King g four and king f four. Yes. But to play, allow bishop f one check. I think that knight e four move. Um, bishop f1 check and king f3 rook d3 check. So black played rook c4 here. Uh, with the same rank, idea. Back rank, back rank, back um, rank. Yeah, but nothing but is happening. But it's the same it. idea, no? Yeah, because idea is same, but f3 we can play. Can rook we into play? Rook f4. F3 you play rook into f4, then I double uh, in eighth rank. We yeah. actually have. We yeah, can also no play g6, no? Yeah, also yeah, okay. Uh, rook d4 just came to me. That's all. Rook c4 because it blocks some of the. I mean, clears some. I don't know. It just yeah, it was useful to, to me. Yeah, yeah, it just occurred to me. Uh, rook c4. I can't refute it right now, but rook d4 is more natural, certainly. What did she play? Rook c4, f4. She played, not f3, because now f5 we can take. Yes, now is f5 is bad, no? You could yeah. And now g4 we can play at least, right? Yeah, g4 uh, if necessary, no, no, no g4 or king g6. Both options are there. King g6. Uh, rook now I'm threatening checkmate with uh, knight f6 again. I'm threatening checkmate with rook e8. No, so you have to play check. And now it's I'm safe. Good, no? Yeah, because yeah. this is rook e8 uh, is checkmate. Yeah, the so earlier our rook was on c8, but now that's not the case. Rook b8 also. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Rook b8 also. No, rook b8. There is rook c8. So eventually, you have to play rook e8. <laughs> so bishop g4 ideas don't work basically. Yeah. Um, so what did she play? She didn't play f5. I think. She no? didn't play f5. She played rook a4. I think. Okay. And oh, but now knight c5. Oh, this is what she missed. Knight c5. This is the blunder. Yeah, the simple. Uh, I mean she she was probably thinking of f3 here. Yeah, that is yeah, what happened. Yeah, she was thinking that white will go f3. Mm -hmm. She will play rook a4. Mm -hmm. Knight c5 is not possible because rook pins the knight. You but know, one piece of advice is to keep rooks in such a way that knight can't attack it in one move. And the rook d4 removes the possibility of knight c5 directly whereas now the rook is on d3 is hanging and she actually took on a4 actually i think here this g6 position is not would losing yeah completely g fine, g6 no? like threatens f5, f5 i don't know f5 uh, yeah and uh, there is enough ample counter play but uh, if now white should move the knight to c5 again yeah making h4 king h4 then black just takes uh, now rook into f4 possible no not yet uh, so rook into a4 is never possible, never possible. because so rook e3 guys would be a blunder because of knight f6 check yes. and we simply pick up the rook yeah so, so maybe king g7 anticipating knight f6 and now we play rook e3 next one mm -hmm. a5 and rook e3 no rook e3 looks good no because now it this is pinned the like knight is gone yeah no no the, it's sort of supported but no no but we can take uh, no i mean that's pinned no and so rook h5 and rook h5 check and we shall into c4 Yes. Or if there is a mate, I don't know, but <laughs> this looks great. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so these these G six was a very good move here. Yeah, and, and no, maybe the best move. And also uh, most logical move because you are threatening F five. No, the only way to support F five, and you are actually threatening to win a piece. So obvious move, but okay, this was a simple knight fork. 
So as uh, Rubin Fine said in his book that even at the top level, the games are normally decided by a final tactical mistake, a small tactical mistake, which comparatively uh, most unexpected for a player of that stature. Yes, this was completely unexpected. But the ending so is losing. Let's but see. Yeah, no, ending is losing. If uh, they're still continuing the game, so let's see where they have reached. No, this F is this is a terrible. This can't be played. You must keep the bishop on uh, c4 diagonal and uh, guard f7, and uh, perhaps uh, still black white doubles in the eighth rank and tries to give you a lot of trouble. But yeah, there's no di concrete threat. But yeah, and after bishop c4, perhaps you play or g6 or something and try to create a fortress which will not eventually work but unless white exchanges one rook white will not find it easy to win and after f6 yeah, but it's winning position no, but f6 is huge blunder because now g after now you lose g7, g7 also eventually will no, eventually after losing the exchange you will lose g7 also because you this l the problem is that we have a light squared bishop so we need to keep our pawns on the light square when defending yeah when de otherwise this is a yeah. good pawn structure to have or maybe but this in, in, in middle game this is a good pawn structure because your bishop is good but in good pawn structure somebody else must defend the pawn the pawns are ideally kept in the color opposite of your bishop if they are safe so somebody else to ha has to guard them <laughs> but in this case, we are already yeah. material down, so yeah. let's just guard whatever is left. Yes, exactly. <laughs> for that, it was important to keep the bishop on c4, uh, e c f7 diagonal. Yes. This was a huge blunder, huge miss by Nino. I mean, she must... No, I think she panicked after knight c5. Yes. This can be called as a losing blunder. Like even Spassky panicked against uh, uh, Fisher. He lost, he blundered an exchange, but it wasn't a losing move. Losing move came after that, in the... World Championship 1972. So, the impact of the bad move, impact of the blunder, is the further. Uh, now it's. Is rookie okay? seven the only move? You can also play rookie six or rookie. No, I mean, is it possible to play any, check, rookie, any even, other? Yeah, move? I mean, but at least the, there is some. Uh, the e seven is uh, saved for some time. No. Let's say we play this. Ah, then what is there a problem? No, something like rook a seven probably. No, rook h five. Yeah, h oh h five check and we are okay. Uh, no, I'm just trying to wonder, uh, I'm Pinning just trying to think if there yeah. is any problem with any other move. Let's say king h4. Only move, no? Yeah, and and rook f4 and, and rook h3. Checkmate, oh, so. this is the idea. So, yeah, so some... So maybe she saw this and she went for it. Uh, I don't know, but it's... Sometimes you just see ghosts, no? Yeah, but rookie 7 is, I think, the most obvious move. I mean, uh, nobody's going to play rookie 8 check and encourage your king to come up and uh, start giving uh, threats against your king. And if at all any obvious move is there, it's rookie 7. Because rookie 8 check, if you're getting a tempo, I can understand. You're not a game, you're getting a tempo. You're encouraging your opponent to get a better position for the rook. And what if I play h5 here? Actually, are you uh, stopping? Oh, you? the problem is king h5, rook d5 and king, king g6, g6 and, and there checkmate. is a yeah. mate here. Yeah. This is the problem. And uh, bishop d3 is not available. Yeah. And and not only rook e8 mate, but other rook is also, there is a mate on <laughs> b8. Yeah. Yes, but yeah, but rook e8 saves the exchange. Objectively, she is correct. But probably to from the frying pan into fire because you are losing the g7 pawn. So uh, you actually succeed in saving the exchange by giving the h5 and g pawns, and it's even worse. It's better to lose an exchange than. Oh, this was huge, huge, huge miss. Mm. And rook a5, knight d3, uh, uh, bishop d3, and now rook b7, and it's. No, the rook b8 check and rook b7. Pin yeah, the pin, pin the pawn. So, yeah, after you exhaust your checks, I'm going to take on g7. <laughs> Give as many checks as you want. After you exhaust your checks, I'm going to win g7. So white is an exchange up plus a pawn up. Uh, rook G F uh, D seven has been played. Bishop attack. Yeah, white actually plays uh, quite strange moves, keeping the rooks on white squares, uh, yeah. which. Uh, but okay, she's <coughs> winning because rook yes. D six next, and uh, I mean, I uh, th there's so many ways to win. No, our idea is to force the bishop to move from that diagonal because bishop will be compelled to um, move. Uh, controlling g6 square, I think, somewhere, somewhat. She's going to win the f6 pawn, no? Soon. Yes, so. she's going to win the f6 pawn. This is also on a dark square, so this can also will uh, not be protected. Really unfortunate blunder by Nino and huge win for Bibi Sara, who actually will be on uh, two out of two okay. because she won the 
game yesterday as well yeah, against yesterday Vaishali. Was yesterday was a great game. Great yeah. game yesterday. And uh, the first round she got a bye. So she has only played two games so far. And, and she's both of them, yeah. going to be the mm. tournament leader perhaps yeah. if she manages to win this. I, I really doubt that she can not win this because this is yeah, completely winning. Unless Black uh, gives some no, checks. But it's not. I mean, the king just goes and attacks the rook. So. Yes. I basically just rook d6, rook b6. I yeah, and all black can do is give some checks. That's yes. all. So, we can expect this game to finish any moment. Let's wait here. Yeah. Because it she uh -huh. might re resign. And he then we can... Probably after rook b6, she will resign. I yes. think maybe she gives a few checks and then reveal, she will resign. Yes, because I yeah. don't think... She, uh, even black wants to suffer too long in this position. Yeah, also you have a uh, tournament where uh, you could s uh, save your energy for the next game. There's no checkmate pattern possible even with rook on e2 or rook on e, uh, a2. Yes. Uh, oh, she has played king g6? She has played king g6. Okay, so, so rook, rook b6. B6 and uh, yeah. I think she will play probably rook a3 check and yeah. Nothing happens. Okay, three check. We can wait for a couple of moves. Yeah, if I we so, sense yeah. that she's not yes. going to, uh, she's the game is going to be prolonged, then we can go to another yes. game. Oh, by the way, Humpy and Lano have also drawn their game. We uh, let's yeah, so we can uh, so go to Humpy's game. If this game ends, we can see this game. But yes. we have covered most of the important moments in that game now. So yes, uh, win is only a technical matters. Humpy's game, okay. So and Humpy's game, uh, we reached it till here. Mm. This position was the yes. one where and we, we thought, left. We thought queen b4, queen c3, queen f4 is an option here and not e f7 check, of course. We saw a very strange variation in queen b4, no? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So she finally played queen f4 after a thought of, uh, okay, only six minutes, uh, only uh, seven mm. minutes here. But of course, the th theory has ended long. Yes. So knight d3, she is not worried about. Uh, knight d3 perhaps she uh, just takes bishop into d3 and whichever pawn you take i win the other pawn so i think bishop into d3 and i take pawn into uh, f7 check also first or here pawn, pawn into f7 check and it take on e4 oh. I oh oh wow how fast the game changes here it's dangerous something i don't understand why rook d8 the pawn is guarded we have to remove that pawn i think the d pawn is stronger, no? For c d three, so maybe first take queen, queen, queen e six because queen, yeah. anyway you the cannot take the f seven pawn is not important, but the uh, d three pawn is important. No? Oh, and this is nice that after rook, first of all, rook d eight is not possible yes, because yeah. e seven. Yeah. This is a fork we saw earlier as well. And rook f d eight also e seven. Yeah, and rook f d eight also e seven. So also rook d also rook d one I think, but e seven e seven is a clear cut way, and just take on d three. Yes, and the rook cannot come here because queen, our queen works wonderfully well to support our other one. So rook e8 and then we just take yeah. it. And Taking, eliminating both those pawns, so it might have happened this way. Did it happen this way? Let's, let's see, let's see. Uh, so she played queen d6. Okay, so black she is... She did not so play knight so so d3. It's clear that black is playing to win because she's giving the, she's uh, allowing the king side weakness. But knight f3, that is the problem. The immediate threat, bishop f6, knight f3 checks, so... Um, yeah, discovered so attack. Mm -hmm. So bishop f6 was not possible. Uh, but rook d1, for example, what, uh, she just wants to take queen e6. Okay, in case of rook d1, she wants to take queen, yes, yes. queen e6. Black is winning then, yeah. She will take the pawn. So. And white gets back only one pawn. Yes. Black will, white will get back the uh, e pawn, but the c pawn remains. Yeah. So, what did white play? White played. Rook to d1 makes sense. But is this? Uh, yeah. Oh, the other rook to d1. What is so the she difference? She wants to attack c4. Uh, perhaps she found a plan to win the c4 pawn. I don't know. Oh. Sorry. We could have taken on f7 also, right? Before. Yeah, e f7 is actually the. If you are going to play rook d1, see, we are thinking of bishop f6. That's why we didn't. Yeah, this is a draw probably because you can't play knight d3. <laughs> Yes, so queen e6 and then we take, oh, now knight d, no, what? Knight d3 is coming, I don't know, knight d3, bd3, cd3, rook e1. 
Okay, first of all, here rook f6, we play queen e4 and we are fine. Yeah. We are e equal pawns, so that's okay because so we won the f7 pawn. And no, once uh, we have this position, uh, f4 and bishop c4 is a huge threat. Yeah, actually, this is a big threat now. So, uh, knight d3, how is it? Yeah, I think necessary, and you probably take. Uh, uh, yeah, we do. <laughs> what do we take? E D, I think. Then uh, rook. But rook e one. No, rook f one, queen f six. So. Queen f ah. So rook. Queen rook, f six rook, and so queen c so four, queen f two. Yeah, so that rook e one, but again, it's very risky. Queen a move like queen a six is coming also. Yeah, that's even if you play. Rook. Uh, d e one. Queen a six. Probably, I guard the pawn and a oh, queen c6. No, yeah. I'm, I'm winning. Yeah, it's so impossible to move the bishop, so we win this game as yeah. black. So uh, instead of that move, then b3 perhaps on the previous. Yeah, it's not easy to uh, play find a move here. So e f7 check and uh, bishop f6 and bishop f6. Yeah, instead of rook d1, bishop f6 perhaps is. Simpler and take on e4. No, knight f3 is always. Uh, directly, the always. Yeah, you have to yes. drive the queen away first. So king h1 is possible. King h1. Okay. I, I, I never thought of. I thought it was emergency. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he computer hates it. Yeah. No, it it looks like emergency. I don't think you can afford to. It looks uh, you, so yeah, much you, you, yeah, the lux luxury you can't have that. See, some a simple move like supporting queen also prepares knight d3. So. Rook d8 or something, and then you can never win this pawns. Ah, but you win no, the. No, no, rook d8. Then ah, we take. Now you play bishop. F yeah, now it's yeah. So rook d8. Yeah, but even then, now this is wrong. But yeah, at least you have some. No, uh, yeah, nothing is happening. But yeah, instead of rook, no, king h1 is I think too slow. White has to find something uh, rapid here. Rook d1, queen h6. Now it's the time. Uh, bishop f6, knight d3. Yeah, it's possible. The computer suggests rook d4 here. Wow. Rook d4. Mm, not a human move. Yeah, this is too difficult. I mean, knight d3, queen e3, like. Yeah, and then I play bishop f6 and um, take on e4 because you, but you still play rook e8 here. It's still, uh, it's computer is analyzing too much in depth. We can't really do rook d rook e8 for example. How do you win back the pawn? Uh, computer ca computer can be comfortable, but I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> and <laughs> I have to play. <laughs> yes, I'm I pawn down, and the opponent plays b5. I don't know what to do. And uh, knight into b2 is hanging sometimes, but computer draws this. Okay, and I, without engine evaluation, we would have said that black is better. Absolutely. Now we saw the engine evaluation, so we feel that. Uh, yeah, exactly. So white played rook f d1 here. By the way, she did not uh, take on f7. So queen e6. Yeah, because she was afraid of that position with pawns. Yeah, and she wants to take on. But she's just going to be one pawn down, no? No, she'll get. Uh, yeah, b5. We have rook d5. No, there's compensation, but uh, b7. Then you, I get b2 anyway. So b7, I'm not worried about. Anytime you take b7, I get b2. Uh, g, g, g6 or uh, you. <sighs> Even rook a c8 or some rook a c8 queen into pawn. Queen takes. Rook b8 and rook b2. Takes. Yeah, I'm not getting any attack against f2, no? Queen. Yeah, my pawn is better, but still it should be a draw. Yeah. Queen e3 because you don't have knight g4. Yeah. And I can't get c3. If I got c3, the things would change, but c3 is covered. You have c3. No, c3 is covered, no? B, okay, yeah, you c3. So nothing happens if after c3 I'm getting c2. <laughs> it is possible. So because bishop f1, knight g4, I don't know. E1. Uh, rook e1. But looks no, rook c8 and various moves. No, even rook c8, for example. Okay, so rook e1, bad move. I don't know. It's uh, uh, Probably engine can uh, find the correct move here. Attack the c pawn with a rook, I think looks like lo logic. Because now rook c8, I can play rook c3, rook c3, queen c3, uh, rook a2, queen c8 mate. So c2. And now I think, yeah. This looks very risky. Force, no. But, but is it possible? Force and rook, but I just take rook c2 next. No, but rook c2. Oh, now this is knight f3 check. Knight f3 check. So yeah. rook c8 to, yeah. 
this is a problem. Yeah. So that's why we must come with the rook on a. a no, I, I, I thought I thought black was much better in this position. I know, okay, is it is this drawing okay? But I thought black was better. But yes, uh, if the pawn is eliminated, here the things lie on like uh, uh, viewers. We must make our choice in uh, tournament, not as the position comes. White has to see in advance if this pawn can be eliminated or not. If it can be eliminated, it will be a draw. If it can't be eliminated, a loss is loss is almost guaranteed. Yes, and uh, let's quickly go through what happened in the game. Uh, B5 was not played. Queen E3 was faced with B6. So Bishop C4 is not possible because B2 is hanging. Sorry about that. Mm. So Black would have simply picked up the B2 yes, pawn. Yes, one pawn up. And although I have faced great difficulties in winning such positions, I have seen Karpo win such positions with such ease. Right, uh, Bibi Sara has won the game, so okay. we have uh, yeah we'll we have a result on board four. Bibi Sara has won the game against Batshia. Maybe we finish the Humpy's game if it's quick or if it's uh, yes. How many sure. moves uh, has it taken? Uh, we can just go and have a yes, look at the end position. Yeah, because it was almost because we almost ending. Yeah, covered it. Uh, yeah. So how let we will come back to Humpy's game. But yeah, uh, six. We go to Rugby six position of the. Baby we had reached here. Yeah. King g6 was played. Yeah. Rook b6. Bishop g4. King e3. Mm -hmm. Rook h2. Okay. Take the pawn. No King mate. goes yeah. back. No. F5. Yes. She's playing like checkmate. Yeah. Rook g6. Only for rook checkmate. Yeah. King uh, f4 king, even. King g5. And king g5. <laughs> yeah, wow. Okay. She follows uh, Carl's. Okay. Now she. I think it's time to uh, resign. Long rook, back rather. Rook f3 she can play, but king e4. King e4 and you allow mate now. It's but a very rook nice. F5, no, rook f5 actually, uh, there's no mate. No, we can take rook g4. Rook, that uh, is yeah, the rook, problem. Yeah, rook g6 second, rook g4, one rook up. Yes. So after king e4, black resigned with the king being on the center of the board already. Ah, so all you have to do is lift the g7 king and put on d5. Arbiter's work is reduced. Yes. <laughs> One thing less to do. So not only exchange down, but she's faced with a checkmate with rook c7 check and uh, rook b8 check for which she has no defense. Yes, this is the uh, ladder checkmate. Yeah, as and the black rook uh, is not in open file and can't come to open file to block anyway, any of the squares to a7 or a8. So that's why black resigned and huge congratulations to Sarah for... Uh, Yes, I think winning uh, both of her games and mm. uh, very impressive so far. Yes, I think the youngest uh, participant, no? Youngest participant and the, the one with the most points at the moment. Yeah, but as you said, she's a former uh, world rapid champion, so she has already uh, won one year before, and she's the reigning uh, uh, world uh, blitz champion yes. ahead of. I, I'm sure she was not a top seed. She was not in top 10 seed yes. in these tournaments. And, and it's very nice that she won the World Blitz Championship in her own country. It was held in okay. Kazakhstan okay. and she won the tournament in her own country. I think it's so, such a special feeling to win an international event in your own country. Yes, yes. And particularly World Championship. Yes. So, uh, good luck to Nino for her next games. Yesterday, she had a rest day. Hmm. Uh, no, I think she hmm. got a walkover. Oh. Uh, but uh, today, uh, a very tough game. I mean, she had a great preparation, but uh, at some point, she lost her calm and blundered. But uh, we hope that she will fight back. Uh, I, th I think it was a, it's a matter, it's something typical that happens in case of preparation because you're so dependent on the preparation that you are not actually thought about the position. That's what exactly happened. This was the point where she went extremely wrong. Rook into a4 that was the one move allows under, yeah, knight c5. Yeah. And the knight is no more pinned because black ha white had played Yes, but I think the position the is bad, game. but not at losing till you play f6. I think f6 is the real f6 culprit. f6 is the greater blunder yes, than yes. rook a4. Yeah, exactly the same thing happened in the fisher Spassky as I said. No? Uh, after he, Spassky blundered the exchange, it was still a drawable position. Then the next move he blundered and he lost the pawn, which was a bigger uh, disadvantage. So exactly same thing. And yes. losing exchange is okay, but losing one more pawn was uh, very bad in that game as well. The final nail on the coffin. Yes, yes, exactly. <laughs> as you put it in the very <laughs> precise words. So... <laughs> 
uh, let's go to Humpy's game where we left it. We have three. We have had three results so far. Humpy's game has also ended against Lano. They have drawn this game, but we but did it, not it, finish. But it, it, it's a creditable result because Humpy was quite uh, in a difficult position. So let's see how she managed to make a draw. Yeah. Queen e6, take, take, queen e4. White is a pawn down. White needs to make the draw. B6 has been played. Uh, B5 might have been met, met with rook D5. Hmm. So this would have been an issue. Uh, yeah, that would be an immediate draw probably. B5 rook, but B6, yeah, it's still likely. Actually, even B5, I, uh, I like uh, knight D3. But maybe just... Yeah, and... Uh, okay, you mean you're going to win the A2 pawn as well. If I play rook queen d3, you... Maybe rook a b1 is the no. most precise. And, and uh, take on d3 next move. Yeah, whatever happens. Also. Still rook a e8. And rook queen d3. Yeah, and queen into b2 doesn't work because the queen is interposed on f1. <laughs> <laughs> this is very yeah. important. O otherwise, it could have been a pawn up anyway. So, I think getting back the lost material is one of the prime agendas. And b5 uh, helps uh, white here do uh, if we go, can we ha can we have a better move here? Knight c six and knight d four. Oh yes, yes, yes. Knight d four. Oh yes, yes, And yes. I win. Uh, do I win something? Yeah, you probably win something because rook e five looks. Oh, but rook e five. So that's yeah. why rook e eight first. First and next move knight d four. Rook e eight yeah. first. Now rook e five is not possible. And next move knight d four. Next move knight d four. So as long as I am forking. Ah, that means a piece actually rather than an exchange. Yes. So queen f3 was not the... Ah, queen g4. Sorry, I yeah. went to the last position. Ah. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so tough game for a humpy than it was. I mean... Uh, over here. And uh, yeah, we were looking at this position and yeah, it looked very... Yeah, it's probably losing, no? Yeah, uh, losing an exchange. losing yeah. for white. Yeah. So after knight c6, so rook d5... Actually, rook d5, even rook f8 is possible. And you take b5, then I retreat knight c6. Yes. Yeah, so the rook d5 doesn't make sense, yeah. This is also possible. And uh, maybe a4 for b5. Yeah. And the logical a6 sequence a6, a6 a, b, a, b, rook into 8. So, and so you want to loosen the uh, control of, like b4 would allow bishop into c4. And otherwise, I'm getting a pawn for a pawn. So after a4, I think. Um, Yes, after a4, there's no way of getting back the. Yes, maintaining this was the possible. Pawn. Yeah, maintaining the. Pawn. And rook f8, uh, we simply take. Yeah, no threat, I think. But knight d3, queen f3. No, rook f7, oh, the queen f2 check. Now it, rook f7 loses to queen f2 check and. Uh, oh, this is very <laughs> nice. Yeah, queen queen f2, f2 check and queen yeah, well, let's see why rook f7 and rook e4 are not playable for the viewers. Yes, rook a7 yeah. is a beautiful move to make. Unfortunately, it doesn't <laughs> yes. work. Yeah. But rook into e4 would be the worst right. move on the board because rook a8. Yes, and similarly, rook into a7 would lose too. Second worst move. Yes. Because and you know, you are attacking uh, a8, so queen f2 is actually only refutation. All other moves are very difficult. Uh, yeah, but queen f2 check and queen a7. If queen a7 was not coming, it was still a, a very interesting position. So. <laughs> uh, knight d3 what happens uh, queen f3 is only, the only, only move, only move no? otherwise yeah. we don't support yeah. e2 and f2 at the same time queen b2 would be played or maybe queen ah the point is after queen f3 bishop f3 we attack the a8 yes and we want to take the a7 also sometimes and we want to the major threat is b3 if you play say uh, rook b8 or something b3 will be very uh, dangerous is it possible to Ah, then we simply play this. Yes, and also rook a b8, there will be b3. So, although, although rook a d8 comes in picture, but queen into b2, oh, bishop is yeah. Yeah, but yeah, it's... This is all very for concrete, very concrete. Yeah. Hmm. And so, uh, force draw takes uh, place, yeah. So, uh, what what did actually the she did play b5? She played she b6. She played b6, which yeah. is a good resource, hmm. not uh, weakening the b5, yeah. b pawn. Uh, bishop c4 is possible actually, but then we lose the b2 pawn, and now because pawn is on b6, rook fb1, uh, sorry, 
which are rook, rook, which are rook, rook, this rook doesn't, doesn't win help the us seven pawn, yeah. win the pawn so this line doesn't work anymore what did white play rook, rook d2. d2 now bishop c4 is a plan and of course uh, f4 also exists in case of rook c8 for as i don't like the movie f4 because some knight move and but it still exists because i remove guard but although i don't like the move because of knight d3 so rook d2 rook a c8 looks like the yeah Oh, rook a d8 was played. Rook a c8 was my yeah. move, but f4. No, but f4 I move the knight to d3. So I'm and now f4 pawn becomes weak. Yeah, so either you take, yeah, but you still probably guard one of the pawns and win the second pawn. Say rook f1 would win the d3 pawn. But then we guard the d3 pawn. And we lose, yeah, we lose the hanging. d2 pawn, yeah. And uh, yeah, that's, no, I think it was, now, very it's, very now, now it's very big advantage for black, so. We'll go back, uh, yeah. If uh, instead of f4, but rook c8 was more logical. And uh, what should white do? Rook Can we play rook c1? But then knight d3. Rook c1, knight d3 threatens checkmate. Now again on back rank, so. Now, now there is a checkmate. But now, now you move rook the rook d1. Rook d1, but you still have to take with the queen. So yes. Uh, uh, so maybe rook c8, then you just play b3 first, and then take rook d3. But you know Sorry, black uh, rook c1 is a checkmate. No, rook c d1. Black gets chance to play moves like rook c2 and all that. No, even rook c2, I think. Rook c2. Oh, uh, no, but, but then we yeah, take. Take, take, and queen c3 there. Yeah. So, yeah, so rook c d8, if you play, then I just want to play. Uh, yeah, there I just want to play b3. Yeah. And, but something is happening. Queen. G oh, no, rook f d8, we have rook d3. Because rook is hanging. Yeah, and rook d3 and taking on queen b2 is not possible. Queen d8, possible check, yeah. queen d8. So these were some very interesting lines, but mm. none of this happened because black played rook a d8, which mm. also is a logical move. Rook a d1 mm. and knight d3 was played. So if it is similar to what we are yeah, seeing. Yeah, the pawn can't be taken immediately. Uh, Sorry. And But now in queen into the is the knight safe after queen into uh, c4? Queen c4. Oh, sorry, f2 is attacked. Sorry. Yes. Is attacked. So, uh, knight d3, bishop d3 is almost forced. And uh, b3, and perhaps? B3? Uh, oh. She, in fact, played queen f3. b3 might also work, but yes, b3 might also work. Yeah, my idea is rook f8, I have rook d3, no? So. Rook d3, yes. So, That's b3, the b3 I thought was simple. So, this was not possible. But B3 the engine doesn't like. Okay. We have to find a refutation to B3 then. Rook D4 gets a tempo. No? Rook D4 and Rook D8. Rook D4 and uh, Rook D8. D8. And you cannot... Uh, yeah, but... Uh, yes, rook, because... Rook queen, a, queen A1 mate. Rook D3, Rook D3, Rook D3, Queen A1 oh. check. Oh, yes. This is important that here we don't take Rook D3 because Queen E8 checkmate, but Queen, queen A1. A1. And we get checkmated. So, making an escape square for your king is usually a useful move in the opening itself, but I think white in or black... In early middle game, I think. Opening you, oh, I think early middle game. Opening early uh, middle you game. could lag behind in the development, which is not very useful. Yes, but neither of the sides got enough time to do that. Yes, so every time a threat, every move a threat, so it was not possible here. This game was very sharp. Yeah. Even though... Without uh, minor pieces, but it's still sharp. So, knight d3. Take, take and queen f3 was okay. played. Very precise defense by Humpy. Yes. I uh, So, uh, basically, Humpy is a very strong defender as yes, well. That yeah, is yeah, what I have yeah. learned about her so today. No, yeah, and what she knows, she has always, I mean, because she's an original player, so she's often into bad positions because she's not good at opening preparation. Right. And yet, uh, she has fantastic result because she's able to rise to the occasion as the things uh, happen. And, uh, well, she has advantage in one way that after Queen F3, yeah, who does that in King F1? And white wins the pawn, or if black takes queen into queen, then the pawn is lost anyway because you don't have to create a, a square for the back rank. You are already ready to take on d3. Yes. So, so, so this didn't happen. Queen e5 was played. Okay. Uh, and uh, black. So again, black is putting, keeping the pressure yes, on. Yes. So you can't capture. And finally, b3 has been yeah, played. Now so you want to capture. Now rook d4 is not possible with a tempo. Yes. So this was very yeah. important. And if, you, and if you play rook e8, I have enough time to play g3 or h3. I think queen f3 was the most important yes, move in this defense. Yes, a difficult move to play. 
and uh, eight minutes to white f and six to black in this position, but finally so white has equalized. Uh, yeah, rook f8 I think suggests itself because you can't take d3 for one more move. Uh, yes, and but maybe h3, h3 g3. I, I prefer g3 in such positions because. Yes. Yeah, King know. comes closer. And also the pawns are safe after you. See, in many times in the rook ending, mm -hmm. there's a modus operandi of rook e1 check and rook e2, which attacks two pawns, f2 and a2. Very often it happens in the game. Yes. See, if you play, normally g3 is a good way to uh, create a square, as long as you're safe on the diagonal. So g6 was played, and white played g3. She did not take. Uh, rook d3, is there a trap? Maybe she trap. does not. Yeah, there's no, no, no need. need. There's no need to play. So she did. She also played g3, rook d, f rook f8, and the same. Oh, okay. even king g2. Okay, okay. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's yeah. Being it's very uh, smart, mm -hmm. and uh, queen is good on f3. So why move it? Yes, and if you take it, my uh, king comes there. It's even better. Yeah. So now rook exchange was not necessary, but yeah, I think at this stage. I think they both sort of mentally decided uh, that uh, now it's exhausted it's and there's no realistic winning chance. Now a mistake is also not going to lead to a loss. I mean, there can't be a, a you know, you know, in such position there will be a perpetual check. Even if you lose the a2 pawn, for example, this final position, if the pawn is on a2, it's still a draw, perpetual check. So, uh, a well-fought game and uh, those who did not analyze it, uh, they would find it very uh, dull game because there's no combinations and threats. But to uh, eliminate that pawn, uh, the sequence of accurate moves Humpy played, yes, that was, I think, uh, unbelievable. You know, I'm sure that Lano uh, didn't expect that sort of, when she played Rook D8, she didn't expect all those great moves. Yes. Rook C8 and Rook D8. A bad opening for Humpy, but a fantastic uh, middle game. Uh, and the queen and uh, two rooks middle game. Yeah, so it's queen f3, a very important move by yeah. Humpy. Yeah. And uh, then she found... Uh, B3 I think queen as well. Yeah, and queen uh, e5 is perhaps unnecessary. G3 Some slight advantage with queen into f3, but it's just a draw. So great. Uh, this was the final position, and they agreed for a draw here. And uh, because both the players have crossed 30 moves after this. And so, yeah, uh, very, very fair result. Good game. Yes. And uh, both of them. Yeah, must not, be a, quite not a happy. Flashy, flashy game. Generally, we see a game on a perhaps without uh, going through the moves, we blindfolded if we see a game, we think uh, nothing happened in the game. I mean, if you're on a board, we know there's some danger, but blindfolded sometimes we say, okay, print exchanges are taking place, pawn is lost, but no, the calculations behind that are very important. Now, some of the moves rejected by her uh, were correctly rejected, they could have lost, and that was uh, a fantastic uh, defensive game, I must say, where you uh, had to put in all your effort Yes. So the final game of the Only day that is yes. going on right now is this one with three versus two on the king side in a rook end game, a theoretically drawn yes. position uh, yes. with so the rook being wonderfully placed on f4 as well. And actually, even after the rook exchange, it depends on the pawn ending is also draw if black king is able to reach e7 or uh, such. Yeah, for so even example, if the rook, no, uh, rook into d4 directly is not possible because white king will come to e5. Um, but even then, e no, yeah, that is yeah. also drawn. Yeah, even rook d4, rook into rook is also a draw. So let's is, say yeah. even this yeah, pawn rook end rook game would be a draw because yeah. uh, king e8, yeah. not uh, and, and giving opposition. And king e4, king uh, king e4, uh, king f8 probably no. King yeah. e4, king f8, and yeah. after king d5 we take diagonal opposition. Yes. And uh, here we play this. And not king, king d king d7 is not possible because king e5. So. Yes, yeah. and. Uh, King d5, we go back to f7. But even with this is fine, yes? Yes, actually, yeah. And this is also yeah, a draw? Yeah, we're just preventing uh, the king from coming. Uh, why, so white must bring basically king on f5. Uh, yeah, here king e6, uh, of course, is a threat. Which this is the threat, and uh, we have to not allow king to e6, basically. Yeah, but no, but king e7, king e5, king f7, let's let show the variation, king f5, king f5, and black must, king f5, black must move here. And king e7 loses a pawn straight, and king g7 after some time. So this is a zugzwang position. Yes. Uh, this is a uh, mutual zugzwang, let's say. Yeah. If white is to move, white goes and white yeah. goes here with the king, then 
we again keep take opposition and don't allow the king forward yeah. whereas if it's black to move then black must allow the king if it's black to move white to wins even without f3 pawn <laughs> if it's uh, black to move white wins even without f3 yes. pawn we just win yes. both the pawns yes yeah so this is a important theoretical position so the king pawn end game would also be drawn but why enter it when you can yeah. keep the rooks also there is no threat uh, your opponent can actually give rook at 7 you just play rook f6 and no need to play king g8 as well i mean you could move the rook Sorry, rook f6 i'm getting the time so let me just mm. uh, refresh there is no a uh, plan actually for uh, white and getting the king to g6 is a impossible plan uh, a pawn plan that is impossible to achieve king h8 would be this uh, king h8 rook d4 comes in picture no then which is the live position of this game can we have the can we have the players uh, camera full screen on our scene so that we can check the live position this is not the live position on the board so they have exchanged one pair of pawns uh how did they cut here uh rook d4 and f well we are not getting an yeah i think rook d7 rook e7 was played M maybe not king g8 yeah king g8 or king h8 and king f8 is artificial but well maybe one very important uh, trap which was from one of the games of uh, arun vaidya sir one of our players so uh, uh, if black is able to, to put king on f6 sometimes that we can see the rook f4 position and uh, yes one second i will just try to get the live game because we are not getting the live game okay uh it is a draw but yeah but why white, white wins only if uh, pawn ending comes with rook e4 and black must exchange which doesn't normally happen so then f into e4 would win but rook will always have a square so so let's say they reach uh, this position and okay and rook, rook and rook and king f6 was the easiest no but to in order to get the position that we have on the okay. board i'm uh, just trying to get okay. that we are not able to get uh, the link correctly no so let's say she has a she has a rook on b1 and now rook a7 check was given and king g8 and now it's the same position yeah so king f5 king f king g6 is not possible and rook I mean, e7 was played yeah. yes sir uh, please tell us the story yeah this one in one of the games uh, with a different slightly different pawn structure huh. but there's only one trap where the rook could uh, be trapped like if uh, this particular position if uh, like if you go, go back a few moves and uh, white rook white plays rook on e5 in the pawn structure before f4 break okay yeah we can shift to the board yeah okay that's fine this yes. is a draw but if you go back a few moves and we just uh, uh maybe we can show it after, yeah, after the, the game, game after because the game. Uh, a very artificial trap a very artificial trap but i have seen it or yes. take place yeah because so. we would otherwise lose the live yes, game yes. that's why uh rookie 7 and black is thinking but this is basically a completely drawn position even rook b6 i mean or rook e6 yeah but even yeah rook e6 that's the uh, but then yeah. b5 also yeah. we have so the, the rook e6 position that's the only plan of white has. so you could give even i mean king uh, plan is to play king f5 and king f6 not king g6 and uh, then yeah so all right okay maybe white will try yes yeah white so here actually rook f1 check is very irritating if i mean you have no plan after rook f1 check yes she did give a check yeah, now the king will never join and, that and uh, king e5 and white played rook f2 and black uh, yeah black played rook f2 white Played plays rook e6, then I gave king g7. So there's hardly any. Black played rook, uh, or maybe black white played rook f3, and rook here and here, and king is on d5 now. White played rook f1. Black played rook f1. Yeah. What is she trying? I don't know. 
king e uh, king uh, d5 so wasn't the jipon uh, going in that case uh, no i'm sorry i did not see the live ah, okay, okay, that's okay. why and it's not uh, getting updated automatically so I'm okay this is the, the position moves. on the board but uh, well uh, why does maybe no she play ha huh? sorry why does no plan in this position no? what does white want to do no the king she has played king to e5 yeah no king is on e5 only i'm sorry, sorry yeah. okay. so uh, what happened is she played rook f2 rook king rook d1 and rook f1 this is the position on the board so no specific plan even if you play rook d4 and rook f4 i take rook into rook and king f8 sorry what even if i get rook d4 and rook f4 uh, rook into rook and king f8 is a simple draw Yes, King F five and King F seven. Can we get the live board now? Because we've got the position. Thank you. So let's say uh, White uh, plays Rook D four, Rook F four. We can even take, take yeah. and play King F eight, and it's an opposition. Yeah. And, and easy, easy you can draw. never create a passed pawn basically because H G five, take, take King G seven, H seven, King H seven, and this is a draw. Yes, uh, very easy draw this one, I think. But. Uh, it's for the importance of the tournament uh, that uh, black white is pressing yes i think this is what they have and after king so g7 far. i think she wants to play rook g6 check and rook f6 so only that is what yeah. happened and yeah. then rook g1 was played uh wasn't the check ah okay that's is setting a trap so rook is seven check king g8 and you can't play king f6 or something sorry what a uh, rook f7 check uh King G8 and you can't save both of them unless you play Rook F4. The yes. G4 is at and then King G7 is or yeah. any other move. So as long as White doesn't get King F6, there's nothing to worry about. If White gets King F6 and King G6, then Black is in trouble. It's almost impossible to achieve yes. unless uh, gross negligence. <laughs> yes. So Rook G1 and Black White is thinking. Uh, yeah, the pawn has to be guarded. If you play King F5, I give a check, and uh, I come back G1 attacking the pawn. Yeah, I think she gave. Uh, she played a uh, Rook F4 mm. and uh, King, King G7. G7, and King F5 has been played. So again, no threat. Yes, actually. <laughs> So you can play King Rook G2 as well. Rook anywhere or Rook G2 or even Rook G3. Although I don't like that move, but or Rook A1. Even Rook A1. I think there's no. Um, if you move the Rook, I give a check again from F1. Sorry. She'll move it to Rook E4. Rook A1 was played. Rook E. No. Yeah. Yeah. Rook E4 and Rook F1 was yeah. played. Now she will have to play king e5. I don't know. King e6. Rook f4 was played, okay. and again rook, rook a1, a1 has been played. So there's no plan itself. So the only winning position is White getting king g6. Almost uh, something which uh, no player would permit white king to come to g6 yeah, that also in some times or repeated so maybe the game ends in a draw no no they are playing yeah okay so rook f1 and no the tragedy is that even if you get rook e7 check you are no, not I winning no i think this I is think. the position and black is to play okay. yes yes e even if you get rook e7 check at some time king g8 it's not winning if white king is on e5 so if black king because rook will uh, yeah king f6 is met with rook a6 check or ah uh, but okay with rook on e7 this rook e6 is possible but yeah even even i think there's no losing position probably except white king coming to g6 without losing any material white comes to king from to g6 and white loses the g4 pawn it's still a easy draw so Shivalo was thinking. I'm not sure why. So I think we have uh, summed Can up the uh, remaining games, and uh, I think um, probably the. Uh, Can we get the players' screen only on the uh, screen? 
so that we are sure that we follow the game yes and uh, i'm not sure why shivalova is thinking but uh maybe she no, be, uh, she's uh, thinking the pawn and game uh, yeah rook and rook and king f6 yeah, no, it's such a easy as to easy as no so yes. i mean king f8 itself if she wants to show that she knows pawn and very well she could even play king f8 <laughs> even here she could play king e Yes, f8 and yeah. take a distant opposition yeah and why king f7 is a blunder i think for the viewers we should know yes this is the position we saw that king f5 and now it's a mutual zug zuang because black is to if black is to move black has to move the king from f7 and, and why and, and give entry to white king either at e6 or g6 yes so that's the only blunder possible and king f6 of course takes care of that so yes, king f5 so has to be met with yeah yes and here we win this pawn and black cannot save it so that's why when black white skin comes to f5 we must play king f7 in the pawn in game yeah that's the only relevant uh, point it king e5 king e7 there are only two relevant squares yes she has taken the rook okay. okay king f6 has been played king e4 was played now she will play king e7 e, in, in this position even king g5 is a draw because we have a rook pawn so here king g5 this is actually mm. a king g5 king f3 king f6 king f4 king e6 is still a draw so this is not a zug zwang after king f6 it's not a zug zwang king f6 is the accurate move because it's not a zug zwang either king h4 is the only blunder <laughs> yeah. because then yes. we get king f4 <laughs> yes. and king yeah. h3 and g5 yes. and then this pawn is yes. unstoppable yeah but i think king King G5 uh, so is. Uh, she played King E6. Okay. King. She could have created some excitement by playing King G5 and King F3 and then King F6 back. So I think okay, King King D6, King F6, King D4, King F6, and draw. It's going to be. Okay. No. Oh. Okay, someone will claim. No, can we just see the? Oh, I think it's drawn yes. because the arbiters. Uh, they have drawn. They have drawn. Okay. So the youngest participant is uh, marching ahead. Can we see the final position, please? Can we get the board? They played king f four and king e six on the board. Yes, and that's the draw. Oh, so so she actually allowed a uh, uh, sort of. Uh, I mean, black. The best thing was to black. to have the king f6 position with white turn to play but yes. even with black turn to play uh now it's a draw because of a rook pawn had it not be uh, had the entire position been on the left one side left white could have won with uh, advancing the pawn but now g5 pawn takes pawn king takes pawn king f7 king h6 king g8 and you don't have additional file king i a king i7 okay can, can so yeah. let's just show the variation pravin ji is talking about this is the final position of the draw is agreed game to. where draw was agreed for analysis if g5 take take king f7 king h6 king g8 and if there is extra file king i7 mm -hmm. then the h pawn would have queened i don't have space on the right to yeah. show so show. yeah so that's a disadvantage <laughs> with the rook pawn and that's a disadvantage <laughs> with having this graphic <laughs> that i can't go on the right yeah. with my mouse um, but okay thank you so much to our graphic designer and then rook king Like let's say there is an I file as Pravin G yes. said. Yes. Then then White moves uh, King to I seven and then the H pawn marches ahead. Yes. But then also. No. Ha. Uh -huh. yeah. Thik hai. Yeah. It it happens in the uh, other starting position. For example, where the game was agreed drawn, had the entire position been one file to the left, White would have won. Hmm. Yeah. So. So anyway, yeah, this would be the draw, and. Uh, you keep the king in the corner basically yeah so so interesting day i think yeah we have finished all the games for the day and uh, the results were three draws and one win so uh, let's just have a brief round up i think we also already discussed i will quickly finish it we all we are corner rompis game was uh, uh, great i yes. think the best uh, most accurate game of the day was corner rompis and bibi sara's uh, ambitious play and sort of tactical accuracy was tactical alertness was, was fantastic we actually didn't cover uh, shuvalova's game ah, fully yeah, yeah okay yeah because yeah, we, yeah we should see uh, because it was at a very complex position yeah we should uh, see that position how did the game 
uh, end in draw because this was a very complex game. Yes, let's yeah. just have a look at where we left it because we were analyzing a lot of interesting yes. possibilities. But uh, what happened? Rook d8 was sorry, bishop g3. So we think that in Shuvalova's game uh, to get a brief roundup again mm -hmm. of the game, uh, white played e4, black played e5, and it was an Italian with knight f6. Then white allowed the c3 with d5 setup and uh, they went for yeah but still this it's, it's still setup. not italian because in italian bishop will be on c5 so it's a hungarian uh, hungarian, uh, hungarian defense. defense yeah so with knight to d2 and then the knight came to g3 and uh, white played d4 here which opened up the position and after take take she played with an isolated pawn so rook d8 and uh, knight e f sorry Yes, rook d8, knight e4, queen d7, bishop f4, and here bishop b4 was a really nice move. Knight came back to c3. Yeah, knight c3 was perhaps not the best, but yeah. Perhaps but it was not possible to yeah, pick to up the d4 yeah, pawn because yeah, of problems yes, on c7. Yeah. So queen c8 was another nice move with the hmm. intention to make a battery on the d file. Yeah. Bishop g5, another good move here, a3 was also possible, yeah. followed by bishop g5. And black played rook e8, knight e5, and knight takes, pawn takes, correcting the uh, pawn yes, structure, uh, yes. h6, take, and bishop e7. A very good decision in hindsight because here bishop e7 would have given white some advantage, but white went wrong here with bishop g3. Mm. And uh, as a result, black got some play. But here knight d5, another accurate move. Yeah, only move rather. Otherwise, black would be slightly better. And black played rook d8, e6, and king h8, a very mm. nice setup uh, saying, what do you do? I will simply take back with the bishop and uh, go for this uh, position. Or even play bishop f6. Yes. Yes? No, bishop f6 generally runs into e7, so you have to be careful. No, after e7. Uh, af yeah, af yeah, e7, yeah, e7 is, uh, white has to actually move the queen here. So white played queen b3. B5. I would have preferred Queen F3. But yes, uh, we were discussing. Yeah, queen but F6 and Bishop into yeah, okay. So F6 Bishop into B7 was oh, possible. Sorry. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. I just yeah, just I just think a little. I had few more. Few more moves. Uh, bishop E7 and Rook D8 and Queen, queen B3. B3. B5. No? And B5. Mm. So we we stopped looking at the game here. Then mm. take take. Uh, c4. Let's just quickly yeah, go queen, through queen the game. F3, no? yeah. Queen f3. Bishop f6. No mistakes yet. We yes. are going to take on yeah. f7 next. Yeah. Bb7. Bishop uh, e5. Yeah, Bb7 was a consideration uh, here instead of bishop e5. But taking an offside pawn is going to be very uh, difficult to play. Queen c5. Rook f7 yes, and the bishop and yeah. would be totally... The b2. The b2 pawn is much more valuable. Actually here white has to try to simplify. Otherwise the b2 pawn is going to be a um, big uh, disadvantage. Uh, big pawn. Both the bishops preventing rook b1. So I think my black is already bishop e5. Now a compulsion. Where there's a choice uh, to exchange the bishop and she didn't make the right choice here. When it's compelled, she played the correct choice. Yes. So sometimes the forced moves come only when they are forced. <laughs> <laughs> so bishop e5, finally, we have exchanged the dark squared bishop. And, the b2 and is black safe. played yeah. bishop f7. Yeah. Interesting move because bishop f6 will be met with bishop d5 and then take on f6. Yes. So bishop b7, bishop d5, again a nice <laughs> move with the idea that bishop d5, bishop e5 and the rook attacks the queen. So bishop takes the queen, bishop f3. This was actually a really nice game. Yeah. So... The bishop went back, so black is a pawn down, but the bishop is stuck on a6. And the rook a8 is a threat, so a4 is the only move. a4, uh, also bishop f6. Yeah, but after that a4 eventually, I think that's right. So, take and we got the pawn back, but lost c4. And the b2 has now become very sensitive. And that's exactly became what So the problem the is the problem in the rook a2, that's what happened. Now rook b8 is going to come, no? Take, take and... Uh, Rook B8. Yes, and there is no and way to save the B2. And part. Rook C1, we have uh, Rook B2. If Rook C1, then Rook B2. And Rook C6, then Rook E2. Yes, this would be another equality. So uh, rook, rook D1, uh, 
rook d1 did exist rook d1 and if rook b2 rook d8 check and bishop d3 check and uh, rook c8 but a pawn is too dangerous you win the g6 pawn but a pawn is too dangerous yeah yeah but black probably saves the pawn and rook c7 check and bg6 is a very slow procedure black will get a3 and a2 so yeah this is risky what what she played is a pawn up but actually a harmless pawn extra so bishop d1 bishop yes so pawn. this is a pawn up rook end game but this is equal and black must have played h5 oh no need to play h5 really? you're already in h5 g6 structure oh yes yeah also h7 g6 is uh, just like h5 g6 it's h7 g it's 6 g7 it's just like h5 g6 okay if there's a third if there's a third pawn then white pawns could become dangerous with uh, e5 and f5 that's a losing position so there you need to play h5 and g6 here you don't even uh, i mean even if you allow uh, f4 and g4 and f5 it's still a draw here but some chance of king h4 and uh, yeah so so king h7 uh, was played after g4 i think you cramped your pawn structure yes so. here maybe h5 was the best move but still it would yeah. have been a so why when once white plays h4 black plays h5 so she played g4 for that rook a5 was the most subtle move here rook a5 and then i want to play h4 and h5 after that also i don't have much but rook a5 objectively <laughs> will be the most accurate move oh very nice yes but nothing i mean objectively doesn't mean anything or well, unless you are going to make a lot of mistakes i don't have any chance <laughs> so uh yes they finally reached this end game with g4 g5 and uh, this is extremely uh draw is it a theoretical draw yes. and those who don't know can study this and try to win this there is hardly any uh, plan so basically you cannot create a pass pawn that is the problem yeah and uh, and even pawn into pawn is a draw but a very difficult draw you should avoid pawn into yeah, pawn yeah because then you would yeah. be left with these two versus this and then this would yeah, be yeah which a is a theoretical draw as well but very difficult draw then it becomes a difficult draw so king g6 perfect yeah and now there is no plan Again, King F six is a mistake because Rook has. A pawn seven. is lost very very quickly. So, so. King G eight. So, very so whenever precise. you attack the pawn with the Rook, I'll guard it with the Rook. Guard it with the King. With the King, sorry. Yeah. And. Uh, yeah. So only way to get the King out. So she got the King out, but there is still no progress. And. Uh, yeah, here the pawn the ending was a blunder, of course. Yeah. We left it at. Yeah. and then uh, so here one interesting yeah one interesting possibility here could have been rook e8 instead of rook e7 so now uh, king f6 doesn't lose the pawn rook h7 is not there uh, so if black plays king f6 no king f7 i think is possible but king f6 and rook e4 rook f4 are, yeah also rook e rook f8 yeah so okay king f7 let's look at the variation king f7 and uh, uh, rook e5 and king f6 and rook e4 Ah, this was a trap. <laughs> yes. This uh, the rook getting trapped, yes. and this is what you were talking about. Yes, yes. And the ending after rook into rook, pawn into rook, king e5, king d3, uh, king f4, king d4, uh, king into pawn e5 is winning. Uh, no, uh, yeah, no, yeah, e5. Okay, king, yeah, king, yeah, king, yeah, king, yeah, king. <laughs> Anywhere we go, and we just make. Yeah. Game. We are faster. Yeah. Wow. No, no. There's queen versus queen, but you lose the queen. It's not a faster. It's you queen simultaneously, but you lose the queen. Yeah, we queen first, and then we take the opponent's queen because of queen f8, and uh, king cannot go here, so king g8, and then we win the king. Wonderful. So this end game we saw how it was a draw, and uh, yeah, so finally they reached the pawn end game and drew. Yeah. So great fighting day. I think uh, fighting game, the humpies game, probably. Uh, in uh, those earlier uh, while soviet union there were four national awards in chess like those who, the one who played the best uh, uh, attacking game was given the alekhin award and the one who played the best uh, strategic game was given stinitz award wow. the one who played the best end game was given capablanca award and one who played the best defensive game in the year got the dr laskar award even the laskar award so i think humpy probably deserves laskar award for this game 
wonderful wonderful so hampi can be awarded the laskar award for this wonderful defense and uh, uh, the second game was against zujainer and polina which we st- uh, saw and that was also a draw and nana zagni say and harika also drew a very uh, interesting position in fact yeah harika uh, harika was a calmer game in a way that uh, they agreed to a draw in a very sharp position yes. but otherwise other games were played till the end, end. yes yeah, so somewhere Definitely. yeah somewhere that was i think a wise decision because they had some po- time problem as well and a strange and complex position with uh, insufficient time to play such a sharp position yes so wise decision by them as well others uh, played uh, till the end yes till the very last cut, breath cut, cut throat attempts and, and bibisara succeeded in that uh, struggling from the uh, opening and she actually ended up winning the game Yes, this was the final position yeah. of Bibi Sara's yeah. game. Yes. Sorry, not this one, but yeah, a couple of one? couple of moves before. Yes, and uh, yes, and there's no defense to Rukhsi Sevanchek and uh, Ruk B8 mate, unless you voluntarily take Ruk F5. Yeah, great games, great games by the players, and uh, yeah. Before we end the stream, uh, let me just check if. there are any interviews that we would like to play we do have an interview of the players so we would uh, take your leave now and yes. leave you with the interview to watch thank you so much for watching our broadcast we had a lot of fun today and i yeah. got to learn so much from all your uh, by from you sir because but you shared all but from i think i i got to learn a lot from the players uh, and the and brilliant moves the you games. played as well yeah exactly yeah. it was a great combination for me to watch the games a- along with you so it was a absolute pleasure and thank you so much to the audience for watching yes viewers please give your feedbacks because it will help us uh, uh, give you uh, even give you better uh, commentary and if there are any suggestions if there's any clarifications please give the feedback to us absolutely and do let us know if you like the purple board or the pink board better that would help us to choose for tomorrow see you tomorrow as well at 3 pm ist take care and have a good night yeah thank you uh, see you tomorrow because it is yeah all the noise okay nana jamids and harika donavali here with us you both just finished your round three game it was a draw would you care to take us through the game or would you assess it from your point of view nana do you want to start um, okay no. always in the second move as usual she surprised me with the c6 <laughs> i think there is no opening line she regret that she doesn't play <laughs> so i always getting tired when i play the game see i mean before the round uh, to, to repeat prepare. to prepare and repeat all the lines and uh, yeah i played my usual uh, line which i play usually on this uh, slab defense and um, i didn't get much out of the opening so I'm not sure about e4, and I played maybe first. I need to prepare this e4. Maybe rook c2 and rook c1 was better try. I don't. I'm, I'm not sure. I don't know because after rook e8, actually rook e8, I think was quite good move for black. After that, um, I don't know. I, I didn't like my position too much. And you just didn't feel kind. You felt it was alright just to call, yeah. call it a day. How did you feel? And so surprised in the second move. Like, Do, do you do that? Do you see like, this is what your opponent you think, like, I'm not going to surprise them now, best. Obviously uh, that's part of, part of the game, yeah? It just depends, um, but okay, yeah, it was a little bit surprised because we played many games together and I played many different uh, lines, but not this one specially. Uh, but uh, I think out of opening I just got a normal position. And in between I was trying to figure out where to put the pieces. I got like double bishop, I didn't know whether I should keep it or like just exchange on bishop into c3 so i decided to keep the bishops and just play uh, some normal chess and uh, i was just uh, okay after e4 i was just hanging on there i wasn't uh, exchanging b3 e4 or i wasn't deciding because i had double bishop i was just waiting for white plan to uh, 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 which plan she would take and uh, yeah i think in my end it was just uh, i think it's equal position So, getting back to the element of surprise, could you tell that you surprised your opponent on the second move? Did you uh, see any reaction or anything? 
No, I think uh, because I played many in general, uh, that is the reason like opponents have to prepare a lot and uh, yeah, sometimes it could be a surprise because like how many opponents you can uh, revise in a day, so yeah. You played a lot of games together, you know each other very well, you spent a lot of time together. Do you ever analyze together? Like, and is, how common is it, like back in the olden days, players used to sit after the game and sit together, discuss and analyze. Now that doesn't often seem to be the case. Players just go back to their rooms and sit with their best friend at the computer. Uh, do you ever analyze together and is, there a, is that a thing at all nowadays? Mm -hmm. I don't think, not seriously, but maybe after the game we just say something. But in that analysis, would you ever be free to fully discuss what you really think, or are you saving? Would you normally say something for the computer to best check rather than mention to your opponent? No, I usually mention what I was thinking, and uh, yeah, it's always interesting uh, how your opponent, uh, how what was her thoughts. So uh, I usually share my thoughts to, to my opponent. Yeah, I mean, like we are friends, I don't think we will like really keep too much of secrets after the game, maybe before not the game, yeah, but not after the game. So yeah, we, if we find anything interesting, but more or less we are having some boring drops <laughs> in the recent times, so there is nothing much to analyze. <laughs> Alright, well, looking at the broader picture, Harika, we're in your home country and you're in a way a host here, so are you going to show something to your friend here while you're, while you're in New Delhi? Uh, are you planning to share some experience to with her or with other colleagues here? Uh, unfortunately, we don't have rest day, a common rest day. So we are going to have rest day some different uh, timings, different days, so I think it's difficult. But uh, yeah, on the last day, when the tournament gets over, if anyone would want to go out, obviously I would love to do that. Uh, but uh, anyway, the organizers are arranging the expression, like whoever wants on the rest day, they can go ahead. So yeah, I think here, especially, it won't be much time uh, right. to be together, like uh, no free day. Okay. All right, well, thank you both so much and good luck with rest and good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. joining us, uh, third round, second game for you, two games, two victories. Congratulations, you're really breaking here. How does thank it feel? You. How does it feel? Uh, I feel good. Today I was lucky because she played right, uh, rook a4 and after an a5 I think she has a bad position. She blundered. And so. But if she don't play rook a4 I think it's a draw. Maybe I'm just a little scary with my team. But overall it, w it, w it, it would have been a draw in that case but luckily it went uh, your way. We've seen in the previous rounds, two rounds here that uh, Players have, like especially in the first round when uh, Kuryachkina was in trouble and was losing, and in the end her uh, opponent, uh, Jujina, made a mistake. And uh, that wasn't the only time. Like there were some other games where those who were almost winning or were winning, they just dropped the advantage. Uh, what's your view on that? What? Uh, how often does that happen? And. How does one deal with that? Does, does that, is that a, sound that, a sign that it makes sense for the losing side to always play until the very end? And what does that say about the players themselves? Um, I don't know. Uh, it's just a luck. In one tournament you can be a lucky player, in other tournament not. Um, How big of a factor is luck, if you can put it in percentages? I think it's important to play good in a tournament, maybe. 20, 30 percent because, okay, if you play bad, I, I don't think that you will win the game or have a during the trouble position, but if you play it normal you, and you have luck, you can win or draw the game. Okay, so do you feel now that luck is on your side or is this all a product of your, your today, confidence and preparation? Uh, no, today I was not preparing to this variation and Today I just was luck. Just luck. So, uh, how are you gonna uh, prepare this evening? Uh, uh, you're getting ready for your next match. I think I will take some rest and start to prepare to prepare to the next game. Well, thank you very much. Ju Jinner joining us. Uh, you just finished your round three game here in uh, New Delhi in the Grand and the uh, Women's Grand Prix. It's a uh, third draw. How do you feel about your play so far and about the tournament? Mm, I think uh, my game are interesting. 
uh, uh, we fight to the to the end. And uh, yeah, it's interesting to play. And I think uh, maybe some moments uh, I my position maybe is better. But yeah, I think. In round one, you were in a winning position against Goryashkin and you dropped it in the end. Yeah. Uh, how, how did that make you feel? Yes, in, in the game, I thought maybe, maybe it's kind of winning, but I, I just didn't find the way how to, how to work the fortress. I, I consider uh, someone like G7 and then sacrifice the pawn and uh, then move king to the queen side. But yeah, I I just want to uh, try to play slowly, but I don't play f 4 and uh, it's a blunder and uh, it's it's job. All right, perfect. And finally, uh, how do you relax? How do you relax when you relax? Uh, I imagine you spend most of the time studying, of course, for the, preparing for the games, but how do you relax? Yeah, I, I just stay in, in the room and I, so like listen to some music or something, something. So just keeping to yourself. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much and good luck with the rest of the time. Thank you.